Ladies and gentlemen, we thank you for those that have joined us online, our online audience, and also we want a special greeting to our distinguished uh, jury, and I will introduce them briefly. Uh, today, we will be proceeding with the Bachelor Thesis Presentations uh, Part 2. Yesterday, we had a wonderful day of presentations, 12 uh, projects, and today we have uh, another wonderful collection of works that will be presented and really looking forward to this day. Um, I also would like to uh, say that uh, tomorrow as well we will be having the master thesis presentation, so please please join us for that as well. Um, our jury um, has been serving us for actually several years and really appreciate yesterday's uh, input and discussions and comments 
and looking forward uh, to just as interesting day today. Um, first of all, I would like to introduce uh, Ola Vig, who's uh, from Norway, r uh, leading uh, a really distinguished office, and he has joined us for many years. Ola, yes, thank you. Uh, Linda Leitan, uh, chairwoman, who has been uh, leading the Latvian Architecture Association and also has been recently joined our faculty here as well. Andis Krombergs, who um, leads the office Archis. Uh, he is also a distinguished and honored professor here at the uh, Faculty of Architecture and we really appreciate his input and his service here over the years. And Gunther Grickmann, who as well um, been a wonderful uh, asset and input to serving here on the jury, um, always uh, loyal and diligent in participating, and we thank you and appreciate that very much. So without further ado, uh, the rest of the show is for the students to actually, it's a, it's a celebration of their work, and first online today is Marcus, so I invite you to come forward, please. Yeah. Um, good morning, dear jury. Um, today I'll present you my bachelor's uh, thesis, uh, which is um, a rehabilitation center for war veterans suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder, also known as PTSD. And uh, my supervisors for this project for the theory part was Jonas Buschel, a sociologist, and uh, for the B part, design, Ints Mendelsch. So, Post-traumatic stress disorder is a disorder which um, develops after experiencing a traumatic event, and um, it's very uh, it's a very common uh, disorder among soldiers. And um, every third um, war veteran suffers from post-traumatic stress disorder. <clears throat> At the moment, um, conventional treatment methods for uh, post-traumatic stress disorder include um, cognitive behavioral therapy, which can take form of a, um, a dialogue with a psychotherapist, and oftentimes it is um, complemented with the pharmaceuticals. An emerging um, therapy uh, method for PTSD is something called uh, ocean therapy, and uh, it considers the human as um, in a way that is uh, from the perspective of a mind and body connection. And also it considers um, other factors like uh, socializing and uh, physical activity. And it is shown to be very effective for reducing symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder. Mm. As you can see, it's a, it's a very inclusive um, uh, method for healing uh, PTSD because some war veterans are also physically disabled and ocean therapy actually allows um, some people with physical disabilities to participate in this. So the people who are disabled physically, they can also participate here and not feel like outcasts. They really feel inclusive here. And um, I really recommend to watch this documentary on Netflix called Resurface. It will explain a lot about uh, ocean therapy and provide an insight from a first person perspective uh, into how it actually made a huge impact into veterans' lives. So my proposal in my bachelor thesis is to create a place for ocean therapy. There, there's a lot of organizations that provide these um, um, ocean uh, therapy surfing lessons for exclusively war veterans, but there isn't um, a designated place for ocean therapy. So that is what I'm proposing here. 
and I need to consider a design which will heal. So in my theory part, I discovered two very interesting things. One was that the mind and body has a very intricate relationship for healing. Um, and this happens through hormones. And then the second uh, very important thing I found out that two of the very most impactful factors for healing are views of nature and uh, a lot of daylight. And in one word, basically, like nature heals. And this is a major thing I found out. Um, another thing uh, I came across was this model for four zones for um, therapeutic architecture, uh, escape zone, an area for relaxing in solitude, pause and activity zone, uh, area for relaxing in company, productive zone, area for, uh, phys uh, for uh, uh, activities that require focus, and exercise zone, area for physical exercise. So the center, um, first asked where and how would I make this center? And I, I decided to uh, place it in Portugal because Portugal has a Atlantic Ocean, consistent waves, uh, warm climate. It is a member of NATO, which might help uh, with Portugal being interested in something like this. And I placed it along the Alentejo or the Setubal district coast, which has just wonderful scenery. Um, so my project will sit at approximately 37 meters uh, above sea level. And this is my proposed design, to have the ocean therapy center in the middle and then accommodation scattered across the topography. Um, in the ocean therapy center, there are 10 buildings and every each building uh, was created with a healing in mind. So the activities that take place in each would heal. So for example, lecture room, uh, space for uh, uh, guest hosts who um, create, come and um, show some inspiring lectures or it could be an area for projecting like uh, videos from the surfing on the screen. Then there's a uh, individual therapy space, uh, group therapy space, arts therapy space, a central dining area, a leisure space where they can go and relax together in company, play ping pong, for example, um, swimming pool area for physical rehabilitation as well as an indoor gym, and then sauna and an indoor fireplace for, um, for uh, community activities. Um, so when I mentioned that um, abundance of daylight and uh, incorporating nature were the two most impactful factors for healing, this is how I integrated them in my project. I used in almost all buildings these large curtain walls, which would provide a lot of daylight coming in. And then it would also allow for natural ventilation, as well as people, for example, in wheelchairs with disabilities could easily navigate through. And then incorporating nature into the design, I placed a lot of greenery that it was along the walls of the buildings throughout the site, as well as some trees. So for example, in this image, you can see um, how the nature is integrated into the project. Um, for example, these olive trees have been placed there to provide shade, um, to have more climate control. And then you can see also the sliding doors uh, sliding curtain walls for the dining area. Um, here's another view of the arts therapy space and it has a direct view towards the ocean and then a uh, pause and activity zone for communal uh, sp time spending and it's uh, kind of blocked away from wind. So in the colder months people could come there, take their jackets off and just relax together in company in the sun. Um, for natural, uh, for the materials, I also used something uh, natural. Um, I found uh, that there's this clay plaster, which has a beautiful texture, and it also adds to the natural element of uh, healing because it seems like everything that heals comes from nature mostly. 
And then for accommodation, I created two options to fit each individual's need for a therapy. One option is more private, so war veterans who are maybe um, inclined to spend more time in privacy might want to choose the private option, but then veterans who actually would like to socialize more would have the social option. And so the private option has, um, uh, there's one unit has two apartments, and each apartment has also a nice little courtyard in the front with uh, plants, and uh, has large sliding doors uh, that are transparent, which allows a lot of daylight in. And then the social one has, one unit has four apartments, so four bedrooms, and uh, a central courtyard in the middle for uh, also for like socializing and spending time together, as well as a terrace facing the ocean where they can enjoy the sunsets. Um, thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, the uh, viewer of uh, Market Better Cities uh, was uh, Jana Veria, and uh, she gave a positive talk. It's called The Red Hot Park. Uh, the chosen topic is uh, very current, and the interpretation of the research is innovative. I highly appreciate the students' sensitive approach to both uh, the research itself and the analysis. An extremely deep dive into uh, the analysis and explanation is human perception problem. Nevertheless, very easy to read. And uh, more practical part, uh, the positive qualities. Uh, practical part of aesthetic quality, design approach, and sensible choice of materiality gives a very uh, convincing impression that such a center would be uh, very uh, suitable for the chosen location and would functionally serve as a strategic center for uh, veterans. Uh, the disadvantages uh, choosing a design building in different climatic conditions in Latvia, I would highly recommend to investigate some architectural principles related to the extremely hot weather. Thank you. Now you can answer for the questions. Okay, so <coughs> my reviewer asked um, what architectural principles uh, have been evaluated to provide comfort in the public spaces all year round. So in winter it would be quite easy with this design that I propose, but in hot summers it can get a little bit challenging. So currently I have uh, trees that provide shading in these outdoor spaces, but then there's these um, alternative options. For example, adding uh, pergolas um, that provide shading or for example, adding some like sails that provide the shade. And uh, th those are my um, solutions for that question. <laughs> I think you have done that. I think the choice of topic is very good. Mm -hmm. I think architects should be more involved in social aspects of the society. I think that's very good. And I think the way you have um, chosen this site in Portugal is interesting by the sea because you start off by saying that, um, you know, the closer to the sea is like a good therapy. Uh, I appreciate all that. I think the, the only thing I'm wondering about is, and I understand the, the courtyards. This is an open space between the buildings. Yes. And then you showed um, a, a limited area where you had a smaller courtyard, which is for the people who are living there. But I also noticed that you had very small windows on the outside. Mm -hmm. Is that because they need to be protected, or, or why did you not open more to the outside world? Okay, so great question. Um, that was actually an intentional, intentional choice because yeah. During the day, there's a lot of um, socializing and activity. And I thought that during yeah. the evenings, the veterans might want to kind of close in a little bit right. and have their much private space. So because they're so much exposed to these like beautiful nature views throughout the day, during the night, I wanted to create like a little uh, space uh, like for uh, enclosure. 
Yeah. I, I, think, I think that's a good answer. Um, I think also I like your expression, design, designing for healing. Mm -hmm. I think that's a very well chosen topic. And, it's, and also, it's very clearly presented both verbally and in your drawing. So thank you very much. Thank you. Well, I do agree with our previous comments. Uh, really nice graphics and presentation. And also the topic is quite, um, um, how to say, yeah. Oh, perfect. Um, I do agree with the uh, comments I also wrote down that there's no views for from private lodges to the ocean, but I heard the answer. Probably I would also ask a bit more about the general plan. So mm -hmm. I do see one trail which is leading from the uh, community center to the ocean and there's only one trail. And we saw that the veterans might uh, have no legs or whatever. Mm -hmm. So how are you dealing with this topic? Yes, that's a great probably question. A probably a bit more about the general plan. Yes, so actually the idea for um, that, that, that there's this ramp going down the hill, but then people in wheelchairs will be very difficult, right? So I added a solution where you can go from the center, um, go along this pavement and there in actually, in the section drawing, in a very, very light color, you can see there's a, a cable a gondola going down there and actually stopping by the meditation center. Then it can go all the way down to the beach. Yes. Thank you for your presentation. Really, um, really necessary and great topic. Uh, good explanation and um, good joint between both parts and good graphics and good presentation. Thank you. Uh, actually, I can join uh, previous questions about, uh, or uh, that's, uh, that's actually not a question from my side, it's just a comment, because I, I really would like to see more open view to the ocean, mm -hmm. since this is the ocean therapy. And uh, ju just that's, if it comes to realization, maybe you can consider. <laughs> Um, the way uh, how to open uh, those private spaces to the ocean still. There are curtains you can close <laughs> if mm -hmm. you don't need that view. Because uh, if the um, apartments are um, put on the um, uh, coast, so it's a bit, bit strange that they are close to the ocean. Mm -hmm. Then I would like to consider maybe the different uh, way of, of uh, location of, of apartment buildings, but otherwise, thank you very much. Thanks. One another comment. Um, I would also like to see uh, maybe a bit more of the sports because ocean healing is one of the possibilities. Probably um, there are some options about, I don't know, a gym or uh, some sport fields or something something else. Mm -hmm. Yes, there there is a gym. There's the indoor swimming pool and then an indoor gym as well here. Okay. Yeah. Marcos, thank you for your job. It's great. I, I like it very much. <coughs> Just one, one uh, uh, question from, from, from my side. If, uh, for example, you would, have, uh, you, you would need to build something like uh, uh, this function in uh, Latvia, Mm. For example, uh, which kind of uh, or which part of our nature you can uh, try to you will try to uh, take as a main uh, rehabilitation uh, element, or do you have any idea about that? Yes. If you if you will work here in, in our country. Yes, I love that question. Um, so <laughs> during my research. Um, I just discovered so many interesting things about healing and it um, turns out that there is a part in the brain called parahippocampal cortex and it's full of endorphins. So, And they've done studies and scans and experiments where they see that when people look at beautiful views, especially ones that you see wide open landscapes, so some something that is like high and you see large openings, um, um, then it's really activated and so this uh, endorphins get d released and it's a hormone which then helps in your body to heal other parts and like help with everything else. 
So I would say in Latvia, the most healing aspect would be maybe somewhere um, somewhere where you can see like these wide open views. So maybe in Kurzeme, there's these uh, like uh, Stavkrasti, these uh, cliffs. So that, that could be a very healing environment. But also uh, uh, sea. Sea, yes. Only sea. But if you uh, look in the woods, for example... Or um, that also helps a lot. Zemgal slizenum. or the skull or something like that. Um, f- well, from research, uh, w- what it's, it seemed like, the more high the view is, the better. Yeah. <laughs> Marcus, we have one hill. You know how high it is? <laughs> 311 meters okay. above the sea level. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but there, there is no view towers. So no, it's no. <laughs> it's called Geisig. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Marcus. That's a great job. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, Marcus. Thank you for your presentation. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm glad for Anders' question because I wanted to ask a question to help you say that because I think it's an important thing that you said that because this view here, the, the framed view on the right-hand side where, where, where you have this gaze out onto the horizon and I, I, uh, for me that those are the kind of views that, that you capture within your complex. I think that, that's really uh, wonderful and, and that's, those are the views that, like you said, release that endorphin to, to stimulate the healing. And uh, similar to the other comments, uh, uh, I, I completely agree. The graphics, your presentation, how you presented it, uh, the boards and everything, and these beautifully printed and plastered models, uh, wonderful. Um, one comment, I, and I understand that technically you had to print out the model, but I'm just wondering, as this complex approaches the edge condition of the relief, uh, did you envision that being flat, or would these between these buildings would there be like steps that allowed right. you to go down there or is there like a um, embankment there that mm-hmm. uh, allows the whole thing to be flat? How, what's your solution yeah, there? Yeah, that's a very great question also because um, actually this model I created before I started even designing to just have a better like visual uh, perception of the space. Mm-hmm. And then during the designing process, like I took away some earth and like pushed it towards here. So actually everything sits on one flat surface so people with wheelchairs could easily access uh, o- everything. All, the all complex. The buildings, yes. Okay. okay, okay, clear, clear, clear. And also, um, I... I I like like in the single, in the unit, where the two units that when you enter in, you have the garden and then when you're inside, you still have the full glass view onto the garden. But I I agree that it would be nice that these vignettes that like within these larger buildings that like maybe internal courtyards for the purpose of light, you could also capture some views out to the sea from some of the facilities, you know, where mm-hmm. this, this view, capturing that view from the inside, just here and there, I don't, don't need a lot of them, but mm-hmm. I think that, that you could add that. that but overall, it's, it's a great, uh, great research, uh, great insight, and, and, and thank you very much for your presentation. Good job. Thank you.
Good morning, everyone. My name is Samantha Torowska, and the, I will today introduce you to my virtual thesis called Beyond the City Limits, Architectural Solutions for Sustainable Rural Communities. And my supervisor is Francisco Martinez Salas. So uh, introduction to the thesis and the starting point, why did I choose this topic, was this uh, major changes happening in the rural environments and uh, urban expansions. So my task was to based on the research-based insights uh, to offer solutions that right direct urbanization issues and redefine and strengthen uh, rural communities in the, in the countryside. So that's why I established five main tasks to analyze and to understand what can be the potential of uh, countryside and the rural environments and the society living there. So first of all, I analyzed the socioeconomic analysis, especially in Latvia. And uh, to understand and also to understand that almost uh, around the whole world, almost 300 million people will move from rural areas to urban centers in the coming years in the world. So they will leave countryside and habitat. And uh, in my opinion, it's needed to be reconsidered and uh, to understand what can be the potential of countryside and what are the benefits of actually using those areas. In Latvia and also in Estonia, uh, most of the population, they concentrate in urban centers and uh, forcing rural communities to move. That's why living behind the rural environment. The next for me was really important to understand the history behind rural environments in Latvia and what are the starting points and what are the major turns in this uh, context. So I found out the agrarian reform in 1920 was the major reform happening in the rural areas and it established the minimum and maximum sizes on the land plots. Uh, that's why giving uh, smaller single family farmlands uh, the possibility of creating medium sized farms. But at the same time, it was really a limited of the freedom happening there. And uh, later on, I also analyzed the rural typologies happening in the countryside in Latvia. And uh, for me, the most interesting one was that uh, most of the uh, units and the houses there were placed around small courtyards. And those courtyards were serving as a communal spaces, a places for gatherings, and also um, the place to communicate with, uh, for the rural society. And uh, later on, in the nowadays environment, uh, it's completely different. Uh, for example, during that time, almost 76% uh, were residing in the countryside. And right now, of course, most of the people, they live in the urban centers. And the uh, countryside is really uninhabited in that sense. And uh, the third topic uh, that I analyzed was the urban rural relationship and how those two uh, aspects can contribute to each other and uh, what are the re relationships. And um, I found out that urban um, environments can serve for rural environments uh, for, uh, with their technologies. For example, precision agriculture systems and um, regenerative uh, farm spaces that use their technologies for rural areas. Uh, so um, rural areas can benefit from the urban um, resources that they serve for them. Later, I found out to get into the deeper understanding of uh, what can be the possibility of rural environments. I found out these three case studies. The first one established the uh, understanding of how the community can be living there. And uh, uh, this is the, the Tofu factory. And uh, um, not only they provided financially uh, this place, but also they created this uh, space where community could um, spend the, the time with each other to communicate, to socialize, and also create this uh, atmosphere that uh, the rural environment was lacking. The second was uh, the understanding of uh, the rural landscapes and the visions and the ambitions that they might have. And the third one is the Louisiana Museum of Modern Arts that is really famous for its simplicity, paths, and also integration of the community there. 
Later on, the empirical research, I found out the new approach that, is, uh, that emerged uh, about uh, three or four years ago. It's called pixel farming or pixel cropping. And the main thought behind this new approach was to bring back natural cropping system into the farmlands, not to create those strips or rectangular shapes of the farmlands in the agricultural sense, but create this natural uh, cropping system using different kinds of crops. And the largest crop is the largest vegetable available. So they use this mixed system, bringing back nat natural cropping system. That's why I decided to stick with this pixel cropping system and to analyze its potential in the Latvian territories. And uh, I found out one of the documents about the Kuzma region development plan. And uh, one of the development plans was to um, develop uh, agricultural, and not agricultural, but educational resource centers that are already existing in Ventspils and Leofaya but also to bring culture in and to analyze four different aspects, economics, education, culture, natural assets. That's why I thought that uh, Kuzma region will be the most uh, perfect location for this research based and educational purposes. And also uh, based on that development plan that they want to integrate. That's why I also choose those. Uh, and for me, it was also really important to choose this rural environment close to the big city to get those potential resources that the urban centers can provide to the rural areas. And Leopaya uh, serves as a cultural center that uh, there are many events happening and Ventspil serves as a business center economically developed and uh, that can also bring possible resources. Then uh, for me, it was really important for the choice of the location to choose, uh, to based on these six factors, to choose the perfect location that could integrate all of them and would be potential for the development. So for me, it was also important to choose the place that is already developing with the existing flow rather than uh, choosing an inhabited ruler space and to develop it from the zero. Then the concept description started from, again, the pixel approaches, but uh, pixel not in the sense of different colors and smaller units, but more about different volumes, different heights, paths, and uh, different uh, program as well. So I decided from the chaotic uh, placement to go uh, and separate them from uh, public to private spaces and link them uh, for the corridors that will also um, indicate the circulation of the public space and the research center overall. So for me, it was also uh, important to uh, differentiate them with different heights um, and different heights will uh, indicate the main part of the building. Then this is the how the master plan looks like and um, one of the also issues in the countryside that we can see it's the lack of infrastructure and the lack of, uh, for example, bus stops or um, the uh, lack of parking spaces so that people do not know how to get there or the buses they go once in a day or three times in a day. So for me, it was also important to develop uh, the access, uh, creating bus stops, parking lots, and those paths as well as the taking advantage of the sea coasts make harbor, maybe they can be also some boats coming from Ventspils or Leopaya to bring some resources that can benefit this space. And as you can see, I placed the residential blocks meant for students, researchers who will go there to the research center, also the local community, local residents. And uh, later on, I created this layout of the research center. And in this uh, picture, you can see it better. And the main um, approach to creating this research center was linking paths that serve as metaphors uh, of the educational journey, going from the shared spaces to individual expertise and individual um, educational system. And here I also integrated the sustainable strategy schemes using green roofs for cooler environments, energy sources for energy independency, and circulations, uh, corridors serving semi-climatic. Uh, it can be also non-heated uh, if necessary to reduce energy costs. 
For the sections, I chose the main hall with the main staircases and the greenhouse. The greenhouse, this is the educational greenhouse representing uh, the movements in the society who are learning and uh, researching. Those are elevations representing also different materiality, as you can see also in the model that I used uh, wood for corridors, aluminum panels for smaller units to have this integration with the nature. And for the greenhouses, I used glazing and uh, uh, also uh, steel and aluminum. For residential, it's also quite simple. I use the modularity, prefabricated units that can be integrated and also uh, stick as a Lego pieces, let's say, and uh, also used of uh, sustainable materialities. And those are some close-ups of uh, residential blocks. Thank you. So the established questions for me was the first question is rural approach repl replicable in any other region in order to boost rural communities? If yes, will it need some specifically local adaptations and in what way? So for me, this question, uh, uh, the answer to this question was yes or no. Uh, yes, uh, if uh, uh, the program itself can be can be replicable in any other region because I feel like uh, these resource cen centers and educational centers can be integrated and also should be integrated in other regions to um, integrate rural communities, to give them the possibility to research, to give them this integration also to the urban environments, yet keeping this rural atmosphere. So mm -hmm. the program itself can be but the project, no, because it should uh, also require some local adaptation because this project was specifically designed for this specific location, taking into account the sea coast, the road accessibility. So all these six factors that I mentioned in my presentation should be integrated to create this project itself. Mm -hmm. And the second question was, uh, please comment on an energy independent solution of the settlement. Uh, for this question, uh, I touched upon a bit in the presentation that I used solar panels and wind turbines as an energy source, uh, so it can be also energy independent. And uh, also this uh, graph represents another solution for the water usage for the grain water uh, inside the buildings and uh, also the usage of how it can be transformed also and benefit the greenhouses and the units itself. Thank you. Thank you, Samantha. Mm -hmm. Forward, please. <coughs> I think you have produced a very competent design. It's a very interesting topic, too. Uh, just a couple of more fundamental questions. Your, your title for the project is Architectural Solutions for Sustainable Rural Communities. Now, you want uh, rural communities to be sustainable, to, to be stronger than it has been in recent years, because you're talking about the urbanization, people leaving the, 
Um, now, you're bringing to this particular area, you're bringing the new structures and new activities. Now, how will that affect the, if you like, the primary um, goal of producing, say, food or whatever? Um, now, are you restoring some of that or not? Um, or are you kind of bringing attention to something else? Is it necessary? And also another question is, um, I noticed that you had two smaller parts for car parking. Not very large, presumably that's sufficient. But I was just wondering if you would go even further and say that if I now produce car parks, I will take green areas in order to create a car park. Did you consider bringing the cars on the ground so they can actually cover the car park with greenery? Uh, I'm thinking about an, an interesting vineyard I see in Italy, where they have when they were storing the wine is on the ground and they pulled the kind of the green above it, and then also with the the vineyard. Now, would you? I think what you've done is very clever, very good. It's on full marks. But uh, would you? Have, did you consider to go even further? To, 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 you know, s stress it even further. Mm, so for the first question... Or challenge him, well, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the first question about the communities itself, uh, I think I was thinking about integrating those sustainable agricultural practices for the communities for growing food so they can uh, learn from the urban centers and from their resources how it can be done in a more sustainable way uh, uh, using different uh, approaches. So uh, that's why in the research center it could be also the learning process for them so the existing communities can learn and to uh, understand what can be uh, outside rural areas but at the same time being in the rural areas with the urban resources. Yeah. And um, for the second question uh, about the parking lots, it was meant uh, not to put like concrete uh, paving but uh, gravel. Uh, that was one of my first initial thoughts, uh, but about um, bringing it underground, it can be also the possibility so they are hidden, that uh, there is no uh, so attention to the cars because it uh, doesn't really go with the sustainability approach, but we cannot avoid it. Um, yes, but it's a good, I think, also idea to create this. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you for the presentation. Um, I do uh, have some questions, probably I will start step by step. Uh, first of all, I was wondering uh, about the chosen um, case studies you had in your part uh, A. Mm -hmm. uh, it was Louisiana Museum and Tofu Factory. And I was wondering, have you um, probably considered to go into some, I don't know, for example, we have uh, botanical gardens, we do have also in Latvia, Salzburg's um, botanical gardens, some uh, other agricultural uh, research centers, but these examples are way too different from what are we seeing here. Yes, um, the programs are completely different from the, <laughs> the project itself, but I think I was paying attention to the community integration into the spaces, how they also link the paths and how they integrate the community, rural community, because for me it was also important to choose um, the project that will be located outside the city. That's why for me it was a bit complicated to search for the relevant case studies. And uh, that's why I chose those ones because they had really strong link between the rural local communities and the building itself. And also the location wise was really important for me. And um, I think, yes, that was the leading point and also the landscapes that they created was the most important rather than searching exactly for specific program building. Okay. So <coughs> another question is about the um, living space units. As I understand, um, <coughs> there are some residents uh, which are living there, like, um, I don't know, coming for one month or, or one year uh, alone or with families. So how do you imagine this uh, research um, center um, happening there? Who, who are the researchers who are living there? Um, and is it the most efficient way to uh, how to say, um, make the living space for them as a separate units. 
Yes. Have you considered mm. probably some other typology of uh, so-called housing there? Mm -hmm. um, yes, for the residential blocks, it was meant that those residential blocks will be used by the students and researchers who will go there, for example, from the centers of Leopard and Lenspils, from the universities or from the um, educational systems. Uh, that is meant uh, for the sh short term, not for one year, but for example, a few days, one week maximum they, they need for this research, or also for the research is even longer, maybe s uh, several months. And about the units, um, the main thought was, again, to go from the public space to the, resident, uh, for the more private space, so they learn and they uh, also educate themselves in this shared space, which is the research center, and then they go separately alone to those residential blocks, enjoy the nature of rural areas, and also a bit isolate from the research center to get this uh, personal uh, attention to those areas. So they can learn by themselves being alone. In yeah, that probably sense. that's just one, one of the options. Yes. Um, maybe not the most efficient one, but it, it could work also. And um, the last question is, you had the beautiful idea about the pixelated um, <coughs> uh, farming concept. And we don't see that in your general plan. Probably you have some idea how the how you can incorporate that idea into your research center because I can't see nothing what happens between the buildings. We do understand that all the process is going on in the greenhouses, but in those research centers we just don't grow any everything in the greenhouses. We grow also something and uh, see what happens outside. So probably mm -hmm. you have some comments on that. Yes, of course. Uh, the idea, um, maybe in this collage it can be seen a bit that uh, those are like sculptures representing the pixels, but also the idea that people can use those outside spaces as well for the growing vegetables, for planting, or also using for different purposes. So it was meant not that all everything in learning happens inside this building, but also outside in those smaller shared courtyards. In that sense. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Very interesting topic and relevant for the for Latvia since really the countryside is um, uh, emptying towards the cities and and uh, rural actually is ending and urban is spreading out. <laughs> and um, it's, yes, it's a question, but also a comment from my side about your, your work. Uh, um, approximately, uh, can you guess what is the local um, country commune you are, um, th so rural community you are, for which you are building this center? So, I mean, how many people will attract this uh, center since uh, there will be some researchers and students from somewhere over all, all, all over Latvia, maybe, maybe some um, um, from other countries maybe. And how many local um, people will join this research center? And which is, what is the distance for the locals uh, which would be interested in this one, in this research center? Thank you for your question. Um, the approximately estimate for the whole unit was around uh, 200, 300 people. And uh, for nearby, for example, there are two nearby settlements existing. Uh, one of them is located in two, three kilometers away, which uh, by walk is 25 minutes. By car or bicycle, it's two minutes, so it's not too far away. And the second one is, uh, and the, the first one, there are 2,000 inhabitants. And then the second one is located a bit farther away. It's uh, seven, eight kilometers. So, but it's also close enough, and as well as it's close to Liepai, it's 20 minutes by car or bus. So it's, uh, the location is really convenient for all these settlements and then can be easily accessible if uh, the necessary infrastructure is provided. 
And um, yes, the the um, aim, the main target, I think, would be uh, the local communities located nearby those two existing settlements, not the urban center. There's also urban centers education for educational purposes. So um, the estimate could be um, 400 locals that can. Because fit. my question is more about mm, well, uh, what are the qualities of Latvian rural uh, landscape, I would, say, uh, I would ask. Um, in my opinion, it's still those uh, uh, single family, family farmhouses which create that uh, our, our imagination about Latvian landscape, not those mm -hmm. uh, form, former kolkhoz centers. So isn't that that you are actually creating the next one, urban area, somewhere in between two already existing uh, small urban areas and then somewhere between pretty big uh, urban cities. So isn't that some actually um, opposite effect of uh, what you are uh, thinking about uh, or you are speaking about that you are uh, serving rural uh, development and making urban development didn't you yes, rethink um, this one? Because you are attracting more and more cars, more and more, because people will come by cars or by, mm -hmm. by buses by, or by uh, additional uh, bus roads or, or something like that. So, so traffic towards this point. And, and so maybe that would be easier to bring uh, closer to the big cities from where will come tho those people to work there and, and to investigate that. Just a comment, mm -hmm. but thank you. Yeah. But uh, good to think about it, thank yes. you. Uh, I mean, good to think about your team yeah. and that's good. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Samantha, thank you for your job. It's interesting and, and um, for me, not uh, even not so much understandable because I, I didn't didn't catch a uh, idea how it works uh, let's say economically are they producing something and selling or, or this this is just a educational center or research center then it must be financed by a government or by a municipality who is who is dealing with these things in your mind or, or what, what is idea uh, how it works economically this is the first thing because uh, so far I understand this is more, more research. It's not, not living on the place, not growing uh, vegetables, not selling uh, vegetables, because our traditional, uh, traditional system of uh, countryside, there is uh, economically based. They are producing goods and selling and living on this money. It's very simple. Here not. Here something different. Then, therefore, some financing is needing, needed. Oh, probably government can support it or, uh, or municipality can support it. It's very nice to have a possibility to research these things and so on. This is a one question probably you have some, uh, some idea about that. The second is very small thing. I, if I look on this greenhouse, this is something for uh, education, yes? Mm -hmm. to, to grow these small rows, but this is very big concrete surface how you can explain this one. You have any idea why it's so much concrete here? Uh, so for the first question, actually, one of the units of this research center is meant for the market. So uh, there is a possibility for the greenhouses to grow the vegetables and then sell them as well. So it's not only for the research, but also economically that people can go there and also buy this uh -huh. stuff. And uh, for development of this, uh, uh, project itself, it can be also integrated for the local funds or the European Union funds, for example. And um, yes, for that purpose and for the illustration, um, it's, uh, yes, maybe it's, it was one of the uh, uh, difficult choices to choose the pavement, but it was maybe also meant for the gravel and uh, maybe bricks, and, but not the concrete itself. Maybe it looks a like mistake. <laughs> that's computer make a mistake. Okay, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Thank you for your answer. Okay. Yeah, Samantha. Thank you for your presentation. Really, really nice uh, 
boards and layout and the research and um, I really appreciate your site plan. Can you go to the section where you show the sea, uh, the, sea the section near the sea? I, I, I like the um, uh, orientation, the, the section near the sea, where you were showing the relationship of the buildings to the water and the, and the, uh, and the height of the edge condition. Yeah, yeah, here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I like the way you laid this out because uh, you've taken this, these things into account where the, um, where the trees uh, at, the, at the edge of the, near the sea, they, creating this sort of this buffer from, from the seaside and the orientation of the actual facility uh, along the road. And I think your decisions on that uh, were correct and, and inspired by, by that. And also on this type of facility, orientation is uh, very important. And I believe, I believe the way you've laid, done the site plan uh, works and it's a nice job. I agree to the, the critique about if you, if you have a thought, you need to show the thought because otherwise then we think it's not there. But I know that you have thought about these pixel gardens in, in detail, but then, <clears throat> then if they are outside, uh, because your exonometry is more diagrammatic, right? And it, but right next to your exonometry, you have this little diagram showing these pixel uh, pattern of, of how the, the, that foliage, the different garden uh, uh, produce and types of uh, plants are arranged. And then just to, to make sure that you show that then in those different courtyard areas, you know, so that we see that what's happening inside the greenhouse is also bleeding out as an outside function. Uh, because it's doable and, and you've arranged it to, to make it. You just need to sh say it and show it. And then a, a comment um, which I, uh, I, you know, just in response to what uh, Gunt and Linda were uh, asking or questioning, I, s I see this more as a, um, more as a special purpose, uh, special purpose settlement where, you know, there are universities that have research centers and, and this is a great way I think to unite research with with business and with economics that uh, the students that come here as a residency are researching and looking at innovations and it's sort of like a two-way street the community can be invited also to share their experience and then those things can this serves as a platform for that to happen um, so that these new technologies and existing traditions have a place to actually have a, a discourse to experiment with those ideas and actually use them. So I, I actually see the, that as a very positive thing rather than a settlement that's trying to resolve urban issues, more of a sort of a retreat center for, uh, for actually uh, a place of residency for doing research. Um, and then the other thing um, I wanted to mention here, was I uh, um, on the uh, pixel uh, idea um, that it's a very new thing, and that um, to uh, you know then then just to celebrate that graphically, that was the main thing. Okay, thank you very thank much. You so much.
come from That's why I stopped it now. Hello, everyone. Uh, my bachelor thesis theme is creation of the new cultural center in Marupe municipality. My name is Emilia Zatia, and my supervisor is Janis Drippe. Um, first of all, I want to talk about my uh, research part where I uh, analyze topics such as history of, of, of culture centers, case studies and the Marupe municipalities. Um, researching the history of, of culture centers, it's really important to explore, uh, explore and realize from where they came from and how, how they how they developed it uh, during the time, and how people were involved in this, in uh, all those, um, all those centuries before. And in my case studies, I studied uh, six uh, cultural centers, what we have right here in um, in Latvia, and uh, researching the case studies. It really helped me a lot because. I can see how all those functions, they work in real life and it helps to analyze what functions we need more and what functions serves well. And, and it's really yeah, great for real life uh, application. And for the Marupe mun municipality, um, it was important to understand w what the community is, is right here like and who, what are the uh, traditions and uh, what kind of things um, Marupes inhabitants, they, um, uh, they enjoy. And for the location for my plot, it's in uh, Marupe municipality, Tiraine, and the address is Tiraine Gardens 1 and Tiraine Gardens 2. And the accessibility from from the current uh, culture center is just 2.2 2, um, 2 kilometers away. And so it means that it's uh, walking uh, 30 minutes, by bus it's uh, 19 minutes, and by car it's five minutes. So it's not too far at all. And the, the area is uh, characterized by flat and, uh, and, and low terrain. And the, the neighboring th Territory is uh, private houses, so low-rise apartments, row houses, and also there are horse stables. And the important thing what I want to mention is that Marupe, they uh, claim that they want new, new, new culture center because the already existing one, it, it don't serve its function on 100%. And uh, right here we can see three, um, 
um, three, three diagrams. And on the first one, we can see where the each function should be put. And the second one uh, on the up, we can see the uh, planning for uh, greenery in the land plot. And on the one that's down, we can see the road, um, the road uh, transportation in the in the in the land plot. And what I did, I removed the road that uh, that divides the the land plot, uh, so you can just walk in there. But there are two car parkings. The biggest one is for 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 public use, and the small one is for workers and artists. And those um, empty spaces, what we have in the middle, they are for for um, for for public functions, such as playgrounds for older kids, for for younger kids. They are also also outside gym area and area for elderly people. And when it came to the shape of the building, at first it was just uh, three three uh, um, rectangles, and then. I wanted to connect with the surrounded park and that's why I created those rounded walls. And then the idea when came, I, I thought that I want to make the roof as the main element and to connect it with the surrounded park. And uh, this is the first floor plan and it's uh, mostly divided into three parts. Um, the one is, is for, uh, for, um, for public use, and the biggest one is the exhibition hall that can be d divided into three areas, and there are, in, um, there are mo movable in interior walls that can be ad adjusted for each exhibition. And then the, this part that is uh, behind it's more private, just for workers and artists. And right there, we have like storage spaces, uh, of th th technical rooms, and also rooms for w workers, such as uh, wor wardrobes, uh, uh, enjoyment area, and uh, bathrooms. And uh, also, I put there a restaurant that is av available available for everyone, also for those who enter the, the center and also for those who just pass by. And on the second floor plan, I put there like a two main functions. The first one is the office space for employees and the other one is for all the, all, all, uh, all the, the people who, who get, who came here, and there is this large, uh, like, um, this uh, this lobby where people can uh, can gather, and there is this mini bar also, and on this, and also there are two two concert halls. The small one is with 100 seats, and the large one is with 460 seats. Yeah. And right there, we can see the facades of the building. And in those uh, drawings, we can really well see that uh, the roof is the main uh, element of the building. And the walls are curved as well. And it's uh, organic shape. And, uh, and I did what I wanted to achieve. And uh, because the, yeah, the main thing is the roof, that it's like the bridge that connects the building with the and, um, environment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Elena. Uh, uh, the uh, reviewer of uh, annual Bachelor of Physics, uh, Janusz Wojniak. And the positive qualities of the pieces, uh, theoretical part, uh, the topic is relevant to me to find out the right new functions of the map, but also painter. 
uh, in intersection. There are no figures on the right of Marquette Social Center, people involved in different uh, non-professional access, number of activities, etc. Uh, the positive qualities of the practical part, the building program is interpreted correctly. Uh, the disadvantages, uh, you find that aesthetic considerations emphasize the serious blend of <coughs> form and function, ensuring that the architectural elements not only serve practical purposes, but also contribute to the visual feel and uh, identity of the cultural center. To my mind, uh, in your project, the architecture mostly serves to the visual appeal of the cultural center and properly contributes its practical purposes. Thank you. You can yeah. answer to the question now. Yeah, and the question was, uh, uh, I state that Mar Marupa Cultural Center can eff eff effectively adapt to the en environment of Marupa and the success of this attempt will depend on the active engagement and the participation of the community, allowing the center to evolve into a true cultural foundation and prove to the Marupa's inhabitants. Did you have some talks with Marupa's inhabitants? And no, un 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 unfortunately, I, I did not have talk with Marupes in inhabitants, but that's why I did the, the, the case studies, because the case, case studies, they are great example for functions, how they work in the re real life, and, uh, and, and, and we can very well see how they work and if, if, if people are happy with them or no. And that's why I took those great functions from, uh, from case studies and I applied them right here in, in this uh, center. And the second question was, what kind of services will given approximately 20 technical rooms in the first floor of your building? And uh, yes, the rooms under the name of, um, of, um, of technical services will uh, serve as a technical room, storage room, the, the, the delivery area, and also those private spaces for workers. And um, Yes, uh, as I mentioned, like well, for like their <coughs> wardrobe enjoyment area, and also there will be rehearsal rehearsal rooms that will be available for our artists. And I chose to call this place more 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 um, more like um, a technical room because this is the most private area of the whole building. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I must admit I don't know the community, I don't know the place, so I've just seen the drawings. Uh, but I'm just wondering, um, uh, talking about, if I look at the, um, the site plan just behind you there, yeah. it's a large park, I understand, and you're building at the edge of a park, is that correct? It's uh, on the uh, far side of the of the plot because that was uh, from the what Marupe wants, yeah. and I just uh, kept the main idea. Yeah, I think you you done a beautiful model. You can see it quite clearly also in the model, uh, okay. and I understand the dark units are houses scattered around, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah those are the yeah. Those but and, and you showed us that you you started off with rectangular blocks and then you added some curves. Yeah. Now the advantage of a curve is that it could be including, also excluding. Now I just wonder how you you enter, because uh, as far as I can see on the side plan again, you, you have a car park. Uh, from the car park you can walk a bit and you get the end of the structure. Yeah. Um, can you easily access it also from the park? Or is it the main entrance from the car park? Um, from the uh, park, there are like a few that are smaller entrances and a few that are bigger. But uh, yeah, uh, the main entrance, yeah, maybe should be closer to the culture center. But that's why I created also those small ones that you can easily yeah. enter from the street. Because when you when you enter, if you see the car park, you get like a concave shape, and that is not really inviting you to go in. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, how do you feel the design you've done, which is very thoroughly done, very cleverly done, but do you think it's kind of inviting people to come into it, or are you more 
um, you, you created an organic shape, as you're saying, yeah. you know, in the roof, and very attractive. But is it kind of obvious where you should enter? Is it uh, the outside space? For instance, the ent you entered from the north, where you only have shade most of the day, no sun. Um, the sun is on the uh, park side. Um, I'm just a bit curious about how this fits into the community, how you attract people from the community to use it. Mm -hmm. Because the way I see it, it could be more like an excluding shape than an including shape. But uh, maybe that's unfair. What do you think? <laughs> mm, that's actually a really great question. Um, yeah, um, what I just want to, yeah, the, the, because the entrance, yeah. Um, um, I should have made, I like, I already tried to make it in the most of visible part of the building, but yeah, if the pathways will be like more like um, welcoming to the building, yeah. then it will be more of a su uh, success, but um, yeah. If, if, you go, if you go back to your side plan, you had a screen, you had two arrows, I noticed, um, like here, no, mm -hmm. that last one. Uh, now, what, what do those arrows signify? Uh, do they signify entrances or? No, they show. The just the viewpoint. The yeah, just the viewpoint. Side. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you should uh, move the next one, is that the entrance you show there or is it just viewpoint? Now, that's just also where you stand. Um, yeah. Right here, yeah. Uh, this is the front part of the building and the right. entrance is where the building is the, yeah. the highest one. Yeah. Like. yeah. Okay, thank you. Well. Thank you for the presentation. I have so many questions that I will ask only one. <laughs> <laughs> um, because, <coughs> to be honest, uh, the uh, others uh, showed a lot more. And you do know that they showed a lot more. And <coughs> to be honest, <coughs> this is not enough for the bachelor's thesis. For example, we don't see the section and therefore, my only question will be, how do you imagine the structure will work? Um, probably you could also uh, comment on the construction methods, because what I see in the model, I see that the roof is in the same material as uh, the, the, the part material. Is it somehow organically um, covered with grass or, or whatever. I don't know. <coughs> Could you explain the structure and, um, and everything else? Because I we have don't columns see that. Put on the first on the on the second floor and they are uh, repeating after mm -hmm. eight meters and also mm -hmm. for the roof I also have 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 those columns that also hold the roof that goes over the facade. Um, uh, it's, uh, I was mostly thinking that it could be like the, uh, aluminium uh, structure. Um, well, I, I didn't want to ask, thank you for, for um, first of all, um, for your presentation. <coughs> I didn't want to ask about, uh, structure, but, well, following up, uh, because there is a lack of, uh, sections and, and information on facades about um, heights of the building, uh, only we can guess um, from the model. Maybe you can explain what is the height of a uh, concert hall, because it has to be with a slope and so on. That should be like highest point actually in a facade and I can't understand what would be the height. And besides that, the uh, concert hall is located on the second floor, so it's yeah. higher than The second everything. floor is on this side of the facade and it is it is the highest point. And the facade in this highest point, it reaches uh, six, 16 meters. And so for the concert hall, it is, there is a quite, uh, quite uh, large, the distance. 
Okay, thank you. <clears throat> um, my question was more about um, location of uh, the new cultural center and the program uh, of the cultural center. Yes, uh, I think the topic is pretty relevant and uh, I'm, I'm not from that side, I would say, but I know that Marupa is very quickly the developing uh, region of Riga and suburb of Riga, so it really might need, uh, as I understand, it really needs some uh, additional cultural facilities and, um, and so everything is developing uh, there. Uh, I know all the Marupe Cultural Center, which is really nearly to this one, this place, and I know uh, Jaun Marupe's um, art school or something like that, yeah. where is a concert yeah. hall also and, and some facilities. But um, didn't you consider some different spaces or <coughs> some analysis about the Marupe's as suburb or um, region? Um, plan where else uh, there could be such cultural center or was that Marupes uh, munici municipal considering to, to have this, this there or that is your choice? Uh, no, uh, <coughs> Marupe mun municipality, they uh, uh, claim that they want this new center in this uh, um, in this landlot but I also was was looking for other function as for other space, but the Marupe is built up all around and there aren't such so big uh, space with uh, with public fun function that I could use for for okay. culture center. So this was the only option. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And about the program of uh, cultural center, usually um, such centers are not just concert hall or exhibition hall. Uh, they are usually like uh, local spots for, for I don't know, for choirs, for dance um, troops, and so they need a couple of uh, halls where to um, uh, have repetitions and, and maybe some art studios and so. I know old old cultural center has some some couple of choirs, ensembles, uh, dance dance troops and and so. Uh, what about program for this cultural center, which is newly built, and uh, do they do will they have some some such spaces for that, or how do you think how it how it will be used, or just for some concerts which are like coming there and, and being there, that's all? Uh, no, uh, that's why I also thought about that. That's why <coughs> on the first floor I put do uh, two of those uh, rehear rehearsal rooms that could be used also for those uh, um, dancing and uh, singing, uh, um, singing um, functions. And on the on the second floor, there also where are, they? are I'm those. Sorry. Yeah, I, I don't see. <coughs> these are there. Where is the the technical part of the building? But it also could be on um, on the second floor. Uh, I also put them those large conference halls that will be used for large meetings and for uh, like um, events. And it also could happen there. So there are like. Um, any mm -hmm. options to choose okay, from? Thank you, <coughs> Emilia. Uh, for such a great architecture, I will t I will ask uh, a little bit smaller questions. Can you put uh, a plan, please? Uh, second floor, once more. Yes, this is a nice. Uh, I, I would like I would like to ask about. Uh, very simple thing. Uh, this is on the second floor, this main hall, yes, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, probably we need to think about this emergency things. D did you have any idea about uh, emergency exits or something like that? How you how you calculate how people can take can get out? Yeah. And so um, there's yeah this uh, uh, main. Uh, the main is um, main is not uh, main is not working as a e emergency escape. This uh -huh. is open. This is full of uh, smoke. It's not not possible. Mm -hmm. the yeah, you so have no idea yeah, about that. Yeah, 
You I'm forgot. Sorry, I forgot yeah. Again, computer. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you. Doesn't matter. <coughs> yes. Thank you, Emily. I, I had uh, similar questions. I was about and, and agreed the previous comments. I'm just. Uh, my question is: Did the uh, municipality of uh, uh, Maropa, besides? Uh, them having this detail plan for here. I have two questions. Uh, did you think about proposing this site without having this, this the road there? Uh, or did you substitute the road for pedestrians? That's one question. And then the other question is, did the Maropa have a program? Because, you know, uh, you know, an auditorium for 450 people, that's, that's almost bigger than the National Library's auditorium. And I'm just, you know, uh, did, did you have any information from them about their requirements, uh, or did you, um, besides your case studies, did I they have? I have information just about the outside, and the, the spot yeah. is uh, just, uh, just walkable, so there is not such a road that, uh, that, uh, um, that divides it. And for the house, for the counter house, uh, what I just know that the Marupa uh, Council, they said that they want two, two halls, one the small one and one the large one, but they didn't like uh, conclude how big they should be. Yeah, but they just claim that they want two, mm -hmm. okay. two, two different halls. Okay. And then also about the, the, the entrance, I, I, I agree. I mean, if uh, with, with what, uh, uh, Ola was saying, if you know, if if people are coming by car, yes, you, you, they are they are presented with a facade that really doesn't clearly I identify where the entry is from the, the from the park side. If you go to your first floor uh, plan, um, uh, from the from the park side, from the south, coming into this central space uh, makes sense. But I but see. Um, you're not even you're not providing doors to enter from both sides. Is that correct? Yeah, only from the, only from the park side. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah, this is a little. It's not unclear because in what you know because you're you're creating like this funnel into you know, between these two volumes, but th that funnel uh, doesn't go to anywhere. So I, I uh, so if you if you are bringing people by car to a place. Uh, versus coming to the entrance from the park, you have to really carefully then decide how how people that are exiting the parking area actually uh, understand that approach. So this, this is a really important aspect as well. Um, the the one note I'm I'm glad that you decided not to split the site in half as Marupa is proposing, because otherwise this whole park idea wouldn't work. So I think that was. Uh, correct that you did that. Okay, thank you. Yep.
Hello, uh, my name is uh, Daniel, and uh, today I would like to present my bachelor thesis, which focuses on reviving memory of moments, sensorial experience of Latvian traditional uh, bathhouse spaces, and recent civilization of ancestral connections. The presentation consists of four parts the introduction, theory part, practical, and conclusions. And I will start with introduction part. Um, the study seeks to explore the potential of sensory experiences within design spaces, emphasizing their role as a gateway to unlocking human abilities and understanding the world through the senses. Uh, for the theoretical part, uh, one of the main uh, investigated objectives was a phenomenological um, aspect in the field of architecture. Phenomenology focuses on how things in the world occur for us, instead how they might be in themselves. Essential considerations in uh, phenomenological design include how spaces progress over time, how people navigate them, and how memories form within them. When it comes to the perception of the space, it becomes quite clear that all, um, that the space is perceived by the all body senses uh, simultaneously that interact with one another. With its system of senses, uh, the human body serves as an entry to diverse experiences, offering unique and personal journey through the embodied world. Uh, for this presentation, I would like to focus on embodied experience uh, that ritual itself possesses as um, it is further is going to be evident uh, also in designing uh, process of the spaces. The Latvian um, Pertz ritual is ancient uh, Latvian perspective on life and uh, a mean through which the surrounding and natural world uh, was translated through. The ritual involves several important actions in the sequence, like welcome, then gradual warming up, the uh, warming, then heating, and uh, the culmination of the process is uh, swim in the water, which uh, can be also described as the rebirth. Um, the Pirtz ritual is a sensory and spatial experience that transcends ordinary moments connecting one with uh, inner self and the an ancestral heritage. Um, it is not just a singular event. Uh, it Instead, it showcases a larger cyclical process that all living beings are part of. It aligns with regeneration, continuity, and fatality, the eternal cycle of being. As body and uh, movement are in a persistent dialogue with the space, each space in, is an opportunity to tell the story, the story of a human who experiences the architectural space and the story of the space that is always present, regardless of humans' existence in it. Uh, the surrounding environment of the building reveals the narrative of the potential perceived spaces long before the inside. The narrative of the inside starts to uh, be revealed on the outside. Therefore, for this project, the site location uh, played a crucial, uh, crucial role in the design development. The select, selected locate, uh, location in the, is uh, located in the eastern side of the Latvia, which is uh, in Latgala region. Latgala is a unique um, region in the territory of Latvia with its distinctive topography, um, interplay of forests, uh, lakes, and um, fields, and typical winding roads. All this creates the typical mosaic character of the Latgala landscape. The site, uh, the site is located in the far distance from the populated areas, uh, far from high active uh, zones of transportation. And besides that, one of the primary pur purposes of the site selection is my personal ancestral connection with the site. It has a personal um, background in my family as the location is associated with the remaining Latvian part of my uh, family's ancestors. Um, The initial concern after the site was that, uh, that came to my mind was that um, 
when I started to think how can I implement the uh, man-made um, constructor constructed object into the site that is so sensitive and uh, um, how can I do that without disturbing the beauty of the um, landscape? And it felt almost that uh, I have no right to destroy or interfere with the surrounding environment. Therefore, um, I decided to create something that is planted in the landscape seamlessly and that gradually expands in the moment when one starts to approach it. And uh, the initial intention that came naturally was to create a journey. So the journey starts uh, from the point when one starts uh, to turn to the right from the highway to the typical rural road and end up, ends up in the highest point of the site, which allows to overlook the beautiful scenery of the region. Um, suddenly the road starts to gradually slope down and leads to the parking spot uh, where one can uh, leave the car and um, move uh, towards the narrow one person scale path that um, leads up upwards again and allows uh, to overlook the views of the area, feel the wind on the body, uh, a breath of fresh air. And from that point, one, also, one can also start to sense and perceive the entrance to the building, um, which uh, reminds of some kind of landscape intervention that uh, the walls gradually expand from the ground and leads one not in parallel to topography lines, but deeper into the ground. And um, before realization comes, uh, the path which is surrounded by walls and accompanied by, uh, with the view to the sky um, ends up with the f ends up facing the door and uh, when op when one opens the door suddenly the perceiver is in a dark and enclosed space which is uh, in contrast with the outside which was experienced the second before a sight for the moment is out of the uh, judgment other senses start to uh, sharpen and open up. The potentials that in daily life um, are silenced in darkness, the presence um, in darkness, they uh, open up. Uh, the presence of the water, which is uh, accompanied the visitor from both sides, can be sensed with the sound of the space and with the movement of the body. And being exposed to such environment, the intention is also to force um, the person to start to focus on the body and on the embodied experience of the space and also start to leave behind uh, the um, irrespressible pace of daily life to slow down and pay attention to um, simple things of being like breathing, uh, listening, hearing, the feeling. Gradually exploring the space further, one can start to notice the light from the next space and uh, when one ends up in this space, it is evident that it, it is again in contrast with the previous space. It is light and the ceiling height is higher. Uh, it is filled with skylight and openness. This described space is a reception, the welcome space, where the visitor is guided further to the building. And the next space is a changing room when, where the one also starts to leave behind another layer that, uh, that one came with. And the, after the changing room uh, follows the pool area that symbol, uh, which symbolically mean also uh, this um, symbol symbolically aims to wash away another layer that one could come with. And um, this space start to prepare for the, um, the final destination of the whole building, which is the uh, pits or bath bathhouse space. And this space is also, again, the contrast between um, with another space that was perceived previously. It is dark, tiny, enclosed with lower ceiling height. And uh, the only uh, difference is the small, uh, tiny window which starts to frame the landscape uh, and the scenery of the region of the site and um, it is the first time when the person starts to have a glimpse of 
what is like around the building because before that no space did it. And after the heating up in the heat room, there is the culmination moment that one has been prepared for throughout the whole journey process, starting from the turn up from the highway. And this culmination moment is uh, being outside in the nature, seeing the view, um, feeling the natural world, air and breath, uh, and wind again on the body, in the body, and with probably different perception and gratitude as the person that came in the space and the person that is out has been slightly changed. I believe that architecture can transform our impressions of the world into tangible dimensions, giving a deeper meaning to the spaces we inhabit. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Daniel, for your presentation. Thank you. Uh, uh, the uh, reviewer of uh, Daniel's thesis was uh, Ingrid Pasuana. And uh, the positive qualities of uh, her so far, the author has chosen the theme that is relevant to the larger discussion, not only about instability in architecture, but also an evocation of the project. <coughs> Perhaps the thesis might be said as <coughs> one of uh, the themes that lead to careful preservation and innovation of the traditions of trauma. Uh, the disadvantages. Optionally, the author could have uh, discussed in more detail the relevance of trauma within contemporary culture of Latvia. Uh, so, it is rather the theme to continue to reach uh, the research than an uh, actual disadvantage. And about uh, practical parts, uh, positive qualities are uh, Women have theoretical part of the thesis. The author has chosen well uh, the literature sources that link experimental tools in architecture with the traditions of trauma rituals. Uh, the same attitude of linking various aspects of the site and sensible design principles can be seen in her project. This was good and now I'm going to take the first one. The first question from the reviewer is uh, please explain in more detail how the program as well as the design principles were carried out in relation to the special features of the area and site. So for the deliberate analysis of the typology of the site, um, I started uh, to um, do a, a lot of like section drawings to understand the points of the site which would benefit my design. So the highest point is the arrival point, then there is a lower point, which is also more flat, and uh, it also is surrounded by um, higher points of the topography. So the lowest point is somewhere like here in the middle, and um, keeping that in mind, uh, I wrote down the program layout for the spaces that I need in the building, and uh, with this, and then each space separated from one another, another like program and um, fragmented it and started to put like in the site so the layout of the um, building could benefit my design and also could benefit this uh, seamless um, planting into the landscape. Mm -hmm. And um, the second question is please explain the intended impact of the project upon the local culture. So Ladiga as the region of uh, Latvia seems a little bit like a forgotten land comparing to other regions. Therefore, uh, this um, inter intervention um, of the um, architecture which um, brings uh, tradition and uh, brings a tradition to different lights and gives another meaning to the um, ancestral connections and uh, traditions can also um, bring the discussion um, back to the, this region and pay attention that uh, this region is unique in the Latvia and that 
further development of this region is uh, necessary. Please well, Daniela, you should be commended for choosing a philosophical approach to architecture. Um, this is the most philosophical approach we've listened to or seen so far. Um, I find it fascinating. Also, you're talking about the eternal cycle of being, fragmented sequence of experiences, and then just behind your behind you now, I can see the. Local animal welcome, as you say. <laughs> now, all this is very interesting, but I feel you kind of jumped very quickly from the philosophical aspect to the architecture. Now then, suddenly, I know you have the point of departure is the, the uh, traditional bathhaus, the Pirz. <laughs> yeah. uh, but then, all of a sudden, we saw a, draw we saw a plan of several little bathhouses and some connection. I didn't quite understand how you, ent understand how you enter. But you seem to have jumped from the philosophy to the very concrete architecture. And I wish you had produced more conceptual drawings to explain how you arrived there, not just uh, animal welcome, you know. Um, and also, I think, I think your approach is interesting. The topic is very interesting. And I think like the, the drawing you had of the, the roof light and the, you know, I can understand the atmosphere in there very easily. But, um, I wish you had produced more conceptual drawings, how you arrived at where you did arrive, and also carried out with more architectural, if you like, drawings, details, showing really the atmosphere you're creating. But um, the approach is very interesting. Thank you very much. Well, um, thank you. The graphics are really nice. But still, um, can we just get back to the plan and uh, I think that the question which uh, the reviewer also asked uh, could you please in details um, explain again how we enter uh, and how w w uh, everything about the plan that's my first question okay. maybe this one is better I can stay I don't know it's small anyway um, well how you go I say I don't know <laughs> the um, other side. it's fine so you enter here, the topography starts to uh, like gradually um, get deeper into the ground. Then you enter the narrow entrance, which is uh, like longer and leads you towards the space. Then you end up in the space, and um, rather you can go to the changing rooms and change, leave your clothes, or if you have to fa uh, wait, there is also like visitor space, which. Uh, is providing the opportunity to um, stay longer there uh, in the building. And after the changing room uh, follows the uh, pool area, and uh, after the pool area, there are like several uh, pit spaces. So the circulation would be like this. And what is those uh, rooms? which are staying on the north side of the building? This the room is uh, for personnel, um, so um, the personnel can also uh, be in the separate room and... Uh, so yeah. the changing rooms are for each person separately? Uh, it's a common uh, changing space with a no, small, it's small it's cabin. For yeah, it's a small cabin and... Uh, there can be decision made if the family can also like change, like two persons can change in one uh, changing room or... Okay, so the only light which comes inside is uh, from the above and afterwards in the pool area? Yeah. Okay, and what about those five uh, small buildings we see on the model? Yeah, and also you can see them on the master plan. They are... Uh, optional accommodation spaces that uh, the visitor can uh, use after the pit spaces, after the whole ritual, and they are also can be used uh, additionally from the building. Do you have some plans, some ideas how... Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I just uh, I didn't focus on them because I wanted to reveal the story of the main building and they are the addition to the design and to the project. 
And probably when I extend my question, what Ole also said, uh, what about the architecture, traditional architecture we have in Latvia for those black uh, saunas, black pirts uh, buildings? We have slope roofs and we have um, the materiality is more like a wood structure. Um, probably you can tell a bit more about your chosen um, structure and materiality. So the Pirts building, it was, uh, as you mentioned, a wooden, uh, wooden, like panel structure panels, uh, which are um, the typical like fired. Uh, yeah, and uh, the uh, main building is uh, in contrast material, which could be like concrete, because um, I deliberately throughout all the design and. Uh, focused on the contrast. So um, this volume and these separate volumes could also contrast in materiality. Um, thank you very much for your uh, presentation. And I was really like in a journey, uh, like tactile and emotional journey uh, during your, uh, your um, presentation. So thank you very much for, for this. And um, actually, all questions were <laughs> already stated. So, so yeah, I, I got answers about materiality of uh, um, cabins, uh, of Pirts cabins, and and so. So, thank you very much. Very interesting and very personal uh, story and journey. So, yeah, very good. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Daniela. A little bit about traditions. Just uh, some questions. Do you have in uh, Latgale some? Uh, this looks me like a partly public uh, object. Mm -hmm. It's not a private only for one family. Uh, this is just an open object, so far I understand. Uh, and the question is, do you have in Latgale such a tradition of public pirts? I don't know about that. So, so far, I know that Pirts is somewhere in Latgale Sata uh, for a family, very small one, uh, just very private for a, for a one family. How it goes together, this nice, beautiful proposal, how it goes together with the tradition of Latgale, first of all. Do you have to idea to change a tradition, so something like that, or... This is a one question, what I didn't understand. Be behind the object is nice and uh, absolutely um, stylish, highly stylish object. <laughs> but what about tradition? I would like to answer also the first question about the location. The site is in a private use and uh, when uh, my family owned it, it was uh, during the like half of the century were even more used for the family purposes and the people lived there. And uh, for the tradition, if we go very back, like really back to the hist history of the pit spaces, they were used um, like in a public purposes. So uh, one uh, building could uh, provide uh, the, the um, bathing for several families as well. So, and it was the place, for example, where women also gave birth and uh, where people were carried out during their uh, last journey here uh, as the beings. And it was used as the like public space as well. And uh, this um, proposal is also like innovating the tradition and, uh, and inviting and welcoming uh, into the our ancestral uh, history, um, people and the interests, uh, like people who maybe never have experienced the ritual before. And uh, yeah, just the welcome and innovation. Super answer, thank you very much. That, that's what I want. Um, actually, actually one uh, thinking about really good and um, like complete project, um, is there idea about uh, really, um, I mean, investment to do that re in reality or is just the project and idea 
is it real, real in, to do such, such complex in uh, Latgale or Rezekna said? Or? My intention was uh, to analyze and uh, also dive deeper into philosophy mm -hmm. of uh, mm -hmm. architecture like phenomenology and this happened like naturally so I never really thought about this question. Mm -hmm. Because it looks like in very good scale to do that in reality, <laughs> so thank you. Yes, Danielle, thank you very much for your presentation. Um, and obviously, the, the, it's already been commented, but the graphics and how you've arranged this and presented is very beautiful. Thank you. Um, I, uh, I also like the, uh, the story or the, the narrative and how you're um, sort of exploding the story of this ritual process to, to interpret and come up with... Uh, uh, those spatial experiences, and, and, it, and it's different than a, a typical uh, sauna experience because you because of this uh, journey aspect and, and the different spatial experiences along the road. Um, I'm, I'm just curious. There was one of the words in your process. You, you exfoliating. What, what does that word mean? I didn't Google it. I just wanted to have you answer it because I because I I just wanted to understand. It was after uh, resting or arrival, and then yeah. you had exfoliating. It is uh, uh, also like just the step of uh, preparing the skin as well to the ah okay yes to yes, the yes heat that will yeah 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 understood after. yes 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 and then uh, um, and then you had this uh, yes ah yes the uh, um, when I look the first of all I really like. The, mo the model is very intriguing in seeing these three elements, uh, uh, sort of the slice in the landscape, and then the, the actual larger shape, and then these other elements a little bit far distant. Uh, when you were showing these different views of the landscape and these vignettes, uh, I think these could actually be very interesting sort of um, uh, art landscape sort of forms. So, and it's not, uh, Typical of what a uh, what a what a Lat Latgalian sort of uh, ritual prince looks like, but I think that's what's actually quite interesting because you've taken it and you've uh, interpreted it and you've placed these buildings on the landscape that are that when you are at those views, to me, it's a believable thing that's actually the landscape is and the dialogue of those volumes is actually quite uh, quite wonderful. So, thank you for that. Yes.
Um, uh, my thesis project is actually called the Museum Phenomena Through Visitors' Pers Perspective, Baltic Sea Museum and Educational Ecology Center Development in Liepaja. Uh, my scientific supervisor is Zane Vea. My inspiration starts with a problem, and this problem is ecological situation in Baltic Sea. It's a little bit tragical and not many people are aware of that. Many people are aware about general ecological problems, but when it comes to some regional problems, uh, some details are usually missed. So for, for my perspective, uh, for awareness and for uh, educate people is actually helping some marine facilities and educational centers and museums. And here, I actually marked all the countries which are somehow have this kind of marine facilities we, which somehow connected to the marine life or researching marine life or displaying it to the public. But as you can see, for example, in Latvia and Estonia, there is nothing such facilities um, which are connected to the marine life and uh, spreading awareness of what is happening on the regional level. So I decided that establish such a facility and the question which first came up to me is where? Because the shore of the Latvia is really big and actually I decided to develop it in Liepaja because Liepaja already has this kind of narrative of a lot of green zones around uh, developing tourism and also Pape Ornithological Station which actually shows that there are some uh, things happening in uh, researching fields, so uh, an involvement with the biology and studying it. So that's how my purpose of the research comes, to develop this uh, Museum of Baltic Sea and Ecology Center in Liepaja. Uh, for my theoretical background, I decided to research of what is actually for the society contemporary museum and uh, I have done uh, the summary that the contemporary museums are actually hold a lot of functions not right now and these functions usually go beyond the regular functionality of the museum. Uh, educational, tourism, uh, entertainment, everything can be put in the museum right now. And of course, uh, the spreading awareness is one of the theme. And also the museum should have the storyline be um, because of it. And from this point, I come to the idea of atmosphere. So the atmosphere is actually a unique thing which actually engage us in something. It evokes feelings. And for if I want to introduce the idea to people, uh, there, is no, there is a need to somehow combine the design with atmosphere to actually introduce idea to people or awareness to people on an emotional level. So that's why I study several architects and uh, created schemes how they perceive atmosphere and how it could be achieved by architectural tools. Uh, here are my case studies which I analyzed before developing my project. Some international, some additional case studies from museum perspective and also three um, establishments around the Baltic Sea to see how they work and what functions uh, my future development should have. Talking about the site. So the site is actually located on the border, south border of Liepaja. It's a, a old south fort. The site is actually beautiful and already is visited by many people uh, who are enjoy the views and uh, the old fort facility. However, the site is not developed yet. So from this, I started to analyzing what is happening actually around the site since it's visited a lot. You can see there are already two parking spaces, even a bus stop 
a lot of private housing units and residential housing units. And of course, the green zones, which makes the site really a good example of greenery and nature. I contacted municipality to actually understand where I can build my building on the site because the site is really huge. And this information I got, the, some part of uh, the site already taken by a company, a uh, camping company, the some part is a green zone, another part is actually good for commercial, residential, public buildings and cultural public buildings. And other side, other part of the site is guarded object the fort itself, and some private housing zone. So from this analysis, I divided the site on main development area, which where I will work, uh, and some left some areas for future development uh, for other projects, which will be connected to the main one. About the site, so actually, when I visit the site, I a little bit switch to the site itself, and I decided, except the museum, I need to somehow improve the situation on it. So my initial idea was to propose the passages and the observation points on the site so the people could actually enjoy its beauty and uh, make it more advantageable for them. From this comes my master plan, which actually goes like this. Here would be the passages around the fort and water and the passage around the fort by the perimeter. Here's the section view which you can see the volumes and the diagram which shows the objects which are surrounding the fort. Here are the detailed diagram. So here is the um, journey starts here. The observation circle which you can visit or not visit go other way uh, than the observation tower which shows the fort, the museum, and the site. Uh, the path itself is one, two meter high to make it more usable for people, not too high, but not too low. The fort itself, the observation point from fort, and the bridges which connect everything. So there are two possibilities for people to walk and to choose from the short minute, 12, 20 minutes walk around the fort and the long distance walk. Both walks are connected. People can choose which walk they want to take or they want to take one hour walk and go all the passages around. And here are the diagram of how long is the path and some metrics of it. About the observation tower. So as I mentioned, there is a ornithological station and uh, I thought if there are a lot of people who are interested in that, they would be interested in observation tower as well, not for only for viewing, uh, viewing the fort, the forest, the dunes, the seaside, but also uh, watch the birds itself. And we already know how the, the site works. So from this, I come with the, the, the idea of development, how the museum will work. So the site is actually has this kind of three narratives, uh, the seaside, the city, Lepaya, and the fort itself. And from this comes my uh, development, how the, the museum should work with a story uh, about the history, nature, and the future. This, from this comes my form so here you can see the form development from all the stages, the three volumes, how they were connected, how the heights changed, and how they were even more binded together with the large corridors. The form of the museum has the sun, uh, allows like has the inner courtyard, which allows the light of the sun and the creating creation for green area. So uh, the museum works in three volumes, history, ecology, and the sea. Uh, the circulation goes around for the main visitor and also the, has the private circulation for researchers. And here you can see in more detailed way how the museum is divided for functions for visitors, historic site, sea, 
ecology and private research function. So let me quickly take you on a walk. Uh, we go, we enter the museum, go buying the tickets and then go putting the codes. Then we go to the point three and here the history exposition starts where you can see uh, the story of the site and the story on, of the marine in Leopaya and everything which is connected to that. Then go after the closed aquariums and then go after the closed aquariums, number five, the open aquariums, the pure light area with the high aquariums and vision to the fort. Then go up, just exposition of the sea go down, the ecology corridor with the several functions here uh, for everything. Here how it could be looked with the furniture, uh, high glasses to the nature and temporary exposition about the nature, sea and ecology. And there are some private facility, cafe and ending with the shop. Also the building has public and private parking, main entrances, some uh, entrances to the inner courtyard and extra entrances in uh, aquariums. Here the filling the collage of how the building will stay on the site. Here are the facades, each facade has its own narrative as well uh, according to the function. Historic one has arches connected to the form of fort because the fort had arches. The uh, marine has the waves, so the people could easily perceive where the aquariums are located. And the ecological one has strict lines because it's a working unit and exposition as well. And here you see the heights as well. And the final result, view from the street. That's it, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Ramon Cordova Gonzalez and uh, the positive qualities of the director are uh, uh, the ambition to deal with very specific and relevant subject and content uh, then through architecture is very valuable in thesis project. This thesis is very original in that sense. Uh, the, this is one street. In the reviewer's opinion, it would have been more uh, coherent if ever the World Museum was void in a sense of American Research Center or uh, <laughs> de de Divulgation Center. Divulgation Center. Sorry for that. And the practical part, uh, positive uh, qualities to the placement of the building and uh, a conceptual division in three drawings, which respond to three different conceptual and functional logic is given. Uh, in general, the function of the building and the sequence of spaces is well uh, thought and carried out. The perception. According to uh, part A, uh, the author intended to focus in the concept of atmospheres in architecture and to give privilege to user's perspective, but then did not fulfill convincingly this goal. Thank you. So here are the questions from my reviewer. Uh, so basically, is it possible to call it, uh, the building the museum? Uh, but in my point of view, it is, since uh, in my research uh, about the contemporary museum, I highlighted that the contemporary museum are actually have several functions and can go beyond the average functionality of the museums. And also meant to mention that the main purpose of the museum is actually to conserve, research, share, exhibit and my building is actually following those rules. So I think it's possible to call my building a museum, not only the research center. Another question was about uh, 
the atmosphere, how it could transmit to the users of the building. So for this, I use several approaches. The first approach is actually the organization of the museum. The museum clearly tells a story about uh, uh, the history, the sea, and the problems which sea is dealing with. So the story is actually the part of this atmosphere, in my opinion. The second approach is that the building design in a way that there are a lot of free space to move. And this space allows to just discover things and not puts a pressure on the user. And another tool is actually the light. The whole museum is full of it. Uh, I think the light doesn't disturb the exposition, only adds openness and place with the interior and exterior relationships. That's it. I think you have chosen a very interesting topic and you have obviously been working very deeply into the, the theme. Um, so you are obviously a hard worker, I can tell. <laughs> uh, now, I also like your answer to the first question. You're saying that a modern museum can go beyond the basic functions of a museum. I think you can stretch yourself. I agree with you. It doesn't have to be limited. Mm -hmm. um, but what I'm, uh, and you are using words like creating atmosphere, and you're talking about the observation town, the observation route and bridges, a journey. Um, now, all this is interesting because I think if you do a museum like your, is it the Baltic Sea Museum? You know, the first question that comes to mind is why didn't you put it next to the sea? No, you didn't do that. You pulled it a bit away because then you actually created it almost like the um, uh, uh, some curiosity, and you have filled the landscape with, with these roots and the observation tower. I think it's all this very interesting. But I'm just being three. In all this, you spent a lot of time on explaining, and I understood everything. But then you jumped onto the building, and why the shape? You know, where are the conceptual drawing? Why and you talk about in the courtyard, but you have some curved shapes and different ones, and I can understand the contents. But did you do any conceptual drawings that you arrived at that particular shape? Why not a rectangular building? Why this, or that or the other? Can you explain that? Because I, I feel that is the reason why I feel I can ask these questions because you've done a very thorough job. So did you do any conceptual sketches that, which was the basis to which you arrived? Uh, so. May I ask, you are asking about the shape of the building? The actual building itself. Mm -hmm. Because I felt you had done a lot of interesting research and explanation of the route and the position, etc., mm -hmm. and, and the, the atmosphere creating, and all of a sudden, I saw the building. Mm -hmm. Maybe you slide <laughs> the diagram? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think there's some wonderful perspectives too, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. With the conceptual... Uh, you want to talk more about the conceptual thing or about the form thing? Well, why you end up the ended both. up with that form? <laughs> both. Yeah. Both. Sure. both. So, uh, basically, actually, the like the sea and museum sea shapes are actually difficult to choose usually, because uh, in a way it has to be impressive and seen from afar, uh, if, especially if, it, for example, put in the middle of the city. But for my building, it's actually located on the border, almost. So uh, this building is not very high. Uh, and at the same time, uh, I really wanted like somehow to create this kind of uh, one uh, united volume, not separated, but united volume to somehow oppose the fort, which is uh, now in a breaking shape. So that was like my idea initial for the form because I could create several, a lot of several uh, volumes here and just uh, allow people to watch it. But I somehow wanted to oppose this kind of new contemporary building to the fort to create this kind of tension between them. Yeah. So there, there would be like, if the, if the person would go here, if he would see like this kind of, rapid change in the time. Yeah. At the same time, having this old fort 
and contemporary building which is like strict and like united i think it's united is the word i think you explain your diagram now thank you very much um <coughs> well thank you uh, the museum theme is quite nice and i do remember how we participated and the <coughs> Leopaya Sea Museum competition um, mm -hmm. back in uh, 10 years ago. Um, so um, I will have some more detailed questions mm -hmm. probably regarding the, the plans and technical mm -hmm. solutions. Okay. Can you explain uh, for how many visitors have you planned the museum? Uh, because what I see in the general plan, mm -hmm. uh, particularly in the entrance uh, area, um, the, the parking lot is uh, way, I think, that's my opinion, way too small. Mm -hmm. Probably you have some ideas and uh, how it's connected with, um, with the whole, th yes, general plan. Okay, so I will start with parking lot. Uh, so, of course, uh, here are two parking lots, private and public. The public is smaller. The reason for that, I didn't want to cluster a lot of parking space on the territory because there are actually two parking. Uh, one parking um, is like, I will maybe return to the uh, site analysis. So one parking is located actually here. It's free and it's really big, it's huge. So the only thing which is needed here is actually a pedestrian road okay. to connect like this parking big uh, to this one. Also, there is uh, a pavement parking here which could be accessed, there are a lot of walking paths between, so mm -hmm. for example, if you're choosing not to park here, or this parking is full, you can drive here, park here, and then walk through the green zone to the museum as well. Okay, okay, good, but, mm -hmm. but the museum is huge. For how many visitors have you planned? Uh, uh, 1,000 uh, per day, I think. Okay, okay. Um, and uh, another question is, um, we see that there's a port, an old structure inside mm -hmm. of the um, mm -hmm. island. Mm -hmm. uh, what about that? We don't have uh, much information about it. Have you thought about some, I don't know, some functions from the Sea Museum to put inside and what happens there? Okay, for now the port is not developed and like uh, in this kind of uh, my project right now, it's more like uh, a monument, an exhibition thing just to visit. But for example, if considering uh, the further development of my project, for example, uh, then I would say that for the fort, I would more develop it in the historic part as well and maybe creating some storage space here for the museum because uh, for now uh, the only issue about the museum is that maybe for my point it's not enough uh, storage space here. Uh, about the actual development of the port and why I not developed it right now in the project. Uh, this area is really a protected one. So, and at the same time, I have this feeling that um, this actual site and the combination of the fort and earth created a unique uh, landscape. This kind of landscape I never saw, like, uh, anyways. And uh, I really somehow want to keep it and only intervent in the fort structure really lightly because now a uh, fort structure is like uh, only used for visiting but this visiting is actually could be dangerous for people because it's like not protected or this kind of uh, plot is not very built. And I wanted, in this project, I wanted a really light intervention into it. And for my point of view, if the project is guarded, uh, the object is guarded and uh, it has its own atmosphere and unique landscape, I want to keep it and I want to introduce it to people. That's why I created the passages, but like not renovated it completely because somehow I found it really romantic uh, just to visit those ruins. Um, in a, I know that this kind of things are not usually done in architectural projects, uh, but I perceive it more like as a 
pyramids in Egypt. So like a monument which you can visit. So in this project, it's like more like a monument rather than a building for me. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And therefore, the controlled pathways, mm -hmm. I, s I call them controlled mm -hmm. because they're heightened uh, and uh, you can't just freely go and uh, visit mm -hmm. it, right? Why the path is, just is, con is controlled? Because um, the port is actually old and if the people can hang around the site, they actually can hurt themselves. Like, uh, especially if you are going here with the children. So somehow I wanted like to uh, introduce the port to the people, but somehow to make it uh, for the people not really dangerous. Like it's not a dangerous tourism, it's just like uh, a walk of enjoyment. So that's why the passages are controlled. Mm -hmm. It's for safety mm -hmm. measures from my point of view. Okay, thank you. And thank you also for Baltic Sea turtles and sharks. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for a very necessary, actually, topic. Um, we're, I guess we really need such a museum. Uh, but I, I wonder about the program you proposed. Mm -hmm. um, do you also research what exactly is for now in Liepaja or even in Ventspils, uh, where there is a museum? I mean, about the program of the uh, museum. What do we need, really? in that region. One is the ecology, yes, mm -hmm. but about that history and, and everything, I guess Liepaja has enough museums about such topics, so maybe more con to be concentrated on, on the ecology and speak about cross countries uh, connections and, and Baltic Sea region at, uh, as it is, not so much to, to the Liepaja. Just a just question, mm -hmm. uh, what was your opinion and, and how deep research you did uh, for the program, thank you. So yeah, the Lepa is actually has a lot of history museums, uh, but uh, why uh, I put like the history part here because the site itself is actually carries the history. So for example, if I would ignore this kind of uh, theme at all in the building and place some kind of, uh, I don't know, more contemporary exhibition, I would say that it would be like not honorable to the site itself. Because yes, uh, Liepaja has like a lot of this historical museum, but I actually wanted the people to learn about the site they're visiting. They're not visiting just a building for entertainment to see on like uh, uh, this kind of uh, sea mammals. They are visiting it with the idea and like uh, that's why I'm putting the history here because I'm already saying to people that this building is serious with you. It's not just for your entertainment. It is actually carries some ideas. Um, about the ecological, yes, it's like definitely needed. The aquariums, uh, as I said, I didn't see any facilities in uh, Latvia in general, which are like representing the sea creatures to the people. And I think actually like maybe some kind of small aquariums, but it's not uh, a huge, and I think actually each country need to have like this kind of facility which somehow introduces people to living species and like everything which is connected to the nature. It's necessary, it surrounds us. Why people ignoring this aspect? Thank you. Hmm. Thank you, Maria. Uh, one question. Do you have, uh, uh, during research, some connection with this institution? I don't know how it calls, but I know in Riga there is a one uh, scientific institute who, are, who is dealing with uh, water, uh, checking of water situation, not only in the sea, also in the lakes and the rivers, and they are making some signs. Uh, this is a one. Uh, and do you have any any part of in the museum about uh, about uh, science, about um, about scientific work, because museums are normally uh, also scientific uh, institution, which are collecting uh, data and and making uh, making a serious uh, scientific job. This is a one thing. Mm -hmm. 
And other was my question about why you don't use this uh, this uh, inside uh, fort uh, space. Uh, uh, that was the first fa first question fr from my side, but that was you already answered. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a bit uh, f f the first which comes into the into the mind uh, when you <laughs> look on this. Why you don't use it? But you answered already. You not need to not needed to uh, repeat. But about science, please. Okay. Uh, I will start. Uh, so actually, in my theoretical report, I didn't use uh, uh, this kind of uh, Latvian uh, data, but I used uh, Halcom research thing. Uh, Halcom is a um, group which is uh, founded by Helsinki, like yeah, and they actually provided the broad and research of the what is happening uh, in the Baltic Sea in general. So in my theoretical part, I put this analysis more. Maybe I should have considered Latvian uh, reports as well, but I somehow like was more focused on bigger picture, I guess. That may be the only minus of this. About the signs, so uh, basically the there is a part of the museum which is completely private and can be accessed only by uh, researchers, for, uh, like scientists. They have private parking, private uh, entrances, but as well uh, there are, for example, public laboratories which could be used by students which are brought to the museum like to study and uh, for, on the second floor, there are actually private uh, laboratory for researchers more, which is enclosed. And which, that's why it's on the second floor. Uh, and also it has like auditorium and private office as well. An auditorium, I thought maybe I put it there, maybe I thought like there could be held several ecological conferences, not just like on a city level, but like on the country level or maybe some kind of conferences between the countries. So, yeah, the building actually has this kind of scientific small volume in it. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Why do I need uh, separate parking? I thought, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I thought it's actually it's really <laughs> hard to find <laughs> a, a parking <laughs> space. So uh, I thought, you know, for workers, it's necessary to have a private parking, especially if it's, for example, they brought some kind of exp uh, exposition like components or some kind of laboratory okay. uh, mm -hmm. details, okay. so they won't bring it to the main you entrances. Get to, you get to. Yeah. <laughs> yes, thank you, Maria, for your presentation. I really appreciate uh, the, uh, your real care and sensitivity to the site and the in-depth uh, research that you've done. I mean, you, I mean, you re really have. Uh, approach this uh, very uh, seriously and really appreciate that. Um, and you've also clearly defined your problem and the problem that is on the Baltic Sea because, you know, the Baltic Sea has been termed in, in, in many ways in articles as, as dead. So I think it's really important to make public awareness and you combining this problem and also your location. I, 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 I think the location to have a center like this museum center that has these multiple functions uh, is, is a good choice because uh, you're also uh, bringing to the forefront and making something else aware to the public that here's this wonderful artifact, uh, this sort of this, uh, you could say, uh, landscape uh, that has been formed by the, the ruin of this previous fort, which is also connected to the whole marine uh, aspect uh, and the tradition of even Riga's history as a uh, as a uh, as a Hanseatic and mar maritime city. So I think there's multiple layers there, and I think the site that you po uh, uh, chose is very good. Um, I have a question. Uh, yeah, my question is this. Um, uh, I'm just curious. During your research, did you did you f come across you know like maybe Latvian University or other? Do do does Latvia have like a marine research uh, department or anything similar to that where where um, 
the actual existing universities could somehow engage with this center, you know, to, to help support this type of uh, center and initiative? I think it's, there is, but their community is really closed and it's not public. Uh, so I think that's a problem because usually such topics are, need to be brought to the general audience. So yeah, mm -hmm. that was like the purpose of my building. So my building is open for everyone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, great, thank you. Nice project, thank you very much. Oh, oh, I have to say this, I have to say this because uh, it was very important. I, the, there are many sort of ex forts in Latvia and many times you can't notice them or appreciate them or you just drive by them and you barely experience the relief. So I think it's really important that you don't have a journey that just loops the fort, but actually that you bring people up uh, the tower, that they can actually look back and actually see the fortification from above. And, and so this nice landscape art form is, can be appreciated. Because otherwise, if you're at ground level, you don't get that experience. The, the pathway helps you bring you closer to it, but looking at it from above, you get the geometry of the old fortification, and I think that was a very good move. So thank you. Thank you. Labdien, 
Darajo. Oh, <laughs> good morning, <laughs> dear jury, sorry. Uh, my name is uh, Matej Skliau, and I wrote a bachelor thesis about design for health and uh, well-being spaces. Uh, and my scientific supervisor is Francisco Martinez Celes. Uh, the relevance uh, to the, uh, the relevant to the study can be rela related uh, to increasing separation from nature, also treating nature uh, dominantly as uh, as obstacle, and because of major world issues, uh, the uh, growing psychological stress um, and general exhaustion and also deeper understanding that value of connection uh, nature with the architecture. Uh, the research tasks were, uh, the research quality is about well-planned uh, wellness uh, resort in space, to do case analysis, to choose the plot, uh, to do the plot analys analysis, and do, uh, do the analy analysis of creative design. And, uh, and basically, there are two, uh, two ma main theories about uh, urbanism and and the uh, and the mental uh, illness uh, treatments. It is attention uh, restoration theory and stress recovery. Mm, and both of these theories are uh, connected with urban living because uh, in life in, in city we need to we need a lot of attention. Uh, and very periodically, we need to uh, watch out on the street, we need to find a bus, train, we need to find a way in, uh, in complex buildings, and so on. And uh, both of these uh, treatments can be done better in natural setting. Um, and as restorative environments, I set out the paragraphs uh, to be biophilic design, sensory design, therapeutic design, art and aesthetics and haptic architecture. And by these uh, scientific findings, I'm uh, creating a wellness resort. And I wanna take a minute and explain about a biophilic design because that covers a lot what I'm writing in uh, my bachelor thesis. Uh, I'm writing about uh, the visual connection, non-visual connection with the nature, non-rhythmic, non-predictable sensory airflow, uh, presence of water, which have a lot of qu uh, good qualities, uh, like the sound of water falling, the uh, sense of humidity, uh, of course the looks, and also the smell of the water, and um, also diffuse light, awareness of uh, natural pro process processes, um, arrangement that persists in nature, uh, uh, run random textures, uh, random flows and orders, uh, mystery. Uh, misery, uh, placed for withdrawal, uh, clear distance for decision making, uh, risk, peril, and incredible, unrepeatable uh, events. In terms of case studies, I reviewed uh, three main projects. Um, it was uh, termed the walls by Peter Zumthor, located in Switzerland. Also, another uh, health resort located also in Switzerland, and then wellness pavilion located in Hungary. And there was, uh, there was takeaways uh, that I took from the uh, inspiration from these projects. Uh, for example, play of perspective, use of materi materiality, uh, borrowing natural design for, for the buildings and mm, also using the exposed uh, natural textures. For example, in, in Wellness Pavilion in Hungary, uh, they very greatly uh, used the uh, exposed concrete to invite the uh, environment inside to the to the interiors. And as a conclusion for part A, um, the design elements directly impact the human perception. Restorative environment feature, uh, features described in research papers are reflected in successful architect works. Uh, there are architectural setting, color and shape that a uh, larger public uh, prefers and also that uh, chosen plots have existing uh, qualities that promotes healing. Uh, the chosen plot is located in Sigulda. It, have, it has a, a rich terrain. Um, there's, uh, there's a forest and a meadow. There's a valley and a little brook in, inside this valley. And, um, 
And in terms of the, of the master planning of wellness resort, I chose to divide it in four parts. So one part is the main, uh, main uh, resort building, then there's a greenhouse and two types of stays for visitors. Uh, and the wellness resort works as a person who wants to heal in a natural environment, uh, comes here and he can live for a, for a day, for a week, for a month, or or uh, rent the, the cabins uh, more if necessary. <clears throat> the main res resort building uh, volume um, is quite simple. There's a rectangular shape and uh, extruded uh, roof extensions for this volume. The ground floor serves as a gate for a whole, uh, whole resort area. And uh, there are separate zones inside this ground floor. Uh, there are cooking studio uh, for uh, cooking therapeutic uh, uh, things, and uh, also there is a restaurant and uh, <coughs> and uh, flexible, simple terrace as a comfortable environment. Um, this is the first plan. Uh, these are the extensions uh, for for this building um, extension. The, the red one would be extension for the cooking studio. It would serve as, as a place where to dry the uh, spices. Then the yellow one uh, is yoga studio and uh, it's directed to the west to capture uh, a sun, uh, sunset. And the gray one is uh, called writer's retreat. Uh, it works as a library and it's a bit distant and quiet place in the wellness resort. Uh, and at the basement, there's a pool and water activities. Also basement and uh, also basement because the whole resort could work as, uh, for example, the, the vegetables that grow in, inside the um, greenhouse could be, um, could be used in cooking studios and, and so on. Uh, in terms of facades, uh, the basement floor is embedded into the ground, but it opens up to the north side. At the same time from south, uh, you can see only the ground floor and first floor, roof extensions and uh, roof garden. <coughs> the west facade is the first you meet when you arrive uh, to, to the wellness resort uh, from the west. <coughs> Um, this is greenhouse. I chose to, to put the greenhouse uh, here on the meadow because uh, green uh, gardening have a lot of good therapeutic uh, qualities. And then there are two types of stays. Uh, this is the first one. I wanted to call it a uh, cabin between trees. Initially they were meant to be uh, tree houses but to be gentle to the nature I put them, uh, put these cabins onto the steel piles. Um, the planning is quite simple. Then there is one uh, one larger room, a balcony, and a toilet with a shower. <coughs> and uh, the volume of the cabin is divided in the middle uh, with a window. Uh, and the skylight for this division uh, serves as uh, as light entering a morning light entering inside of the cabin. <coughs> and this is uh, the other type of stay. Uh, I called it cabin on the bridge. They are uh, located on the ground in the se uh, semicircle. Uh, they are uh, two stories, two story height. Uh, there's a, a small kitchen, a living space, um, and place to stay. Yes. This is how it looks. There, there is a. Access to the to the small uh, terrace integrated. You can sit on the terrace, and the mat material used is uh, cotton steel, because I wanted uh, for the building to age uh, together with the environment, and also to, uh, it's hard material, so it would uh, reflect some of the sounds of the nature. <coughs> There's uh, also uh, features like a little bird feeder 
uh, Dutch Berg and Columbian, and you can see uh, see him from the inside. <coughs> and thank you. That's it. research is extremely uh, voluminous and uh, carefully conducted and the student has dealt into many various design techniques which he uh, later successfully included in part B of the bachelor's thesis. Very successful and sensitive choice of location in research. Meaningful text, yeah? uh, The chosen case studies could be more uh, diverse in size, location and function. Uh, it is difficult to understand whether small cabins in is designed for winter conditions or only used in warmer seasons. Uh, about uh, practical part, uh, constructive quality. Uh, the theoretical research is extremely voluminous and uh, carefully con the same. Um, yeah, very successful and sensitive choice of location and research. And uh, the intersections, the chosen case studies could be uh, more diverse in size, location, and function. Uh, that's it. Okay, so answering on these questions, the first one was about uh, uh, seasonability. Uh, I want to answer that, um, yes, the cabins can be used in cold weather as well. Uh, there are wood burning stove in uh, both types of cabins. Um, you can see it here in the interior shot um, because also the fire also plays a role in the visual connection with the natural process it emits light that moves and reflects on dark surfaces um, there are heat and air airflow and movement of course in uh, in forest area uh, burning the wood is quite sensitive topic uh, but it would the smoke would go through the masonry and then uh, be safe for the forest um, the other question was, how did your chosen plot influence the materiality <coughs> and choice of forms of uh, the design buildings? Um, I'm answering that the materials for wellness resort uh, building includes boulder masonry for fundament that can be locally sourced. The solid materials are wood. The ground floor is designed to be the most transparent to capture the views. The rich cabins are covered with curtain steel that was more concept driven thought to make the building age and be responsive uh, to the nature, to the environment. <coughs> okay. Thank you. Over, please. I think it's, um, you obviously have enjoyed working on this. I can tell. <laughs> uh, you have done a, a very good job, I think. It's very detailed and um, I'm just, um, so I could ask so many questions, but you had to rush through your uh, the explanation because you have so much material in limited time. Um, but I'm just wondering, y you started off uh, saying you had some references to some interesting projects around the world. Um, I'd quite like to know how they had influenced your design. One simple question. And then, um, and, and the site plan, I understand. I wish I'd explain a bit more why you placed things like you did. You have the resort buildings, you have the cabin between the trees, cabin on the reach, etc. Cabin on the reach is easy to understand, but how does it relate to the other? And my third question is related to materials. Now, you have on the um, resort building, or the greenhouse, really, and you're showing some vertical timber slats, whatever they are, you know, are they movable? You know, why do you choose that? Is it just to control daylight? Uh, and also, I'm quite curious, why did you choose Core 10 for the last, you know, for the reach houses? Mm -hmm. The reason being that I have, my office recently done buildings using the same materials in different places. So <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay, so I will start with uh, location of the, of the buildings. Um, so there was exciting possibility to locate these, um, uh, these cabins in the semicircle so that the view would be on the nature uh, and uh, on the top of the trees. Uh, because 
further here it's quite lower than than here <coughs> and also in this way um, the inhabitants of the cabins don't see each other that was first talk then about the resort building um, i wanted to keep it at the start of the bonus resort uh, and to stop uh, the car movement here so it and there's a evident uh, car park um, sorry i need master plan there is evident uh, car pro park in the fr uh, in the front of the resort building and the first thing you meet when you enter it it's uh, the check-in the stuff so basically basically you uh, automatically know where you need to be uh, because the place is uh, quite uh, distant from one one of each other um, and then uh, for these cabins I wanted to use uh, the, the valley uh, and the look to the valley for example look to the valley and the sunset over the trees and um, and for uh, for a greenhouse I wanted to keep it on uh, on the meadow because there is really great uh, view to uh, to this side okay then the next question was about materials why so different right <coughs> the first thing um, it ca uh, inspiration came from uh, from oh. Peter Zumstor but different project than I, I showed in case studies uh, it was about the boulders uh, boulder fundament in in the ground floor uh, to use the natural texture of the construction method used <coughs> also for the curtain uh, that curtain uh, is responsive to the environment for example in uh, in wet weather it would uh, get darker and then it would dry up and become uh, a bit more uh, lighter <coughs> and for uh, for the greenhouse for a greenhouse I think there was no specific reason I wanted to to keep it uh, keep it a bit whiter uh, rather than usual greenhouses that are just transparent uh, gloss <coughs> uh, was there more question I'm quite happy with your answers I think you did a good job thank you <laughs> thank you well thank you we do see a diversity of architectural um, examples and um, well it's uh, quite an experience to uh, see that um, I have some practical questions um, I counted uh, I don't know 10 10 cabins uh, maybe a bit more 15 cabins, mm -hmm. uh, but the um, wellness center is way bigger than housing 15, 30 people. Mm -hmm. So it's related to short term visitors uh, for the restaurant and also for the pool and water therapy that's uh, below. Also, I was thought I had a thought that, for example, you can go here uh, to heal in natural environment and speak with your therapist and use the resort building for uh, this kind of uh, activities. That's why there's so much sofas and so much um, smaller perhaps areas and green roof as well. <coughs> I can do imagine how speaking with therapists in a uh, public space could uh, help healing. But anyway, uh, there therefore we have off-grid tree houses. Uh, which uh, you could also help me answer how can we um, get to them um, you can get to them um, oh, how you imagine uh, getting to them and uh, the the our winter conditions uh, which are really extreme mm -hmm. right now um, yes um, these cabins are located in wood uh, in the forest and you can uh, get to them by the pathways and if you are keen on hiking the winter will not uh, be an obstacle to you and uh, it is I if it is obstacle then you can stay in the uh, these cabins that are closer to the to the good paths and mm -hmm. good tra traveling conditions as far as i can see that we have a bridge crossing the brook right uh, the bridge there is a bridge 
helping crossers? Uh, there is a small bridge, yeah. How could you uh, also explain how you chose those places for cabin uh, placements? For the placements, um, so I start, started right here because I wanted it to overlook um, the treetops. Is uh, this, uh, uh, sorry for uh, interrupting, uh, is this a specific place in Sigurda? Because we didn't saw uh, uh, any other... Uh, yes, it's located uh, just outside Sigurda, uh, to uh, to ride the poster. <laughs> uh, yes. Give a, give a map, uh, yes, I have this part, uh, this is Turad, yes. And Sigurda is uh, somewhere there. Where is Turad's uh, castle? Uh, Turad's castle, I think it's somewhere over here. So it's quite quite close. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's in forest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's it's more random. Uh, uh, yes, but at the same time, there is uh, so thick uh, vegetation, the trees that no none of the cabins are uh, looking at the other cabin. So that was one of the reasoning of the uh, placement. There was no mathematics. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. A very um, convincible um, project. Uh, very detailed and very, um, I'd say, good, good architecture and uh, really great job and presentation also. And um, um, actually, all questions I wanted to ask are, are already stated. So one was about how to reach uh, those um, forest cabins uh, in the winter time, looking outside the window right now, for example, <laughs> or crossing Riga's bridges th this morning. Um, uh, but um, yeah, actually, I do. Actually, all, all my questions are, are already answered. So thank you very much. Thank you. For me, it's clear. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you, Matisse. Yeah, also, I just, uh, agree with Ola that uh, I, I really sense that you enjoyed uh, working on this project. I like uh, how you've used your hand drawing skills and shown those. And also, I would say that from a lot of the projects that we've, we've seen uh, yesterday and today, that your actual architectural drawings are, are believable. I believe that these are buildable solutions. You've actually drawn them in a way, uh, and when you read those drawings, you're communicating an understanding of how, how this architecture is actually assembled and constructed. So I, 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 you demonstrated that quite clearly. And um, um, I just have a question, or maybe it's a comment. You know, the, the actual um, center with the second floor volumes, um, uh, I'm just uh, wondering, did you think about how those type of shapes repeat through the rest of the site? For example, when we look at the, uh, the single residence on the stilts in the forest, the, it sort of echoes some of the shapes on the, on the center as well. Um, did you think about perhaps uh, thinking about how that language of the center then repeats itself maybe in different ways or what was your rationale on having different types of shapes and solutions yeah <coughs> thank you so uh, thank you so initially it was meant to look like uh, pixels scattered in the forest also that's why there's uh, this roof ex extensions and it's supposed to be that this roof um, uh, roof terrace should be greener and it would blend in more in in the uh, theron perhaps yes mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Just one, oh, one, one, yes. one more comment. If it's an off-grid house, I would suggest you to do it uh, really off-grid. Otherwise, I have technical questions about the mm. water and uh, everything else. Yes, that's a very good question. And actually, uh, initially they meant to be off-grid, but uh, they are not quite, because there is still electricity, there are still pipes uh, running through the steel piles. So yes, it's connected to the network. So, yeah, thank you. Okay, okay. Okay, so we have completed the morning session. We're going to have a one hour 
break, uh, well, 45 minutes. We'll come back and resume at 2 o'clock, so please be ready for the next uh, presentation. Thank you very much.
And my uh, topic uh, is uh, sustainable construction practices in a building for children with disabilities. Um, I started out uh, in the theoretical part. I started, um, uh, I uh, researched the problems concerning children with special needs and the building material impact on health and environment. I looked into inclusive design and universal design principles. Uh, what sort of issues uh, do people with sensory and cognitive disabilities have? Uh, how uh, sustainability impacts the environment, human and especially children's health? How and what construction materials can be used to help with these concerns? Also, uh, what are the most necessary elements and parameters uh, for inclusiveness, safety and flexibility measures? And how um, Spatial experience in design is impacting the human. Another aspect, aspect I wanted to look into is um, connection from the indoor and outdoor space. So following this idea, I also researched about therapeutical gardens. Uh, what are the benefits on human physical and mental health while at the same time being environmentally conscious? Um, yeah, so for my... Uh, for the design part, I uh, start with the location. I started looking, um, started out by looking at diagrams about um, where most of the children with uh, disabilities uh, live in Latvia, and um, most most children lived in Riga and around Riga. But uh, it's there's a correlation because uh, most people just live in Riga and around Riga. So. Uh, uh, yeah. And the location and that I chose uh, is in Marbe, um, because most of the uh, institutions for children with disabilities are in Riga. And um, since there are also a big part of children live around Riga, um, I thought this, this could be an appropriate location. Uh, and there are also no uh, education, like no centers or uh, schools for children with disabilities in Marbe. And then for my plot, I chose this place because when I looked into uh, territorial planning of Marbe, uh, there were only a few places where uh, public or buildings can be built. Mostly everything is just for residential buildings. Um, yes, here it is. And also this uh, place has uh, public transport nearby, so people from uh, the city center can easily access the place. Uh, this is how the location looked uh, in uh, October, I think. And so, um, um, while, while I was doing uh, the research, I noticed uh, three different programs for the types of um, uh, rooms, spaces that a center for uh, children with uh, disabilities uh, would need. And I uh, thought about uh, separating them in three parts, a creative, dynamic, and social parts. And according to that, I was thinking of what, what the, about what is tree, um, what, how can I show the, the differences with the, of the three different uh, programs. And I came up with using uh, three different geometrical shapes. Um, and Uh, yeah, here's my sort of uh, the design process. However, I was thinking, I was trying out many different uh, uh, connections with, between um, the three shapes. Um, also, how they sit in the plot, what could be the gardens around. Um, yeah. And he also, um, since the shapes are pretty distinct, distinct, I thought about using the roof, roofing for each of the spaces differently as well and to connect them with the sustainability as well. So for the round roof, I thought about uh, building, uh, that the building itself could collect rainwater. Um, the triangle could be uh, covered in, in integrated solar panels that could um, uh, 
contribute to free and natural energy to building supply. And the last, um, oi. and for the last roof, I for the flat roof, which would be the uh, uh, squared one, I wanted to use it as a green roof. And for the materials, I, I wanted to use, uh, uh, I also researched mat about uh, hempcrete and uh, um, CLT. And in addition to those materials, I wanted to use uh, uh, additionally uh, another um, the um, natural materials for the indoor and outdoor uh, um, uh, finishes, uh, such as tedelite, like lime wash, uh, bare hempcrete, leave the hempcrete bare in spaces where it can be left. And on the outdoors, uh, the wood could be covered with paint tar paint, paint, pine tar paints. Uh, Yes, and um, um, yeah. So for my design, I placed it in the uh, in the top part of the plot, where uh, the widest side of the triangle is facing north, but the two other sides are facing south, which uh, I oriented that way to um, have more of. Uh, solar energy that could be produced from the two facades rather than uh, one. And then the other buildings uh, came accordingly uh, following the triangle. And um, for the plot itself, I, I wanted to zone it into, um, uh, into zones that um, uh, where the outdoor space could be used as an additional tool for rehabilitation, skill development, and resting area. I tried to achieve this by having gardening area and peaceful areas surrounded by water and grassy lands. And, therape um, and the um, therapeutic gardening uh, space. And uh, yeah, here's also visible uh, additionally some uh, um, uh, routes that could be uh, walked in the uh, plot, which is us, um, which uh, there are many options. Uh, so it, the, uh, you can uh, walk in uh, according to your abilities. Uh, here is how it uh, looks. Um, and uh, for the plan itself, um, the main entrance would be in the triangle, which is the dynamic part, where I placed, um, and then uh, and to the to the right is the circle, which is the creative part, and to the right is the social part, which is the uh, square. And here are the from the entrance points, uh, the two exits uh, from the. Um, from the square, you can uh, access the uh, uh, the garden therapy uh, part, and you can also uh, exit the space from the uh, round uh, circle circular part of the building into the garden. Um, yeah, and here's the um, the plan itself um, for the. Uh, dynamic part, there's the uh, physical therapy spaces, uh, uh, wardrobes, uh, um, sensory integration, speech and language training, and for the um, um, for the uh, for the square, there's uh, which is the social part where people can come and socialize. Uh, there's uh, kitchens, um, uh, mixed use uh, rooms, uh, game rooms, a uh, parents' lounge, and a resting space if the socializing gets too much. And for the circle, there's additional rooms for the, uh, rooms for the staff, and um, music rooms, uh, filming studios, and workshops for to to be creative. Uh, yeah, here's the uh, sections and the front facade. Uh, this is 
sort of a collage from the roofs from the top. And here I have some uh, um, volumes from the top, then from the front, and the exits to the court uh, to the gardens from the other side of the building. Uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. a great literature work, merely a character of a handbook. The work has really taken everything into account and there uh, can hardly be found any negative point. Uh, some disadvantages. I'm looking for a clear connection between the very mean, meaningful design idea in part B and the theoretical part A. And about practical part, uh, Uh, the design language supports the attractiveness for the target group. Uh, the location can be discussed yet, uh, and especially considering the rising uh, population figures all around Spyriga, it, uh, <laughs> it also is a clear statement for the suburban context. And disadvantages, I'm still struggling with the extract connections between uh, the three main building parts. And uh, I know the author has been spending a lot of time with the subject. Plus, personally, I am a big fan of the three geometrical forms. The question is... Uh, yes, so for the part A, the question is, from which part of the research and research work does the design idea arise? And how did you decide theoretically to emphasize the geometric shapes so clearly? Um, I sh so um, in the theoretical part, the um, uh, design idea is not really mentioned, but um, the rooms uh, that I found that would be necessary in such center are mentioned in some of the sources that I looked into, but I didn't write about them. And <clears throat> how I decided to emphasize the geometric shapes so clearly. Um, that's, um, I, uh, I tried many different options where they, uh, the three shapes, they were more connected and uh, it, the building sort of disappeared and you couldn't really have the, the distinct, um, the difference between uh, where each part of the um, each part of the programs that I wanted to, you couldn't really clearly differ dif differentiate between them. So I thought that the best option is to have them more distinct from each other. Um, and for the part B, if there's the question is if there's better options to connect the three main building parts. Uh, could be. I tried many options. <laughs> this is the latest one that I. Uh, this was the best one that I, but worked for me um, after trying many, many different uh, options. Yep. Thank you. You have chosen an interesting topic in, a, in <coughs> very much related to sustainability which is quite clear, you are collecting rainwater, you have green roofs, you've got solar panels. Um, and another thing I also noticed that you also worked on the landscape idea, you know, the whole landscape. Um, the, um, another asset, another plus connected to your design is actually, it's a very small footprint for the actual building. Uh, now, but that also brings up another question, like the, the first question here. Um, why did you decide on, you said it in the theoretical part, but why did you decide to make three very clearly different geometric shapes? If I understand it correctly, you had, for instance, the dynamic bit is triangular, mm -hmm. 
and the social one is angular or square. Why? Um, I can also ask you the second question about the connection, but I think it's more interesting to know why is the um, triangle more dynamic than, say, a square? Why is this, why is the social one? Why, why is the square the optimal social shape? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, uh, I, when I was thinking about what could be in each, um, each shape, I looked into uh, what, what's the meaning behind each shape generally um, for people who've looked into it, how the angles are more sharp, so it uh, sort of uh, connects you with dynamic and the circle is more calming. Uh, um, then that's, and makes... So that's I connected it with creativity, but uh, for the difference between uh, triangle and the square for the dynamic and social part, I thought that um, since for some children with uh, uh, disabilities, uh, social socializing is complicated, and it, um, so uh, a shape that is more regular. Um, it makes them more at ease than an irregular shape, which is round or triangle. So that was my thinking behind it. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you for a good answer. Thank you. Um, well, uh, it's uh, quite a journey uh, listening to the presentation. Well, I have some practical questions, uh, way more also uh, somehow connected with the previous ones. Well, when I look at the pyramid, and when I look at the um, height marks, I'm wondering what is happening um, when we enter this, uh, I would say, even a sacral uh, kind of uh, form. What I say sacral, because the uh, chosen shape of the windows, uh, clearly, uh, for me, the first association is that I enter at least some Masonic structure or whatever. So what happens um, there um, between the, the, is it a one one story building? Uh, have you, have you yes, thought about some, some, I don't know, something else? For the, for the windows, I, I wanted them arched because um, I thought that this triangle is sharp, so I wanted sharp windows as a following thing. But I can see uh, what you're saying. <laughs> uh, but yeah. What is that uh, um, uh, central thing? What is it? Well, it's just sort of, uh, I was thinking that it could be uh, like a wooden construction. That's, no, no yeah. in the center of the, the plan, we see a six, um, a six angular uh, something. Uh, I thought this it? could be like a reception desk. You come oh. in and then, yeah, they can tell you if there's something there, somebody there telling you where you, you need to go, if you don't know yet. Yeah, you will definitely know where to go. Um, <laughs> so, and what happens inside of the round-shaped building? You say there's a water collection system, and um, can we, um, can you describe more about it? Well, is, it a, is it visible from the pathway? Can we enter it, uh, or is it uh, a pool, or I don't know, some? Yeah, uh, what, what I was it? thinking is um, to have sort of like a thin layer, maybe of water that could stay there, but not in the winter. <laughs> uh, uh, and you could not enter there, but for uh, for maintenance. For maintenance, yes, because of the snow. To if there, if it makes problems. Um, but yes, I was thinking that when you walk around, you can see the the water, water in the middle. I don't, I, I'm not sure how the water collection would work. Uh, <laughs> that's um, but, that's yeah. visible. Uh, <clears throat> well, anyway, um, and the last question is about the general plan. I do see some um, magical pond uh, made on the yeah in the middle of the land plot. And you described uh, clearly uh, in your research that um, there is a distinct, uh, some features, also horticultural things and other things, what we don't see in the 
uh, general it's, plan. It's, it's here on the side. Uh, just just one small. Yeah, because uh, there there's no need to have more. It's uh, I don't think that people would be there all the time taking care of the garden. So it's better to have uh, less. Uh, there's also a greenhouse next to it if uh, some plants could not be taken care of outside. Well, you do have to take care about the pathways. I was just wondering, probably, uh, such kind of a land plot uh, could uh, have uh, other features, like, I don't know, if it's a daycare center for, for children, maybe some playground, maybe something which happens uh, on the side of the pond or or whatever, so it's a huge territory which anyway should be maintained. Have mm -hmm. you thought about it? Uh, yeah, I wanted to include uh, uh, other areas for children to play, uh, but just didn't uh, have time. <laughs> but uh, there was an idea, of course, uh, when uh, you exit the building is to have them in front and further back it could be more peaceful, so it, um, yeah. Thank you for actual topic, and thank you for your version uh, for this topic. Um, I have also a question which is regarded to the part A. You are describing um, of that uh, you are describing the mm, principles of designing for people with um, uh, cognitive dis uh, disabilities. So they need clear. Um, organization of space, uh, calm forms, um, and uh, like repetitive uh, patterns. Uh, is this center taught also for such kind of uh, disabled persons or uh, it's only for physically disabled? Because what I see, if this is also for cognitive disabled people, it's like a bit... Um, of course, th those are very interesting forms and, and very active forms, but they do not fit uh, with your description in Part A, which is what is necessary for such kind of disabilities. Please, maybe you could uh, tell more about uh, cognitive disabilities and this building and principles uh, used in this building to serve needs of such persons. Thank you. Uh, yeah, for, uh, for that, I was thinking that um, I have clear distinction where to go. Uh, when you enter centrally, there's um, only two main parts. And when you go to the right or the left, uh, there's not, I, I don't think it's too confusing. Um, you can just sort of uh, go straight and then you can go back. The, um, yeah, I, I didn't want it. I wanted to for the hallways to be as uh, um, as short as possible and to connect uh, as much in one uh, like, uh, space. Honestly, you didn't answer the question of my colleague about calmness, about this question. Because if you come into the, into the entrance, there you have in something like in the church. It's a height of 20 meters, no? This room, it's uh, not very calm. Mm -hmm. It's like a church looks. Therefore, this is not answered question. Uh, and this is one thing what, uh, what uh, Gunta asked, uh, you, t you told the once some time ago that uh, there is no so easy for uh, integration of uh, these people together somehow to make some playground or something like that. Do you have any, any playground or some spaces for children? Or is this is just um, uh, like a hospital or, or you, can, you can have some zones where, where they can play a little bit relax and so on? Do you have? Uh, yeah. Um, so uh, in in the in the social part, there's when you go, there's the kitchen uh, where you can learn uh, skills for um, 
for daily life. Um, here there's uh, also a space for rest, like a resting area. If the socializing gets too much, a child can go and uh, uh, be by themselves for a time. Uh, then there's uh, game rooms. Uh, in one, one game room here in the middle, yes? It's, it's two. two. Uh, two. Yeah, there, there's a, and that one is a, a, like an auditorium, a mixed use space for uh, flexibility if there's what kind of necess necessity arises for the center, what they need, they can adjust the space. Uh, here I also added uh, like a, a pet room for, uh, there's uh, therapies uh, connected with uh, animals. And on the other side, there's a music room and workshops. Uh, in workshops, uh, different kinds of things can be done, like uh, candle making, uh, painting, um, mm -hmm. yeah, and then also a filming studio. That's okay. Um, you, you have a lot of uh, uh, to toilets here, a big number of toilets, but only one is for disabled people. No. Uh, uh, so far, uh, yeah. yeah only one, is, one. one is a care room, which is uh, takes um, it gives a, there's a more space to um, um, I don't know the uh, for what yeah, there are two uh, two I I found this one and this ah one. I found this one only yeah. on the left side it's okay in, in the in in the, in yeah the there is a one and yeah there the care room. Oh, care room. This is the same as a, as a uh, yeah. laboratory. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you for your uh, presentation. I had a, a comment about, uh, yeah, it was also related to some of the previous comments about your uh, site plan. I, th I think uh, the, the site plan, the way you actually organize the pass and compare and compose that into the site is fine, but you have to, um, it's very important uh, to provide those uh, functional opportunities as you move through the site, you know, so those different zones and areas, you know, whether it's a, whether it's a vegetable garden or whether it's, a, whether it's a flower garden or whether it's a play area for the kids or a rest area, because it's just a simple step to just, or even just to say that those things are there so that you, so as you take your journey through that site, the, you, you have those different uh, activities, that's one. Um, and also, I think when you, when you are working in plan with a very strong geometry, I think also then volumetrically, it, it has to be, you have to be able to really clearly read that differentiation because the roofs on the other two volumes and the volumes themselves are much, much, much lower. They're almost flat. You know, for example, the circular shape, the circular could have actually have more of a cylindrical, a cylinder type of shape or a dome on it so that you can actually read, read, uh, read the, the difference physically as well. Uh, even though it's, you can clearly see that, that you've organized the plans on each shape according to its actually ge geomet geometrical properties, but on the volumes that, that, that's missing. Um, otherwise, I appreciate the, the research, and I think uh, the thing that uh, I, uh, again, this is a question of when you're balancing between plans and strong geometries, the volumetric shapes have to, have to follow suit, yeah. And, and of course, I would say I, I know you went through many reiterations during the semester, and and many many different options you looked at. Uh, and perhaps in one sense, working with those strong forms cr creates a challenge right from the start. Uh, without, so it's this is something to take into account for for future. So, okay, thank you. Thank you.
Hello everyone, I'm Julia, and today I'm going to present you my master um, bachelor thesis, not master yet. And the name is Master Planning of Vulnerable Landscapes, Ixtra Region. And here it's important to mention the first two factors that I did in my research. And uh, firstly, urban versus rural. And it's important to mention that both Latvia's landscapes uh, show up in these areas in very beautiful ways. But in urban areas, the natural characteristics are being taken away as the city improves. And uh, in this way, the urban inhabitants are becoming more attracted to the rural places. And uh, rural vulnerability is growing because in rural areas, the action is improving and growing and people are searching for a simple getaway. And uh, this pressure is encouraging also heightened awareness among those seeking simple tourism and retreats for well-being. So, as we also know after the pandemic, this is improving and uh, the primary goal is to address the rural vulnerability and strengthen its resilience. So the goal was through this research of APAR to find these uh, components of how it would be possible to do that. And moving towards nomadism, nomadic way of living, or nom nomadism as a sensible mode of living. And in this case, in my uh, design part, how I'm implementing it is a temporary departure from typical surroundings with the opportunity to live temporarily in a place balanced between man-made and natural, and where the main inspirational leader is the nature. But it is important to mention that in this case, I'm, not, I'm inspired by nature and I'm led by it, but I'm not slaved by it. And this works in the structures I'm implementing and small features like that. And this challenge I am doing in Ixchoi rural region because it is as close to nature as it is to the city of Riga. So this would be the best place for to accept this kind of challenge. And it's important to mention the table of contents because uh, it is divided into three main parts. And in the first one, the uh, research was focused on the conceptual grounding of nom nomadic way of living and understanding the uh, authenticity and wellness concentrated traveling tendencies according to these times, uh, moving towards tactics of reaching nature in master plan and understanding the nomadic contribution to spatial planning and uh, also um, emotional influence. And moving towards the case studies, and these specific case studies uh, accepted these kind of challenges where to work with nature and also man-made features, and uh, each one of them is unique, and this is what uh, helped me to also try out this kind of challenge and uh, do it in my bachelor thesis. And so the research question is what are the components of landscape-sensible master plan specifically to highlight its already existing natural beauty, human rejuvenation possibilities in it and strengthen its resilience. So also the tasks that are set out by the purpose of the research are firstly, to research the conceptual grounding of nomadic way of living according to new tendencies. Second, to gather and analyze strategical approaches and to investigate the existing case studies. And after doing this research, um, a landscape sensitive master plan strategy includes a full investigation of a place, as does any place, but in this case, this was very important. And uh, selection of the materials, in my case, wood, concrete, and stone. Also, maximizing spatial angles for excellent panoramic views, both if a person is out in the field looking around so the buildings and structures do not take the attention away and also if a person is inside the building and looking outside so the person does not feel uh, like the person feels in the city between four walls but the building has uh, wide openings. Also nature-led movement so there's this experience to uh, go through the space and uh, you don't know what comes if you take that turn or another turn but you have this natural experience and rejuvenation possibilities. Also, uh, through structure, needs different uh, human needs and unique human types. In this case, possibilities to have a celebration, have a space for uh, couples, families, extroverts and introverts. And design considers elements such as vegetation and sunlight and topography. This 
works into where the structures are located, in what heights, and uh, according to the sunlight and vegetation, and in what angles. And the whole design encourages various natural activities, and area, goal of the area is to offer peace, rapt, pause and action, and complete quietness. Here we can see the location. It is actually a rural region, but it is more close to Orda city. And it is in between Guesthouse Bazi and Guesthouse Turbas, that white dot, and also uh, Lele Kangur Kalni, or the mountains, are close to the site, which means that this is an attractive site, and movement is happening there, even though it is in the middle of woods. And uh, uh, here we can see the site dividement and uh, how it looks. Firstly, it is 6.6 .6 hectares big, and it is in this unique uh, form, which is made by the river, 900 meters long. And the third picture represents the flooding area, two hectares, which is not so safe to use, but only for temporary structures. And the next picture, four hectares, is the safe zone, even though it is filled with nature. Um, here we can see that four hectares are taken by the nature and veg vegetation and trees. That is what I mean. So this means I'm being led by the nature, and the buildings built in the last picture are taking only 0, 0.0 hectares of the area, which are built in a place where no uh, trees are cut, and they, it is led by the nature, same as the movement. But here we can see the topography and activities, and the more the higher, the more active it is, and the more down you go, the more quiet it gets. So the activity is happening where the road goes by, and the more down you go, it is meant more for elderly, families, couples, or completely quiet place, and that is also where the rentable units are built. And as I mentioned before, um, the main leaders are the trees in nature, in this case the birch tree, which creates this unique atmosphere through the space. Here we can see the movement through it. The first one represents the flooding area with the elevated path. Second is the whole movement around uh, the units and on the island <coughs> and through the woods. And the third one is the movement to each of the unit by car, as small as possible, not to harm the nature. And the last one is all the movements together that goes by the river, creating uh, not only combination with the, the nature, like vegetation and woods, but also with the water. And here we can see the uh, whole plan and where are all the units located. The first one, this one, is built on an existing structure that used to be there 100 years ago. So it's pretty historical, but completely, nature is completely new and everything is fresh again. And here comes the first unit. Each of the units are wrapped in nature and trees and in complete uh, quietness and comfort, and the uh, first one is, for example, for the couples, then comes a bigger unit for families or friends. Then there's the possibility for extroverts, either you come with a bigger friend group to this rentable unit, or you come with, you come there and you are extrovert, you get to know your new neighbors. And each of the building have their, the same typology, same size, 40 square meters, besides the, the celebration space that is closer to the road and uh, that one is 300 square meters big. And uh, here we can see the first unit, the celebration space. I was thinking about implementing something like this because I wanted to provide the possibility to celebrate and more away from the quiet zone, but more closer to the road. So um, it, has, it can have many kind of celebrations, wedding, uh, even a camp, or you name it. And here are the units two and five, they're pretty much the same, but they are mirrored, and this is for the couple or for a person of one. And uh, here comes the unit three, the biggest one with the same size, same typology, but uh, more rooms. Here comes the possibility for extroverts and uh, get to know your new neighbor. And we can see each of the units are on stilts to be uh, uh, like a mobile building flexible, lightly touching the ground, and going together with the nature, and not and harming it in a small amount. And here we can see an important last, one of the last slides about uh, factors such as electricity, water, and uh, we, this is important to mention because since I'm implementing and uh, designing a thing that barely touched nature, 
are led by it, so I need to think also of factors like this. So, for example, electricity and heating, as this is tried out also by the neighbors, um, and the guest house Barze, which is close, and this kind of, there will be collaboration actually between guest house Barze and this uh, place. And there is 100 meters away, there is a, a, an a electricity transformer that is also used by guest house Barze. And this would also work in this territory. And for heating, it would be um, fireplace and heated floors. When it comes to water, also practiced by the neighbors, it would be deep well because of the good groundwaters, and uh, that would be the best possibility about sewage and waste. There would be a sewage system with biological purification with further infiltration into the soil. And for waste, there's a possibility to have a contract with waste managers, even though it's far from the city. 10 minute drive actually, but still it is uh, pretty far for this case, but still there's possibility to have that kind of contract. And for eco economy, it has been proven because of the movement, not movement, but uh, att attractivity for humans in this case, in this place, because of the other uh, rentable units and guest houses. And there is a possibility for a collaboration with these guest houses. And uh, here we can see the visualizations. Actually, in this, uh, we can see the, that how the nature dif is different, and the more close you are to the water, uh, the, it is much more green. And a bit more far, if you go, it is also closer to the birch trees. The colors change, and even though the typologies and the floor plants are pretty similar in each of the building, the whole feeling uh, changes because of the angles of the buildings and because of the nature around. It's very unique for each of the building. And here about the stilts for the elevated path through the flooding area and the smallest picture represents the feeling I would be implementing in this space. Thank you. changing urban lifestyle towards nomadism, a process that is still awaiting comprehensive understanding in disciplines such as architecture, urban planning, and landscape architecture. Uh, the disadvantages, uh, summarizing the previously uh, mentioned imperfection, the main uh, drawback of the work appears to be uh, the discrepancy between uh, the idea encoded in the title, uh, vulnerable landscape, master planning, regional level, and the actual interest and idea of the author as formatted in the aim of the objectives of the research. About practical part, positive qualities are that the design is presented in attractive, intelligent, and graphically clear and creative ways. It includes artistically drafted themes, uh, rich illustration, simulations of excellent quality, and nicely composed eight uh, panels. And the disadvantages, uh, while the proposed design and uh, its presentation showcase outstanding qualities, there are several uh, shortcomings of uh, varying importance that raise questions about the overall quality of the work. About the questions, a part first question was how do we understand the notions vulnerable landscapes and Einaviskvertigevide? For those who do not understand, Einaviskvertigevide here is meant for view-worthy place and uh, vulnerable landscape is the best word combination I, my idea was shown in. So that is why I use this combination for the name of my thesis. And by that I mean that the place is uh, unique and uh, delicate and uh, that is what makes it vulnerable because the movement 
not the movement, but attractivity for people is growing and they want to come there and experience the beauty. And that is what makes it vulnerable. And the goal was to strengthen its resilience. And uh, that is al also what I mean by uh, view-worthy place. And uh, second one, what is the difference between master plan and strategic plan? As I understand, strategic plan comes before. It is the first steps and understanding of the goal of the project. And then comes the master plan, a more detailed uh, drawing, for example, or more detailed plan, which tells us how we're going to get there. So strategic plan is what do we want to achieve, and master plan is how we're going to get there. And B part, first question, what are the arguments for using concrete in the construction of a sauna? So firstly, for me, it's a clear point of contrast or um, accent to, and like to offer some real position. But you can see there's a building, but it's not with this warm, not warm, but not so bright color of a light concrete is, uh, you can notice it, but it's not taking too much attention away. So this means that there is a, clear, uh, some real clear position. Yes, there's building, but the main color that goes through this whole space is green because nature is the main leader. I'm not, uh, as I mentioned before, I'm not, I'm being led by the nature, I'm being inspired by it, but I'm not being slaved by it. That is why I'm also implementing this kind of material. And also it works together with the main structure for the living space because it is also from these uh, concrete panels. And uh, for what duration? Can visitors rent the facilities and where can they access basic services as shops and medical care? In this case, these rentable units would be for either one day, two days, a week, three weeks, but not for a long time. So the people types can change and everyone can experience this place if they want to come there. And about the basic services, as I mentioned before, Ogre City is a, a 10, 15 minute drive away and that is where big shops and uh, good medical care is located. It is southern part. And to the north, there is possibility also for shops, but only shops, not medical care, because it is a very small city. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Interesting topic, like a number of other topics we see today. You also did a wonderful model, I think, very easy to understand. Um, <clears throat> one of the questions is asking about, um, well, first of all, you are focusing on the vulnerable landscape. You are talking about this is an alternative to urban living or the rural situation and somewhere in between. Um, and the, you also mentioned that the existing, that you build an existing structure 100 years old, so you're kind of bringing more life into that. But I'm just wondering about, um, you're focusing very much on the vulner vulnerability of the landscape. You just mentioned that the shops, some large shops, are just 10 minutes drive away. Is that very sustainable? Should you know, just bring things with you? And uh, should you have to you know, run to the shop 10 minutes away? Definitely. I don't know, it's a simple question, no. Uh, but I'm also wondering if, um, uh, when, you have got, when you focus on uh, sustainability the way you do, the way you, you live, one week, three weeks, whatever, um, why didn't you address the sustainability in the building design more? I'm not against using concrete. I can, you can reuse concrete too. It's not that, but you have uh, some, uh, some roofs, you've got some walls, etc. cetera. Um, how would you, uh, how will you organize the foundations into this? Is it kind of, uh, you know, ground screws as it's called? Or um, did you address these um, sustainable issues related to the vulnerable landscape? Okay, if I understood your question correctly, um, I chose that material because this is not a seasonal, seasonable rentable unit. It's meant for whole year. So the structure needs to be strong. It is, in my case, it is only um, complementing this vulnerable landscape in a way that it is on stilts. It is being uh, above the ground, about four, 50 centimeters, and the nature is being, have this possibility to go even um, 
under the structure. Oh. And that is the way I am implementing that. And uh, yes, concrete, uh, I, I did not mention that the inside would be from wooden, wood, structu wood structure, same as in sauna, and the outside part would be with these light uh, concrete panels. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you. The graphics are really nice and the research also, but I didn't hear, um, or probably um, you didn't mention, or could you comment on what exactly is there so specific, which we don't have in any other uh, river fronts in Latvia, for example? Uh, is there some biotope or uh, what is so special about this particular landscape? Because what I see in the pictures, it's a, well, it's a typical landscape for me. Maybe it's something special. Yes, I uh, sadly forgot to mention that there are two um, natural habitats in, to, in this island and here. And uh, this, is, this island is not owned by this territory, so it is just nice to mention that there is a biotop on this island, and yes, up here also. And also that is, um, by that, the paths are being led. For example, here there's this path, but it is not going over the biotop, it's going around it. And uh, also, forgot to mention that this is um, a for First World War's Riga protection line was going through this whole place, so there, that is what also makes it unique. And for some historian or the goal was to some, somehow, even though the nature is the main leader, somehow provide, make this place uh, interesting for everyone. By this case, it is histor uh, interesting according to history and according to the buildings uh, that for introverts, extroverts, activities that can be done here. And yes, but important to mention about the natural habitat, it is there, yes. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, extending your answer, uh, I do see that in the landscape there's um, a lot of things that you have proposed. Uh, the roads uh, from the uh, existing road and some uh, pathways, etc. But could you please uh, also comment on how can we use the waterfronts, uh, except the trails which are leading from which point to what point and what happens uh, to the uh, visitors which could uh, come from, I don't know, from the north to the south or uh, from any other uh, place, as you said, that is so interesting to those who explore the First World War. Uh, um, how is it possible to live in this, um, I don't know, for one week or two weeks when someone is passing your uh, living space. Uh, so how it fits together. With such Did I understand with, correctly? With that such active uh, pathways, with actually such active uh, landscape experience and also living there. Like uh, if someone is there and someone comes in, goes yeah. by your window, that factor, okay. Firstly, about the waterfronts, um, as we can see in the model, this part, all this line, it is this part and is the highest one, same as this part. That's why this is the low part and it's being flooded seasonally. So it's hard to access here, only if you are an athlete or someone for whom it would be easy to jump in. But the safe zones for the waterfronts are all this line and uh, this place here and uh, there are paths that lead to it. And about the persons who rent these uh, units, the, uh, according to research, um, where the units are placed, it is, uh, maybe it's not shown clearly here, but it is the most uh, filled area with the trees. So there's this one road that leads to the unit, and if someone unexpected is walking there, seeing there's a building and a car, the person should n should be nice and not go. <laughs> go, go, <laughs> could go back and continue a different road. So that's the experience, mm -hmm. the uh, exploration possibilities. But yes, each of the unit has a lot of trees around. And as I showed in the 
visualizations that nature is wild there. And here, for example, there are bushes and a lot of stuff around to experience nature in full, on full level. And that is what would provide the privacy in my case. OK, thank you. Well, I'll, I would probably further suggest some other landscape elements like uh, uh, boat uh, station or something else uh, near the, yeah? There are boats, yes. Okay. <laughs> so a lot of things uh, untold. Yes, there are shown tiny boats here and here because that is the like, safe spot for the boats where it access them. And uh, yes, I did not mention that previously. Well, anyway, and uh, the last question is about the units. Uh, we do see s a lot of uh, options. And could you explain those, um, the idea behind of uh, making them so different? And also, um, I see a lot of different uh, types of the roof slopes and angles. Is there some kind of uh, idea behind that? Um, so Why it's so different? Yes. Um, this is a unit for the second and fifth unit are uh, for couples or just a personal one. And uh, that is why the roof is lower and uh, not, do not take that much attention. There's no need for a second floor. And while here, it's, it, can, uh, it is for five people maximum. That is why on the second floor there is a um, tiny bedroom. So that is the reason why it is a higher roof. Same for unit four, the unit for example for extroverts, and uh, that is why also it has second floor and higher roof. That's the reason. The, even though the typology, I tried to have the same in like according to movement and according to see, uh, the possibility to see either like in whatever corner you are of the room, you have a window to look out. You do not feel like you are in four walls like you would feel you are in a city. But here you can uh, have the views around and uh, that's why I have the same movement possibilities through each of the unit. Thank you. Thank you for a very interesting and uh, for this moment of history relevant topic about that nomadic um, uh, li uh, style of living and, and so. I have two questions. Uh, one is about, let's speak to about that nomadic um, uh, style of living. Um, it could be interesting to hear from you uh, what, in your opinion, is the difference, or there is no difference, if is, um, the, um, how to say, speak about typology, we do have kind of uh, guest houses which also uh, in, uh, have like central, central buildings and some smaller uh, lodge buildings or something like that in, in their territories. It's all over the Latvia. So what this would be like for nomadic uh, style of living, uh, what is the difference in typology of buildings uh, between existing versions of, of guest houses and your proposal, or maybe not your proposal, but principally what should be, because you, you studied this, this issue. It's, it would be very interesting to, to hear. Mm -hmm. um, um, first point would be the stilts on whom the buildings are located on, built on, and uh, um, to strengthen this answer, I would say also how you're being led to the, each of the house. You have the whole experience. That is how nomad, nomadic people lived. You have this experience, how you get to the unit. You have this wild feeling. If you're into the building, you, uh, again, the four walls there, you can al always see what is happening outside from your units. There's a whole different view for e from each of the units providing this panoramic view. Um, uh, but yeah, the main point would be the stilts on which the buildings are built and not so heavy materials. Of course, I can change the shapes of the buildings, which would be maybe a better point. But yes, I'm not including that kind of thing. And uh, that is what I can answer with. 
Thank you. It's a good answer. And the second answer, uh, second question is about the materiality of uh, buildings. You are saying that uh, those are um, mobile buildings, and uh, at the same time you are saying that you are using concrete. So your idea about how they are built. Can I jump in here, Chris? I think there's a big difference between concrete panel and cement board. I understood that you're using the 10 millimeter yes, yes. cement board, not concrete panels. I think that may help clarify it. Okay. Because it's a lightweight modular. Oh, okay, then that's on. just yes. uh, just an uh, exterior and so, yeah? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. And then that's different. Thank you. I have the same question because mm. it's a very important word. Because cement, there was a the cement board is lightweight. It's yeah, because they yes. are you can take concrete. it away. Concrete yeah. is like permanent. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for your job. You said that something remains from the uh, First World War. What what was what was there? Some some uh, remains, some uh, trenches, like Cox. Yes, trenches. That's how you trench. Yes. Um, uh, that's why the shapes are unique in some part of the territory, and also uh, leftovers of I've noticed there in this territory, like all the um, bunkers, bunkers, or something like that. No. Not bunkers, but uh, just everyday items, like from where you eat or uh, oh. some kind of materials just laying down there, and uh, that oh. makes it unique. And also, there used to live people 100 years ago, or a little bit less, who moved to America because they wanted to leave this site, and there has been a story that they had gold they could not take to America, so it was somewhere it is, and there come people with this um, scanner, uh -huh. and they come there and scan the ground, and uh, those, those who own the guest house Berzi need to deal with those people. So there are okay. these stories. Uh -huh. oh, that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, some <laughs> 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 Thank you for your job. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for your presentation. Beautiful drawings and, and, and renderings and images and, and good model. Really appreciate that. And I, I also had a similar question to, uh, as Gwanta until I realized that you're probably using, uh, it's a cement panel that you were thinking about because I, I think uh, your idea about touching the ground lightly and the building on, on, on stilts with uh, these lightweight panels, then it all makes sense and so that, clarified right away. Um, uh, I wanted to ask uh, a, uh, yeah, a question about, uh, uh, have you thought about this, how you could uh, also accommodate um, these um, uh, temporary functions? Because usually campsites have sort of, sort of the, the permanent installations, like the celebration house and stuff. Uh, but did you think about perhaps how you can accommodate those guests that might come with know, bikes in a tent, you know, or, or that type of camping. Is there uh -huh. opportunity for the traveler on bikes or hikers to set up here, like on a platform or something? Did you think about that? Yes, um, this part, there are put down fireplaces, like built in fireplaces, and this, there are no platforms maybe, but that this area would be meant for the, those who come by a bike or by a bus and want to camp there. It's also, the area that is the empty one, in a way, because it is uh, there are no units there, but this would be. You cross the water line, and then that's the first part. And also private, in a way, and mm -hmm. uh, yes, I thought about that. Yes, okay, good, good, good. Yeah, because the reason why I wanted to say that, I actually, uh, traveling in, in, in Norway, in, in your neck of the woods on one of the islands, there was nowhere to set up tents because everything was rock. And so they had these, like, wood, uh, little terraces, you know, like four meters by yes. four meters, and you could screw your tent right to the terrace, and you instantly had a, a, like a place to live. You know, the terrace sort of like defined. So I, so I think in the in the in the motive of the rest of your place, you could actually lay out, you know, additional yes. little just platforms where someone can then they, they can figure out how to use it themselves. But that's just uh, an afterthought. Um, let's see, I had another. Yeah, that was that was all. Thank you very much. Nice Thank presentation, you. yes, very good.
šī ir situācija. Jūdīt. Tas ir tā pacaltā fakta, jo šī ir zona, kurā var tavs kotnes arī uz familijiem. Skaidrs. Tīpuli, kur tagad šeit ir šis bloks. Un šeit ir natural habitat. Un šeit ir pakādīt. Šeit aug. Šeit aug. Pirks ģimstīņu gordinās ir kaut kādi tajās. Puķis skaistas. Tas orhidejas? Orhidejas. Šeit ir orhidejas un šeit ir ļoti rašīgi. Masīvos, jā. Nē, vēl citas vietas. Vēl tās zemlēs kurpas vēl tās vietas. Zemlēs kurpas, jā, jā. Es kādu zinu, ka viss Rīgas habitāts ir man vajag tā sastāv no jumstiņu gladiola. Tu esi zinu, ka pats visi jums ir. Jumstiņu gladiola. Es zinu, ka jums ir... And the site, the site is actually uh, yeah. okay. in India. Uh, and maybe British. <laughs> but, but I think this is a type of... Is it for us to live in India and come here? Yeah, as a student resident. Yeah. I'm just curious. Yeah, that's a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not for people. That's what we Yeah, this country is the uh, only one that is in English. Girls, <laughs> too. Yeah. They feel it because it's too important. Yeah. Yeah, this is just a typo. If it's, if you ignore that. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. It's just from 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 somewhere. Huh? In fact, it would become actually more suspicious as if it said British, yeah, than because <laughs> then we could discuss colonialism. <laughs> 
That's an issue. <laughs> yeah. So she actually lives in India. That's what come here. Yeah, she lives in India. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Oh, where she come here? We had another one. There's two two girls, but she took a year, a sabbatical year. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Mega. Yes. All right. So. Hello, everyone. My name is Mega. I'm from India, and my thesis topic is uh, redevelopment of slum area as an urban renewal approach for better livability. To get more understanding, uh, I would like to start with a location. So my location is Indian state called Gujarat City is uh, Vadodara, which is my hometown. Small text about Vadodara, what it is and where it belongs. So it's a magnification city of Gujarat is also known as Baroda. It's a second name of the city. And this city is uh, ruled by Maharaja Sayajira Gayakwar when British were ruling our city. So it's old history. And um, it is a po po populated city of the state and it is a uh, home for best uh, university, culture, heritage, and everything. And the uh, population is uh, 2.3 million. So a uh, small definition about slum. What is slum? So a slum is uh, predominantly an overcrowded area, which is in advanced stage of decacy where dwellings unit for human habit and in a basic language where you don't have like uh, basic amenities, facilities, sanitation, uh, not having proper roof, house, and uh, kind of uh, area which is created by the human. It's called a slum. And a small graph about uh, most well-known state of India in a percentage how much population they have. So in a blue, there is uh, my state called Gujarat. It has almost 9 percentage. And the city, Varadra, has like 4.84 percent, which is counted as uh, more than 1 lakh people live as, like, live in a slum area, which is below poverty line. And um, next to the map, you can see in a blue dots, this is a city map, this all location of a slum and one of these location I choose. So this is my site location, which I choose the area called uh, Nagarwada. Why I choose this site area? This is something personal and also like sustainable as well. Like I had one friend, we graduated together in India. She lives in this area and she is like very talented. She studied architecture and everything. So I just wanted to like, um, I know this site personally as well the, for the people and surrounded things. So I wanted to give a small effort to improve this area for the people. <clears throat> so if we talk about uh, surroundings, there is uh, two hospitals near uh, in the 500 meter. Then there is a mosque, a uh, temple. <clears throat> there is a big green space, which is also built by Sajira Gayakwar. It's a heritage garden. Which, is well, which has like a well-known uh, activity then. There is a sewage system plant. And this is a current photograph of the site. So this is how they live, what kind of houses they have. And n near to my site, there is a green belt and a river. River name is Vishwamitri, which is the longest river in my city. And there is a huge green belt, but uh, it's not usable anymore because people who live there, they are throwing their garbage and trashes and everything. So these all are dirty right now. They are not having like a uh, proper roof and houses as you can see in this picture. Then uh, <coughs> this is a small case study about uh, Mumbai. As you know that in Asia, this is the biggest slum we have in Mumbai called Dharavi, this kind of scene situation happening on my side, but on a small scale. So they, uh, in uh, Mumbai, they have like 132 hectare area, which is known as a slum. In this, people live there 
daily life. They are running small businesses and everything. This is also happening on my side though. So they have like daily income, but uh, not in a proper way. And uh, <clears throat> this is another case study about uh, design parameter. This is a house designed by Laurie Baker. Uh, he is like a British born Indian architect who work on an international and intermediational mission for those people who are suffering from this leprosy and below poverty line. Then uh, another example is uh, Ariana Slum Rehabilitation, which is designed by architect Bibi Doshi. So this is a case study <laughs> how he chose that uh, affordable and uh, durable material for the housing. So where people can feel to live there, not just in by three by three room, but to maintain the culture, <laughs> society, and ethics. And uh, this is something goes with my theoretical part. This is the chart I came through. And uh, first section is called effects of slum. Then there is a causes of slum. If we combine both together, then there is a coming uh, slough, uh, slum formation on this table. I have my whole theory part which explain uh, different stages and how to develop, how to renovate all this site and like how to deal with this situation. This is uh, another diagram for the advantages problem, the density surrounding area, what needs to be improved and, and uh, another framework which is very important in my project that livability waste output in together they are coming dynamics and uh, resource input. I'll show in the design part how I implemented. Then uh, coming uh, to the concept for my design. So basically the concept is uh, people need. This is also came from my research part. So there are three main uh, factors, solar farm plus build farm plus uh, green farm. And inside there is a nine parameter, which is important to improve. So there is a relationship which is meant for like people, uh, unite level, cross the level and c community level, which is very important. Then there is a safety barrier. Then identity, a uh, building can symbolize a region in a general sense, the culture identity because India has a huge culture and a diverse country, so we can't uh, remove that thing from people. It is uh, mandatory to include uh, in the design and to keep it in the site. Then uh, livability to provide affordable housing, uh, that's the important key. Sustainability uh, to clean surrounded green belt, uh, providing uh, in a way like more educated, uh, need to educate the people who lives there how to behave with this situation and how to deal with it because they are not used to that. Then uh, this is the design parameter which I came through when I was uh, going through the site that what's happening and what the people need. And this is the eight main factor which I came through. Uh, basic diagram about site zoning. What are the main program I included? So there will be a housing, school, shops, green space, and hospitals. So they were having already the housing, shops, and green space. I added uh, schools and hospital. This is a site view. So from the main road there is a shop and a school behind that there is a uh, housing blocks in the center there is a community hall and on a right hand side on the bottom there is a hospital as like a small clinic because there are two big hospital near to the side but it's almost uh, having very rush like every day so my proposal is to provide 24-7 uh, service as a small clinic and there is a laundry area, then existing temple. <clears throat> and yeah, that's all. Then uh, to uh, understand the program where it is located, the site plan and the area. 
Then here is the housing typology. I have total three housing ty typology with uh, different pe people with different uh, working class. So in a type one, there is a two houses on each floor. One house uh, consists around 56 meter square house, which has uh, basic amenity like bedroom, hall, kitchen, small balcony space and toilet. Type two is a meter for the type one, but it has a four unit on a floor and each house has a two story building. Then here's a shop one and uh, type three, it's like uh, if they have a big family, like more than five, six member, then they, they can merge one unit as a one house. This is, and uh, this is a view for this different typology of house, how it looks. Then there, if you talk about public building, there is, uh, I explained already, school, hospitals, and community, all more detailed view about the site section. Then uh, important thing about uh, material. So I choose the uh, main three important, uh, that's a brick, con concrete, and uh, solar panels. So. I created a kind of a brick cladding wall, which is in my language called a, a brick jolly or, or brick net to provide uh, from heat direct sunlight because in my city in summer we were having like almost 45 degree and it's too hot to live there. So this is the solution uh, with this material, with this net and jolly, how we can do the affordable and durable and yeah, the concrete structure and solar panel. This is a more detailed 3D view with uh, different sides of access. So on the first picture, left hand side, there is a view from a uh, main road. Besides that, there is a back view and uh, on the bottom, there is a view from community hall and the last is view from the school. This is a uh, isometric view to understand how it's uh, look all the sides, like there is a one view from the shop and the one view from the backyard, where is a laundry area and the hospital. And um, yeah, that's all for my, thank you. And thank you, Mega. Uh, the reviewer of uh, Mega Cities was uh, Janusz Buchel, and he gave a uh, positive quality for the theoretical part, which are clear goals and tasks and high motivation, detailed and very relevant introduction to the topic of slums in order to discuss the various aspects of this highly sensitive topic broad broadly and in detail, including academically and politically. Yes. Uh, they disadvantages <coughs> of theoretical part. Uh, uh, the work deals both with uh, the demand for diversity and intensively with a discussion about density. Unfortunately, there is no more detailed insight into the matter at this point. Uh, positive qualities of part B, uh, the design work, especially the work on the spatial architectural implementation, also represents a further building block for an overall improvement of various types of neighborhood and life improvements. Mega portal creates a form of manual and a typed form language is uh, research and design to get closer to dealing with the slums in their hometown. And disadvantages, the candidate could have over design, detailed planning and design insight, some of the buildings uh, with different usage concepts, uh, shops, etc. <coughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. and now you can answer for the reviewer's questions. Okay, so I will go with the part B first. So there was a question about that. Uh, can you imagine shop being uh, specially better connected to the actual residential uh, district and developing more so social and cultural interaction? So it's like, uh, I haven't provided shops by myself. There was uh, 
existing uh, small units which was running by the slum people, but it was not in a proper way. It's just that I give a small approach to renovate, to give a new design so they can have like a source of income to earn money. Mm -hmm. And it is also interact surrounded uh, residential area to come together and unite a new community. Then second question was about uh, how could the river and groundwater and even garbage situation be improved? It haven't mentioned clearly in uh, part B. Yes, I agree, I haven't clearly mentioned part B, but the thing is that uh, in a river called Vishwamitri, for a fun fact, there is a crocodile lives inside. And uh, it has a small story uh, behind that, that uh, we have one goddess and uh, they believe that the crocodile is a part of that goddess. So it's a belief, what I heard from, that uh, we are blessed to have a crocodile in this river because we believe in that goddess. So it's the thing is, uh, there are many plans and uh, projects going on to clean river, but uh, there is uh, much more waste coming from the industrial area as well. So we can control that for sure, and uh, we can, uh, create any campaign or education community for the people who live around that not to throw garbage near to the river. And uh, there is uh, one uh, plan going by the government so they can use that thing to throw that gar garbage and all the ne necessary thing. And um, my proposal was to explain in a theoretical part how we can improve, we can improve like a normal river front belt. We, we cannot provide like uh, any activities near to the river because people who are not uh, familiar with my city, if they come there and if they don't know that crocodile lives inside, so it's harmful for them. So from the safety barrier, I haven't created such activity near to the river, but of course we can clean the things and uh, we can provide nice seating area and kind of like a basic activity. So yes. that's the story behind why I haven't. <laughs> 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 and uh, about the part A, that about uh, com uh, commitment in more detail, your personal motivation for selecting those uh, architectural examples. Why I choose this uh, old architectural example because it was uh, it was uh, well designed by the architect and uh, it is running very ni nicely. People are living in that houses and place. So I just wanted to go from that perspective, from that architect view, that how he designed and what he is uh, like, what his review. So I just uh, follow his path what kind of material he used, in a which sense he provide maybe any kind of shape of the building or material. Yeah. And there is another question about, uh, can you please elaborate a little bit more about diversity and density can help uh, supporting the community development of your locality? Okay, to be very honest, uh, Indian people are very friendly with their own culture, so I would say diversity is my site and density is a surrounded area because people right now who live in this site, they build their own kind of uh, housing community. They build, they, are, uh, they have their own thinking. So my purpose is to change their thinking, their mentality and uh, bring out to that people and meet the new community who lives uh, like uh, people who live surrounded uh, this side because uh, there are like uh, uh, near to the side, there are uh, very well housing society. I can say like middle class people or people like us who lives near the side. So they have like own thinking that uh, these people are poor, they are below the poverty, we can't touch them, we can't meet them. But uh, this is the mentality and thing that I wanted to change mm -hmm. by proposing this thing, that all human beings are same. It's just that you need to understand what they think. And yeah, that's all. That's the diversity mm -hmm. and density I mm -hmm. can bring in the community. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you. I do have any questions. Thank you. Please. Well, this was quite a different challenge. <laughs> quite <laughs> One, a big challenge. <laughs> uh, no, I think it's wonderful. Uh, I think you, you're focusing on it's a very important social issue in India and very important for us to, to learn about it. I think you've done a very thorough job. And um, uh, it's quite interesting, the last question uh, here, you explaining that well, first of all, notice that your design is quite a high density. And now you explain why. You're saying that denser communities have you better access to public transportation and um, resources and uh, better quality of living. So you, 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 in fact, explain that how high density is the right solution, right? Um, now, the, 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 when you are... My main question is, is what you have designed, is that based on, if you like, vernacular architecture of India? Is it a furthering of the local traditional architecture or not? I mean, if you take Chandigarh, Corbusier did his own design, nothing to do with India, but it's mainly public buildings, but also it is some housing. And it is some housing in Chandigarh, which were meant to be an interpretation of Indian architecture. Um, you see, I know India quite well because we were involved in Hyderabad Airport, okay. <laughs> so I know. But um, but I'm just wondering: is what you have done here now? Is it? Do you feel it's is is it a Indian architectural solution, or is it inspired by other countries or other cultures? Or uh, how do you feel about that? I'm uh, more question and and I'll see if you like. Okay. Um, so it, uh, it's like, uh, yes, uh, of course, uh, based on Indian architect, they know like uh, how to de design properly and uh, what kind of material to be used in this kind of situation and uh, how to uh, react on the design. So it's just that there are a very well-known example from the old architecture and old uh, design. So my idea is to bring in this modern era with the new design, or I can say with the new development. But yeah, it's just that uh, they have done design in India, so that's why I choose that uh, there, is, there are some specific reason that uh, why he designed a building like this, why he chose this material from the wind barrier, from the heat barrier. That was my main concurrent to choose this uh, case study. Yeah, well, <coughs> I understand the material a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you refer at the beginning to two architects, yeah. one British-born and one Indian yeah. architect, and you show some examples. But for instance, like, if you look at your, your roofs, your parapets, it's quite heavy on top yeah. of it. Is that um, a furthering of the traditional architecture? Is it an attempt to do that, or are you doing something new? No, no, no. It, it's not uh, referring to any traditional architecture, my approach is just to create like a simple form, not to yeah. go with like uh, any kind of irregular shape because yeah. people who live there, they used to live like in this one square. Yeah. And if you provide them like a very um, like unregular shape, they will uh, like, they don't have a mindset like this to live in this kind of space. So to take in consideration that uh, they are living this kind of a shape and this kind of area. So I just wanted to maintain that thing with the design. Simple. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for a very thorough job. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Well, thank you. It was quite refreshing to jump into another country um, since we have a lot of designs in uh, our local one. Um, Probably my questions will be regarding the master plan. Um, mm. That is what I find the most interesting part in your proposal. And I have some issues regarding the scale. You mentioned that the whole land plot is 2.9 hectares, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. No, it, it's in a um, uh, square meter. It, it was not in a hectare. It's the same. I, Okay, for, for my... Uh, 29,000 uh, square meters. Yeah. Well, I have some issues regarding the square meters you mentioned um, for the community center and for the hospital mm -hmm. regarding the density of the housing, 
which I find there's something wrong. Can you, you mind comment? the sizing of the plot? Uh, yeah. Well, say again, how many square meters the, the, the housing has, one unit? So uh, there are like two typology. This is a first and a second. So uh, I would say like uh, around uh, 100 meters square, this one. Okay. Because it has uh, two small houses in one unit on one floor. So, so the sm uh, one house is around like 56 meters square. So it's around like okay. 105 or 100 meters square. And for example, the... The yellow one is... It would be double of that because it, it's just the meter part of that housing. But this here, up there, these are the ones you're referring to. Yeah. Uh, this, right? yeah. Yes. Okay. this one is yeah. the mirror and this is the main plan. Well, probably then there's some issue with, uh, okay. with the numbers you mentioned because the school, uh, which you said, is uh, 1,600 square meters is way too Yes, I small. forgot to uh, mention about the school. It's like, uh, no, it, it's not a small. Might be there is my mistake to mention about the square meters. I'm not sure, but uh, the school is uh, quite, a, not quite a huge, uh, not a huge, but it is a, in a big square meters. Why I choose this huge space because uh, um, Behind this plot area, there is a still more slum housing. So I just wanted to engage all kids and study in the school. It's not meant for only this area, it's for Saran. That is fine. I'm just uh, curious because if here is, uh, for example, community hall, uh, 549 square meters, and you say that the uh, footprint of the house is approximately 50, then there's something wrong with the scale or, or square meters. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, 500 is uh, 10 times the, the house. Anyway, um, that's... Might be, there will be my mistake in the calculation. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. 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 Because what, what I see that the community center, for example, which is in the center, which is fine, mm -hmm. is the same uh, size as the housing unit. Mm -hmm. Approximately, like Appro this Approximately this guy, uh, this unit, uh, it would be quite bigger than this, like quite bigger than this. And you're showing it small there. The community center is the same as the yellow housing unit, approximately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if yellow is like 100, uh, 200 square meters footprint. Well, there, there, mm -hmm. something wrong with this. Yeah. Also, um, let's keep it as it is. Uh, the same goes to the hospital and to the shops. But in general, how could you describe that you organize the? living units around the temple. Is it a, is it a common uh, thing? Uh, okay, so uh, this uh, housing area is a uh, existing space where people live. I talk uh, with the people who live there and they don't want to change their place where they live. And uh, here is a temple, of course, I can't move that thing because it's belong to cultural thing and it's a huge story about it. So uh, besides this uh, temple, there is a people live called the Brahmin who are taking care of the temple. So I can't uh, remove that houses which are near to the temple. We, we have some pictures of the temple. Uh, not many, but there is a small picture. I think that's the old one because they are renovating uh, that temple. Just to understand the scale mm. of... Uh, okay, there is a side picture. Ah, that was... Back? Or Back? Yeah. That's the temple on top, yes? Yeah? No, that's the mosque. Uh -huh. There is a mosque on the another side of the okay. road. Okay. Uh, there is no picture of not the having a picture, yeah. 
Okay. No, I, I, I was just wondering the, the size of it and um, everything else. Okay. And um, also you have uh, a specific thing in the general plan, which is called laundry. Well, um, just to explain for us which... Okay, yeah, for sure. Which is so uh, this is specific uh, yeah. thing. Uh, as you call a laundry, in our language we call as a dhobi car area. So what is this basically? This is kind of a laundry business where people give their clothes and they are washing them and earning them and giving back to the people and kind of that sources they can earn money. And this is running through from many years from these people. So it's a kind of a business that they are doing. So that's the existing space which they are using. So I just kind of develop it with some small walls and like a platform level where they can wash their clothes. And because here is a river built, so there is a well, access the crocodile. from this. And <laughs> yeah, I mean, but uh, they are doing like this, so I okay. can't change that thing because they are getting money from it. Okay. Uh, some kind of extreme laundry business. Um, <laughs> well, it's a huge, might be, you can find you some picture on Google how, how it, 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 it looks. <laughs> yeah, and um, about the community center, you, you, I, I think it's a three-story high community yeah. center. Yeah, you don't uh, show any plans except the... Um, yeah, because uh, I have... What is happening there? Or okay, okay, so this is... Uh, we have like uh, lots of festival, like uh, marriages and gathering occasion. So I just wanted to create one space where all can come together and celebrate it. The thing is, uh, I haven't developed uh, from interior space much, so I haven't put it. I have just uh, exterior and a basic parameter how it's look and what's happening. That's why I haven't show any detail about it. Okay, and what about the density? The the housing units are uh, quite uh, uh, close to each other. Well, um, we have used to some uh, fire uh, safety regulations, uh, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, we do know that uh, in different countries they are different. Uh, for me, it's uh, really close. It's uh, two two meters. Uh, it's like three 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 three, 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 okay. three meter approximately. Is it a fine? Yeah, is it fine because uh, if if you will see the picture of slum uh, housing, and uh, it vary from different city and countries, but it's like uh, they are living like in you know, a ones. Uh, just imagine that we we have this triangular uh, space, and they have like different sections, so they are living somehow together. So what happens between this uh, space between these two buildings and do these buildings uh, the the I don't know family which lives there have some I don't know some garden or whatever There is a green space uh, in between uh, uh, these blocks I haven't shown much detail but this kind of uh, small space so they can uh, have like maybe for each unit or if they wanted to use as like two or three units together, it depends on them how they wanted to adjust in this uh, situation. Yeah. But there is a gr uh, green space in between that. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for an interesting uh, journey to a different country. Uh, I have a question about the um, topic of density, still mm -hmm. the same, but uh, in different uh, angle. Um, as we understand, uh, and you already told, that uh, the density uh, in slam areas is very high and, and even getting to be higher. So what is happening? Uh, well, this so dense populated area takes some square meters. For example, your chosen area. So there live approximately how many people? That would be the, fir uh, that would be the first okay. question. And uh, you are let's say, removing for a while uh, them and mm -hmm. then letting back, back mm -hmm. and there are another houses. Mm -hmm. So what about the density? How many people will be uh, coming back? Or where will uh, be, uh, or towards where uh, will be moving those who will not be letting mm -hmm. back? <laughs> so that's my question. Okay, so uh, according to my research, uh, there are like 150 to 158 families lives right now and uh, there is uh, okay I don't have a picture here but 
Okay. So this is the, uh, like on the, I can say, so this line, you can see, these are the government blocks for the slum people, which are provided. But uh, it's like some people move in that and some people not because that uh, they are not feeling to live there. It's just like a big and huge apartment building with many stories. They, they wanted to live on a, really like on a base ground level, not too high building and uh, like they were not having any facility for green area, nothing like any co common space. So in case if we are building something like this, then we can move these people next to the main door in this building. And if they want, then they can come back or there is a still many houses which is empty they can live there as well. But for how many um, families do you have this uh, area? Uh, now this so you, you are saying about 150 uh, families living yeah. now, what will be after? Of course, there 150 can li live there because... Uh, so this is approximately also for one, 150? Yeah, because uh, this edge shape unit is total around 11, and this is all mm -hmm. around like 17 units. Okay, thank you. So you accommodate the number yeah, yeah, yeah. that is needed yeah. with this building type? If, if floors, there right? will be more families and people, then we can go up to three stories, but also people don't want to go as this building, right. not to hire, so we can build up to three stories if there are more mm -hmm. families or people coming. <laughs> Thank you for uh, your project. It's very, <clears throat> very um, important thing what you are doing. Uh, just one question: uh, You have uh, several types of uh, this new housing uh, with the two bedrooms, with the one bedroom. Yeah. Yeah. It's a different a bit. Yeah, it's a different for. Uh, and uh, my question is, uh, which is the average size of the families here? How many children they are normally have? Mm -hmm. And do you have this calculation of typology, how, how t which types you put in the new area according to this, let's say, uh, let's say uh, figures, how it is, or uh, some prognosis about families? Mm -hmm. how, how you calculated this, which types you use, how many, how many two rooms, how many th one room? Okay, so... Uh, it's based on, on some, uh, some, some figures or some uh, si right situation. Now they have like a three to four member uh, family and there is uh, like a max uh, six member with like two kids and their parents. And uh, if they have like grandparents and everything, then it will go like six to seven, otherwise it will be like three to four. So my uh, approach is that uh, there is a one bedroom apartment which is enough for like three to four people and if they have like big family then uh, we can merge this uh, whole apartment uh, for the big family. Mm -hmm. You said three to four with one bedroom? Yeah, because right so now... It's luxury compared to what they had before. Yeah, mm -hmm. because what they have right now, it's better than this because uh, provide in this area for all those 150, 158 families, it's, and their requirement is not to go very higher, just like a normal boundary. This is the thing I can uh, okay. do to provide, at least uh, with the proper roof walls and I mean, it is toilets which they don't have. Uh, is it tradition that uh, parents live together with yes. children and with grandpa? Yes, yes. Also three, three generations together? Yes, yes. I also live like that and I brought up like that. Me too. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, thanks. I really uh, uh, appreciate what you've done here. Um, uh, and I think this is really good and interesting for us because we sort of have to switch gears to um, understand and accept the uh, approach. And first of all, I want to say I think the... Um, you know, uh, the buildings and that they're so close, I think it actually, actually makes sense because the buildings are shading one another, okay? So you build the buildings and the next one is shaded by, which we would in Latvia do the opposite. We don't want to shade the buildings. Exactly. We don't want to shade windows. And here, here we sort of have to switch our thinking, saying, ah, 
these these buildings their their closeness actually allows the building to be in the shade most of the day because of the proximity of the next building and that's really nice um, and then also the the way how you chose to use the uh, the brick wall you know like in Norway they put brick walls behind glass and then the glass heats up the brick wall that has you know the trombane trombane walls yeah from the and here it's just the opposite. The brick wall is a trellis. It's on the outside. It absorbes the heat and shade and provides shade on on the real facade. And so I think these moves that you made and 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 the aesthetic makes sense. You know, in 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 the context of the country that this is being proposed. Um, and then what else did I want to say here? Um, I like. The, the the plans are are long and narrow, but when you look at them carefully, they they actually they 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 work. And the fact that you can combine, it, it's not too big if you combine it, right? And and it's not too small if there's just one family in there. So I think I think this also is is a is a good move. I I agree with Linda. I can't really comment on the square meters of the things and whether all the math works. Uh, I, I I can't comment on. That. I would have to sit down and, and look at that in, in more in more uh, more carefully. But the fact that they're two stories, uh, if this was five or nine stories, yeah, of course that would be crazy. It would be way too dense. But the fact that it's two stories, it's it's a comfortable scale. Um, and what's really nice is wherever you walk during the day, depending on what hour it is, you you uh, half of your journey can be in shade which is really really very important uh, uh so that's all on that but what i i want to congratulate you because actually i know um and this is not so much about your project but the fact that you came here you studied here you dealt with accepting all of our cultural challenges uh and then actually you survived that um yeah you survived that and and you and, and and in our climate and put That's up the with hardest thing for me. yeah and so so I'm I, I want to say on behalf of very really proud of you that you actually put this together and did it because I know what you went through to make this happen and it was it was very difficult uh, two years for you so really congratulations for putting this thank together you. yeah yeah thank you.
the time of my project is recreation complex, which was built in Soviet times. And uh, now I prepare the renovation of, uh, about it. Uh, the relevance of the time consists from three points. Uh, first one, holistic well-being. It recognizes uh, that a proper work-life balance and active recreation contribute to our well-being. Uh, the second one, environmental uh, conservation. Uh, FEM advocates for the development of recreational complexes that not only provide enjoyable experience for people, but also prioritize the uh, preservation of the natural environment, ensuring sustainable and responsible tourism. And the third one is sustainable development, emphasizing the need uh, for proper organization and infrastructure that same pro uh, promote a sustainable approach to tourist and recreation. Uh, there are three problems about choosing topic. Uh, the first one, lack of recreational facilities in small towns like Tsarnikova, which you can see on the first map, this one. Uh, the second is that people choose mostly one-day trips and their stati statistic uh, uh, with uh, their reasons about it. And the third one is about location of all recreation complexes, so which was built in Soviet times and now doesn't work there yet. <coughs> uh, the research aims to revitalize and modernize all recreation complexes dating back to the Soviet era in Latvia. Uh, the goal is to create a contemporary and appealing recreational space that aligns with the modern standards. And there are four international case studies with uh, different unique things which I use in my project. This first one location is in uh, Russia. This complex locates uh, next to the lake uh, in pine forest, which is similar to my lake location. And the second location is in China. I take from this complex idea with the common spaces like terrace, which uh, located, uh, locates near the houses. And the third one uh, location is in Lithuania. I take from this complex idea about the renovation and adding new functions like spa complex. And the fourth, about the hotel in Finland. I take the idea to use natural materials, which will be the best solution in this complex location. Uh, the location of selected territory is Tarnica. Uh, Tarnica is a great place for tourists uh, because of seashore and a lot of uh, lakes around all the region and it is a very popular place for ecotourism. And uh, uh, the tourist area is located on the border with a natural park and territory has built up functional zoning. Uh, as you can see that next to my proposal territory there is a train line. And my proposal territory locates, is, locates uh, in uh, Gaia region, and there is a train station uh, with uh, Gaia, which named Gaia. And uh, here you can see the proposal territory situation. Uh, there is lake next to the uh, proposal territory, and uh, there are a lot of uh, residential areas next to this territory. Uh, about the existing master plan, uh, you can see that uh, there are a lot of uh, typologies of building with uh, apartments and uh, uh, house B typology and house A typology I want to save and uh, to renovate it. Uh, about the playgrounds, uh, it will be renovated too. Uh, about the proposal master plan, as you can see, all buildings are saved. Uh, and I add one more building, uh, it will be public building, which located here. And uh, I expand a parking, uh, because there are a lot of uh, uh, people can stay there, and uh, this sector need a big parking zone. And uh, there will be a stage uh, with a different, uh, which can be for different events. And uh, there will be picnic shelters for people who, for example, choose to uh, stay there not uh, for two days, but uh, maybe for one hour or one day uh, to have a good time there and uh, renovated playground. Mm -hmm. About the circulation, 
from my territory, uh, there will be a wooden pass uh, <coughs> through all my territory for people and uh, cars will be circulated only around all territory. And there will be uh, three types of buildings on this territory, public building, uh, A-type building, B-type building, and private saunas next to all buildings. And uh, through my old territory, there are a lot of trees and uh, green zones. About the existing situation of house type A, uh, as you can see, that uh, there are six, uh, diff uh, six similar apartments uh, on this building, uh, and uh, all these apartments do uh, doesn't have uh, sanitary rooms, which is uh, a bad uh, side of this apartment. And um, what I add, I add a sanitary room in each apartment, and I save a uh, quantity of uh, apartments. On this in this building and uh, on the second floor there will be a bedroom on the first floor there will be kitchen with a uh, fireplace and with a living room and uh, I add the uh, third floor uh, for a private terrace which will be important for people who live there who, who will live there and uh, <coughs> it will be for each uh, apartment uh, for facade, I will use a wooden siding. Uh, existing situation, it has a brick, constru brick construction, but uh, I will uh, add uh, insulation. Uh, it will be better for winter season. And uh, about the wood siding, I choose this materi material because it is uh, most uh, ecological material. And uh, there you can see a section of this type uh, A house, and uh, you can see the shape of this roof, uh, of this building, and this roof, which goes from first floor to the third floor. And uh, now you can see how uh, the difference uh, between the existing situation and proposal situation. Oh. About the house type B, uh, existing situation is uh, similar to house A. Uh, there aren't any uh, sanitary rooms and there, is, uh, there are eight apartments. Uh, what I add? I add uh, on the first floor, I, you need uh, two apartments and add one apartment for uh, disabled people. And on the first floor, there will be uh, two apartments for a uh, couple, uh, uh, for two people. And uh, on the second floor, there will be four apartments uh, for family rooms, for family uh, with uh, four uh, people. And uh, on the third floor, there will be a terrace which can be used uh, for uh, families which are located on the second floor. Uh, the uh, facades will be similar uh, to the uh, situation as I told uh, with the house type A. And uh, there will be the section of this house and uh, how it changes change, uh, from existing situation to proposal. And you can see differences. And uh, about the public building, uh, there will be extra functions uh, for my recreational complex. Uh, that it will be the spa center and restaurant zone. And uh, you can see that I, uh, uh, there, is, there are four zones. Uh, information zone, which is red. Uh, staff zone, which is yellow. Green zone, which is uh, uh, spa center and uh, violet. It is the restaurant zone, and uh, <coughs> you can see that facades, the materials of facades are similar, and uh, it has a glazing roof, uh, which uh, can make uh, this building more uh, open and uh, not so private, private like a uh, house type A or house type B. And uh, ah, uh, I forgot about uh, one thing. 
uh, there will be on in the spot center zone there will be internal courtyard which located here and uh, there you can see uh, visualizations uh, how it looks uh, it is uh, entrance to this uh, internal courtyard and uh, it is internal court courtyard is the lounge zone and there you can see uh, on the first uh, uh, image uh, that uh, there is a uh, spa center with a swimming pool on the terrace and uh, on the second floor there is a uh, restaurant zone and uh, how it looks uh, from outside. So thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. The reviewer of uh, your Giovetta's thesis uh, was Jan Klenis, and uh, the positive qualities of uh, this thesis, the theoretical part, the BA thesis has discovered that the demand of, for accommodation in health and uh, recreation center has increased in Latvia. This advantage is the process of development and renovation is based not only on the architect, architect vision, uh, municipality involvement and public opinion. They are involved in this and financial resources of the client. In the case studies, there is uh, information about the client only from sports compass measures. About practical part, the positive qualities of the building program is uh, interpreted correctly. The master plan discovers the functionality of the whole complex. The imperfections, uh, the only disadvantage is the lack of individuality. See the review question. Uh, the, I'm sorry, yes, you can answer. Uh, the Becalar thesis declarates that the integration of spa services, including swimming pools, uh, uh, message rooms uh, and uh, wellness treatments, provides guests uh, with an ultimate in relaxation and wellness. But in uh, Bachelor Thesis uh, Part A, there are no proposals for these kind of services. Why? Uh, the main idea of my project uh, uh, was to renovate and modernize an old recreation complex. And uh, I use case studies, uh, uh, which is here. Uh, this uh, uh, complex located in uh, Vilnius, and uh, it has uh, a renovation. And uh, re renovation is about the adding functions like uh, spa services. I use uh, this idea from this, I take this idea from this uh, case study and uh, use it then in my project. So it will be about th this. And uh, about the question part B, uh, the project em emphasizes the importance of tourism and recreation in maintaining a balanced and healthy lifestyle. It recognizes the need for individuals to manage stress and find time for relaxation, but the recreation complex has raised no elements of individuality for 17 renovation uh, houses. They are similar or even the same. Why? Uh, the houses have the existing shape, uh, which preserves the historical appearance. And uh, to make it more interesting, I add this third floor with a gable roof. And uh, I use it uh, in all my houses uh, to make uh, a one architecture style. And uh, if uh, we can see this around all my territory, there are a lot of uh, uh, residential areas. So all buildings in these uh, areas uh, has uh, this kind of roof. Maybe not all, but uh, a lot of buildings. And uh, I wanted to make uh, all of these uh, buildings in one architecture style. So it's about questions, yes. Thank you. Oh, please. Could you show us the, the site plan? Yeah. Proposal, yes? Yeah, uh, you just... Yeah, th that one. Um, <clears throat> I think you've done a very good job, and it's very well illustrated and also very well explained. A lot of praise. Um, and I will. And I realize you've been 
working on existing buildings and making changes, and I, I think I'll leave it to the rest of the jury to comment on the, on the houses. I'd like to focus on the site plan, and I just wonder, when you are, you are in the, to the southwest, you have car parking. Now, if you're going to deliver a, um, a washing machine to one of the houses, can you drive along the path, or? Uh, no. How do you I, do it? I wanted to make uh, all this complex uh, for eco-tourists, too, because uh, uh, near all my territory, there, are, there is a nature park, and uh, a lot of tourists came to Tsarnikovo to visit this uh, park, and uh, uh, they wanted to stay somewhere. And uh, I think it will be good reason to make uh, a more private uh, this old territory, and uh, it, it is why I uh, don't use uh, car uh, there. Uh, I use car only around uh, this old territory. I have uh, car parking there, and I have uh, existing uh, car parking there. Uh, I save it. Uh, it's like an extra place if you don't have a place there you can use it and uh, so yes it is about the car circulation yep because looking at the side plan you see it's, it's quite uh, high density and uh, i was just wondering how you had the outside you mentioned okay you provide a restaurant mm -hmm. which is fine but if you think about a family coming there with small children okay you have a, a renovated playground uh, and you've got a park square at the bottom and you stage at the top, so three different places. Will that suffice? Will that be sufficient to, you know, for, say, young children to play outside? Will they presume they're well protected because no car, cars driving around? Yes. Yeah? No, uh, you're quite happy with the solution? Yeah. yeah? Well, I think, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I know that uh, in Tarnico there are a lot of people who uh, walk ar around all uh, this region and uh, they go to the lake uh, and they go to the sea and they don't use the car uh, like uh, every, in a everyday life. Uh, so there are a lot of uh, beautiful landscapes uh, there and uh, beautiful pine forest. I think it is a good uh, a reason why we uh, have to walk around all this territory, not to use this yeah. car. <laughs> but when you enter the whole area, you have to walk through the car park. Uh, what? When, when you come in from the south, you have to walk through the car park, uh, or you can. We, can, we have to uh, come only from this side. Okay. Uh, and uh, there is car parking, but there is a wooden path next to the car. A park. little path next to the cars. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> show the bigger plan. Uh, uh, to show the, the the plan of the building, the complex. Yeah. Um, so that you can. Yeah, so you can enter there. But the cars are given priority. Yes. Yeah. Okay, thanks for a clear answer. <laughs> there you thank you for the question. Um, thank you for the presentation. I do think that um, what we have uh, from our previous, uh, uh, how to say, uh, periods, um, a lot of uh, empty buildings, empty complexes. Uh, which needs to be renovated and somehow rethought, uh, which is quite a good example of doing that. But uh, I do still have some questions regarding um, when we're redesigning some existing structure, we do uh, think about how we improve it. Um, what I see here is that we have some improvements in the Mm, how to say facade, and probably we have put some third floor, but a more detailed plan of how we are making our buildings better than it was before. Uh, I think it's. Uh, can you explain more? Yes, of course. Uh, there is existing plan, and uh, as you can see, that there are no uh, sanitary rooms, and uh, all the rooms in this. Uh, apartments are very small and there are several for, for example uh, it's kitchen 
and it is lingual and uh, it is uh, uh, this is separate uh, it uh, it is separate from living room and uh, as you can see on my plants mm -mm. I uh, you need uh, living room and uh, kitchen. Uh, it, it will be better uh, better uh, a situation in uh, this uh, apart in these small apartments. And I add sanitary room. It will be uh, uh, improvements uh, for my complex. Uh, mm. And uh, I add terrace. Uh, uh, that will be a private place. Uh, private open space uh, for uh, people who live there? Um, well, probably I would uh, suggest in the further uh, planning process to provide more uh, detailed plans with uh, furniture, etc. since we have uh, only two types. Uh, a, a bit of uh, information could be useless, useful. Mm -hmm. Uh, anyway, uh, could you please explain more about that uh, new uh, structure which you add um, to as a third floor uh, for each ah. type? Yeah. Uh, I uh, I can show it there. Uh, first of all, I was thinking about this building. And uh, I wanted to add some extra functions for it. And uh, I, as you can see, this, uh, it has uh, this kind of room, which goes from, uh, uh, from down uh, to up, <laughs> uh, to up uh, floor. And uh, as you can see, this, uh, I uh, repeat this shape of, build of uh, roof uh, on third floor and uh, complete this roof uh, on, the, on third floor and uh, it is how I make this uh, terrace and uh, then I uh, copy this roof and add it uh, on uh, uh, this building as you can see uh, and uh, I copy this slope and add this slope on this building in uh, public building so and now it has all all of these buildings has uh, one architecture style like this with some differences so while we're renovating the building it will be accessible also in the winter season not only in summer season as i do understand that uh, particularly it was used in summer season before not only no? summer season i uh, the existing situation in existing situation all these buildings used are used only in the summer season but uh, it is uh, why i uh, add the insulation and uh, i was then uh, with this insulation it can be used uh, in a winter season too so uh, because uh, in uh, living room in these uh, old buildings there are fireplace and uh, it will be good uh, uh, situation to use this uh, fireplace uh, in a winter season for example and uh, you can see it will be there in all, in all apartments. What happens on the ground floor for each apartment? Uh, we do see some terraces on the upper floor but uh, on the ground floor on the ground floor, uh, these apartments, uh, they don't have this private terrace, but uh, they have uh, this terrace which uh, are located on a first floor. And this terrace uh, gives uh, a lot of uh, functions. For example, you can uh, rent, rent not only one apartment, but you can rent all these uh, buildings, uh, which has uh, uh, Five, uh, which has uh, seven uh, apartments, and uh, it will be for big company, for example, uh, with the friends, and uh, they can use uh, this uh, terrace, which located located in the ground floor, uh, for different uh, events and uh, I don't know uh, to celebrate something, for example. You have indicated in your general plan uh, such thing as uh, the stage. Is yes. it existing structure or is um, it new or some comment on that? On the existing situation, uh, there will be, uh, th there is uh, a building for different events. Uh, 
I can show it. This one. Uh, it is in the on, on the in the existing situation, and uh, I wanted to save uh, this uh, opportunity uh, to celebrate something, and uh, uh, I add this stage uh, there because there will be a good place and uh, more private for all the houses, and. Uh, as it will be open stage, but uh, on the existing situation, it is uh, more clo closer <laughs> place in Kyiv. So I renovated it and replaced it. What about the sounds uh, coming from the stage and those huge celebrations and those who are recreating uh, in silent mode? Uh, yeah. uh, it isn't so big stage. It is only for uh, different events like, uh, 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 I don't know, exhibitions or, or something else because uh, on the existing sit situation, uh, the uh, people who uh, rent these old houses, uh, they rent it uh, because there are a lot of uh, celebrations on this ter territory and uh, it is a great opportunity uh, to play uh, on guitar there and uh, they celebrate a lot of events and uh, so they want to save uh, this place uh, like to uh, go through all this territory and uh, enjoy it and uh, enjoy the music which sounds uh, uh, through all territory and, um, and so uh, to make a lot of celebrations there. Uh, they wanted to save this uh, place. <laughs> okay. So I can replace <laughs> <laughs> it. Okay. Okay. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. I still want to ask about um, existing situations. So those houses are not inhabited at the moment, as I understand, yeah? Uh, they, um, only in a summer period, uh, people rent these houses. But uh, it has a lot of problems because uh, they has, uh, have a lot of problems because the center rooms are outside and uh, that's, that's are my outside. question. I want to ask, um, well, um, this is like 100 num number 103rd uh, system uh, typical buildings in Simtresha uh, city built in, in during Soviet times, like one adoption of, of this one. And normally there had to be sanitary room. What happened with them? <laughs> because to build building uh, of this uh, era period, um, I can't imagine without sanitary rooms. What uh, happened with them? But uh, they don't have with this uh, existing space. Really? You can, you can see it uh, there. This is it is a kitchen, not a sanitary room, and uh, it's clean room, and on the second floor it's better. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I was there. On mm. <laughs> okay. Yes. And the uh, sanitary room is outside. It is. It's all this theater has only one. Uh, Where it is? Sanitary room. Uh, it is here. Oh, okay. And it is far from, for example, mm -hmm. this house. So mm. if you want to go. To Okay. Thank you. And uh, about the apartments you are creating, um, I a bit wonder about possibilities you had and did not um, use. Um, you are having like a three story apartments with the one uh, toilet, uh, which is there, with the entrance from the lobby. During this time of uh, winter, winter time, you are just coming through the lobby uh, as a mudroom, and there is also an entrance to the only uh, toilet and shower uh, in a house, and then you are going up to the second floor for the bedroom. Did you consider some uh, other options also, or maybe there are some cons uh, structural? Um, situ there is a st structural situation why you could not make some or divided the sanitary room or um, 
somehow adapt to the upper floors. Uh, about the living room, it is existing situation. Uh, I uh, saved it. Mm. And about the sanitary room, I uh, 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 one apartment have only one sanitary room. I think for this uh, complex, it will be uh, the best solution because uh, it's it's not uh, for all. Uh, uh, for it, uh, this complex is only for week, for example, or uh, maximum uh, months and. Uh, Maybe it's not necessary to add uh, one more center room. And uh, so about the planning uh, bedroom, it is uh, uh, existing situation. Uh, on the second floor, there are bedrooms. And uh, it, what I add is this uh, dressing room on the second floor. And uh, it will be best solution for uh, people who uh, uh, sleep uh, on bedroom and uh, about the terrace so I talk about the terrace it's, a, it's just a, like an extra part function and uh, yes all, as you can see all planning it is existing situation what I add I add sanitary room and the unique uh, uh, kitchen with the living room thank you Okay, thank you. Uh, I, I like this job. It's okay. Uh, a bit of um, material. This is uh, wooden. The lower part is wood and the black one is metal. Metal, yes. Metal. These two materials, just. Yes. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you much. Yeah, just, uh, just briefly, uh, thank you for bringing all this together. I think the presentation and your investigation and uh, I think the big challenge that I noticed with all of this is try to figure, create a, a new identity for a complex with existing uh, volumes and then come, on, come in with a language that makes sense for the entire complex and I think you've done that. So thank you. Thank you very much. Nice presentation though. Yeah. Long day. Long day. Yeah, a lot of these uh, resort places that were co-ops that uh, and sometimes they're really quite strange that I couldn't figure out why these resorts Concrete brick yeah. buildings in the middle of the woods. They were, it was like they were like four and a half of this land. But it was quite, but there's a lot like that. Yeah, yeah a lot of them throughout Latvia. And this one belonged to Air Force Airlines. This, this belonged to the Russian Air Force Airlines. This is where their workers could rent space to stay during the summer. And it, who would build a cabin of a brig uh, a kilometer from the lake without toilets? In, in the unit, yes. Yeah. It's really strange. Yeah. But also, a lot of the Soviet housing here, you have, you have rooms without, you have to go to the end to get the room. To make the plans more compact, they avoided having corridors to the private area. And sometimes you'd have your kitchen, living room, right out the living room, and you'd have a door to the bedroom. And from the other end, you'd have the other bedroom. And they would eliminate the need for a corridor then. But the question of the, the privacy of putting a private bedroom right on access to the living room, you don't do that. Usually, there's a transition, right? So, Thinking, yeah. Well, this is the whole socialism type of approach.
Hello, uh, good afternoon. My name is Gerks, and I will present my bachelor thesis, Critical Regionalism Through the Lens of AI. Um, I want to start with stating the problem, which in my opinion was the globalization, homogenization, and preservation of local identities. I'll tell a small anecdote. Uh, when it was around 10 years ago, I was going through the per peripheries of Riga, and I noticed that there's quite a lot of these buildings, and I went further and further, and there's more and more and more, and I was thinking, surely there's got to be a better way of creating like architecture that is not soulless and lacks any regional traits. And uh, some years later on, I enrolled in architecture, and I understood that uh, there are certain reasons for why this environment looks like it does. For example, the economies of scale, uh, scale cost optimizations, and as well, uh, social media influences and trends. And I liken this phenomenon to like the snowball analogy where certain trends are like snowballs coming down a mountain and becoming larger and larger and larger. And when there's a chance to fill some urban gap, then we immediately go for the large snowball. So what can we do about it? Um, AI is a 400, uh, 640 billion dollar industry. And I was thinking, is it possible to use this AI technology to enhance local architecture, to cultivate the spirit of place? And is it easy or will it be easy? Um, so AI is very good at uh, and capable of analyzing massive amounts of data and spotting correlations between foreign and like different topics, as well as it excels at blending ideas and producing hybrids of concepts. And as well, the main thing which is it's capable of speeding up, up a variety of workflows. Um, so, uh, compared to like a traditional approach, architecture is, architecture is an iterative process, so it takes quite a lot of iterations to produce a result. Uh, using AI, it is possible to advance this and to have many iterations going on parallelly to, to have references and to work with this. So therefore, one working with AI theoretically could uh, test many iterations and save money, energy, and labor. Um, so I wanted to focus on these areas in the context of my thesis. I wanted to examine the value of local identities, research, can artificial intelligence be useful in preserving identities of local spaces, explore current AI capabilities, and understand in which stages uh, design, in design AI can assist in. For the theoretical framework for this presentation, I chose critical regionalism, which combines by its name the idea of criticality, by Kant and the regionalism. And the main idea of critical regionalism is that it's an approach that balances the conservation of local identity without neglecting the global contemporary progress. And uh, some of uh, these pr principles for critical regionalism are uh, it uh, balances regionalism and globalism. Regionalism not only as a complete resistance to globalization, but as well like a balance between these two identities. As well, it's rejecting absolute historicism. It's not about just replicating the forms of the past. Um, as well as uh, defining place and territory, and lastly, incorporating of regional vernacular. So the advantages of critical regionalism is uh, the cultural identity and connection. Uh, it preserves heritage and fosters identity. And using these methods of uh, critical regionalism, it's one as well enables this idea of sustainability as it's encouraged to use uh, local resources, local building practices, and sustainable architecture, as well as some others. So uh, what makes critical regionalism so different from everything else is that it's not critical only towards outside influences, but it's to as well critical towards itself. So the idea is that uh, designing within critical regionalism and, uh, and training, they both share this aspect where you have to uh, evaluate which references are important and which do you take and incorporate into your own designs. And similarly with an AI, you have to be very careful what you put inside this AI to like, cultivate the output that you want. 
So the main research question of my thesis is, can AI be used as a tool to create critical regionalism architecture? And the goal is to create workflows for an AI-based critical regionalism approach. Um, well, the main advantage of my idea is that it can be implemented anywhere, despite of the location. For testing purposes, I chose a Riga neighborhood, Agenskalns, which has its own local distinct character, a variety of available typologies, and in my opinion, a perfect choice for testing of this methodology. As a part of this thesis, I trained six versions of an AI algorithm, each iterating on weaknesses and flaws of the previous one. And the latest one was version six. And this uh, model was trained on four distinct typologies, Fagens counts, which was uh, brick architecture, wood architecture, Soviet architecture, and as well as uh, contemporary references to Fagens counts. And uh, it was trained on 600 pictures of Fagens counts, and these are some of the uh, output pictures that is uh, possible to create with my model. For design phase, uh, I choose to infill gaps in the urban fabric. As for example, you can see in the uh, pictures that there's a gap, and I use AI to infill this gap using a variety of different methods that I will discuss. Um, in the architect's AI toolbox, there are these things called control nets. I won't go into details, but one can take a reference image and convert into these maps. And then using these maps, it is possible to create uh, exact replicas or similarity of uh, this uh, sort of idea. As well as the tool of denoising, which takes an image and then varying, by varying the strength of it, one can change and alter the appearance of this certain uh, reference image. And lastly, the one that I came up with myself is the tool of urban remixing. When, uh, based on how I've trained this algorithm, there's these many typologies and one can vary the percentages of influences of these typologies that are present in the, in the output. And for the design part B, I developed two buildings, uh, each uh, representing a different aspect and idea of artificial intelligence. For the building one, Urmanyu Yel 12, uh, the idea is reverse Bauhaus, or function follows form. And it was an, an idea to explore the rationality of AI designs. So the AI generated an outer carcass, and uh, I uh, designed the interior and see how rational is the outer shell for a uh, human architect to implement the interior space. And as well, an experimentation to see is it possible to generate not only one picture, but multiple facades of the same building using this AI technology. Uh, this was the site on Wormanil. And this is the main facade, which is the output of AI. Um, from this um, main facade, I could deduct uh, typology and like other main aspects of this uh, building. And regarding the back facade, I used a combination of these methods of the AI toolbox that we discussed before to force this cohesiveness. Because as I found out, a major problem of current AI technology is that one can generate one facade, but it's very difficult to generate cohesiveness and the, the whole building uh, is not a whole as the AI does not see it as a whole. And now uh, these are the facades of the building and the plants. Uh, I want to highlight that uh, due to the way the AI produced this building, there, was, there were these very tall uh, windows and then the task for me, the human architect, was to uh, implement how one could uh, utilize this space with these tall windows. So I employed it at this mezzanine floor which connects uh, the main living room area with the upper floor and this uh, contemporary sort of furniture style. Um, the building two uh, is called Embracing Reality or Consistently Inconsistent. As through my first building design phase, I understood that the only thing that remains consistent with current AI technology is that it is inconsistent. So the idea was to design a building that embraces this inconsistency of current AI technology and as well to explore hybrid video generations. Um, this is the scheme. Uh, the idea was to have three points and from depending on where you stand on the land plot, you perceive a completely different space around you similarly to how AI perceives this space. Um, I started with outlining shapes, and uh, unfortunately due to technical gremlins, I have to exit this. 
presentation. So it started with a video of uh, these outlining shapes, and uh, I made a 360 video of it. And then running it through my AI, uh, I added architecture references, which come out of my uh, against count train model. And to uh, enhance it even further, I, uh, I ran the same video through it again to uh, generate a lot of references based on this original video. And yes, uh, based on these references, I choose the most powerful uh, ones depending on the angle and made this variety of facades which are based on this AI algorithm. And now uh, these are the uh, three angles of observation. Um, and the example floor plan and the total square area of this space. It includes three buildings and it's 5,050 square meters total. So uh, my conclusions are, uh, can AI be used as a tool to create regionalism architecture? Yes, and, but is the output itself critical regionalism? No, not by itself. Um, the current, uh, the current uh, I want to preface this, that this is the current issues of the AI, as I presume that in a year or two, we will already be a lot further and we'll have completely different conclusions regarding this. So currently, uh, there needs to be an architect present to moderate and curate the output of an AI. As AI is not all inclusive and it is not aware of certain aspects as like building codes or uh, good living aspects for humans as it's currently just image based. So there needs to be an architect present to like ensure that there's no AI hallucinations present in the project. Um, as well, AI results are far from being cohesive and or rational standalone projects. As well, currently there's an issue of manual modeling where one needs to manually recreate the output of AI in 3D as there are no current implementations which is straight to 3D output. And as well, the issue of randomness and immaturity of current technology. Uh, well, the uh, positive conclusions are that uh, creation of novel references from a custom model shows the AI's ability to create, in, uh, integrate regional characteristics and other training data. AI's ability to blend different ideas and styles, ease of producing variation for designs, potential in genera generation of visualizations and other visual material, and as well uh, this large incredible future potential for this technology regarding architecture. Um, and lastly, uh, future speculations, uh, the technology, uh, technology will only move forwards. Um, there's a, a large niche for producing 3D, uh, ready-made 3D solutions, for example, by feeding LiDAR scans or scans of whole cities, example, in an AI. And as well, uh, that AI can uh, boost creativity working alongside an architect. And as well, reduction of manual labor or said donkey work and with having more uh, focus on creative aspects of this architecture profession. Um, these are some more outputs from my model, and uh, thank you for attention. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the reviewer of your thesis was uh, Tommy Megum, and the positive qualities of uh, part eight, so let's go part are, the thesis is uh, taking on perhaps the most important topic of our time at exactly the right time. It is written, uh, research, and <coughs> executed in a balanced and objective way and provide a glimpse into what uh, the architectural <coughs> profession will evolve into. Uh, a comment about the disadvantages, a comment about other up and uh, coming uh, artificial intelligence techniques such as uh, uh, text to 3D, image to 3D, uh, AI or even text to video, <coughs> image to video AI would have been good in aiding the speculation of the future developments. These are while in their infancy present in stable diffusion. 
about uh, practical parts, the positive uh, qualities, uh, the design uh, portion of the thesis, very successful, shows how artificial intelligence technique, uh, custom trained models, can aid in a real world scenario of uh, wanting to create a new building in a very local context by generating a plausible design that respects its surroundings in a tasteful way and without falling into ditch. The disadvantages of this is an extremely new field. Imperfections and disadvantages will remain only in my extremely subjective opinions and should in no way uh, detract from the incredible work the author has uh, conducted in this thesis. Thank you. Can answer to the yes, uh, my thesis reviewer asked me two follow-up questions. The first one is, in the case of this project, the AI creates visual approximations of what a new invention can fit, uh, intervention can fit into the site. Uh, given more time, how would you further alter or affect the designs to allow for your personal touch in the design, or in other words, to humanize it? Uh, I found it a very good question, and. Uh, Personally, uh, as I before mentioned, there were these uh, six iterations of the algorithm. And for the further on, the uh, if I would have more time to develop it, I would develop uh, the version seven, which would have an extra uh, typology, which would be trained on my own personal projects and references around the world, which I seem as positive. So in the way of generating references, I could uh, inject to the regional characteristics as well, my own ideas of what uh, the neighborhood would uh, like need. So, so in this case, the AI generations would have larger influence from my own personal uh, choice. Uh, that would be one aspect, and the second aspect is I would take a more active role in um, designing these buildings. As uh, for this thesis, I really wanted to showcase uh, the current te technology limitations of AI, so I trusted the AI in, in a way uh, to see what it gives to me, to see the rationality of the process. So to make it more human, I would give it my own human touch and design the buildings uh, more uh, hands-on. And the second question, uh, given the methodologies laid out in this thesis, how is it anticipated that this can be applied to our architectural practices today, working in local contexts while desiring to maintain a practical practice style or signature? Is the architect's style and signature even relevant anymore? And I would say that it's more relevant than ever because with these generic AIs, there's the internet currently saturated with a lot of like very generic AI architecture. And while it is flashy, it is by no means a feasible way of designing buildings. So I think in future, each architectural office might employ their own custom AI model, which is uh, based on um, their existing like resume of works which they trained th this model on, and as well, additionally, the references that they make specifically to train this model. So in the future, an AI office could generate a lot of references already in their own style. Uh, and going back to this idea of moderation and curation, I think that it's gonna be even more important for these architects to curate their own style, to distinguish themselves from all the other offices as well employing this technology. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we have listened to quite a number of students. We see a lot of projects. And I would assume, I guess, that you are the last one because you got most um, unconventional approach. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I, I presume so, we, so as well. So if we have fallen asleep by now, we certainly wake up when you come on stage. <laughs> well, um, I mean, AI is fascinating. Um, I know a photographer who these days uh, asked, you know, what would his person look like in 20, 10 years' time, 20 years' time? And you can see the picture, what it looked like. I mean, it, the, it, I think this is very interesting and also quite worrying at the same time. Um, because I mean, we have been through periods in architecture of different styles, different periods. 
I mean, you've got, uh, you know, they've got the functionalism, you've got the Art Deco, you've got Art Nouveau, quite easy to recognize different styles, if you like. Um, and people sometimes ask us, as architects, what style do you do? I mean, uh, we don't like that kind of question. And um, then the architects, some feel they should contrast and some should kind of fit in to make sure that, you know, it's part of the environment or the existing or, or the culture, if you like. Now, what you are demonstrating here is that a lot of choices to be made. So then the, my big question is, in the future, uh, I mean, in, in my practice, um, if I don't agree with the local planning authority, I can go to the politicians and try and persuade them to listen to me, right? <laughs> uh, which we quite often do. Uh, but um, at the same time here, now if you leave this to the politicians to decide, what will the future architecture look like? Now, who's going to be a decision maker? And I think I wrote down a very important sentence. You said, you need to have an architect present to create a solution. Now, how will we achieve this? Because we can't stop the AI, it's coming. How, will we, how can we put the architect in a very important position in the future? Well, <laughs> More than today. Um, I believe that, uh, that AI in, in a way, will remain a tool. And in the future houses, I don't think AI live, will live in these houses. Like, a human will, in the end, still live in the houses. And for, for this, I think there needs to be someone who checks the in sort of this integrity of these designs and to, to, to make sure that it is made for humans and for a very, like, specific projects to ensure that, uh, that these projects m meet these very specific human criteria. Because I think... Well, let's see where the AI goes in 10, 20 years, but I believe the AI of today sort of lacks a bit of this in-depth, multi-layered thinking. And humans are not rational, and each of them have like these very own wild needs that need to be accompanied or uh, accompanied for. So I think a human in the offices, well, in my sort of optimistic view, I would say that we'll get to do more of the creative stuff and less of drawing plants or like adding dimensions to plants or sort of this manual labor that is so time consuming and we can more focus on the curation of our local and global spaces. Well, in the offices, yeah, but who will make the decisions? What architecture will we see in the future? Will it be the architect? Will it be the planning officer? Or will it be the politicians? Well, it's the same as now. Everyone, <laughs> everyone is participating in it. <laughs> Well, I mean, I just like to see the architect having a real influence in the future, more than we have today. Well, <laughs> maybe given our free time that we get rid of like, for the planning, maybe we'll get more time to focus on having power over our designs. And I hope you're right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, well, extending my uh, congratulations on the theme and chosen uh, methods and et cetera, and extending the, the further... Um, question of uh, uh, the process. Uh, what I see here is multiple versions of uh, a lot of skins and a lot of uh, possibilities to generate the uh, particular uh, volume. So can you describe um, the process behind designing the buildings? Because what I see here is that we have a lot of possibilities to choose whatever skin we can have, and you mentioned that uh, it's a labor job to do the functional schemes and uh, some, um, I don't know, uh, inner planning. Uh, what I see here at your proposal, um, I need some more explanation because I do see that uh, the job you did, uh, and we do all see, uh, and let's be honest, um, we need some explanation about the building plans and building uh, general plans and all the other processes behind that. Yes, of course. So regarding building one, um, the idea was to test uh, how this AI, how well it designs, like uh, how well, how rational are these specific designs that are made. Um, so as, f as from my t testing, I, uh, it is written in my thesis, but it's this sort of aspect that these are not just uh, the outsides, not just facades of the building. As sort of these pictures that are put in are already ready-made designs designed by somebody who has thought of uh, the sort of climate aspects and sort of the regional aspects and sort of why exactly it should look like this. Therefore, the output as well 
contains this sort of information. So I wanted to see how, how much of it does it contain. So in, in this sort of building, I got uh, this sort of front facade and a little bit of the side facade. So my idea was to take the defining, the outside defining features of this facade and make an interior space that fits this sort of outer shell that was generated. And uh, I created this single family home uh, with three floors. The first is sort of the, 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 um, the, the kitchen area, um, the, the washing machine, the garage, sort of the more uh, utility spaces. And further on, I explored these large windows that the AI had given me and uh, to see how I can make this space a rational living uh, environment. Uh, and to see, like, is this AI outer shell even inhabitable by humans, and can I make a rational design? And uh, regarding the second space, uh, I created uh, these three uh, mixed-use uh, buildings, uh, with the first floor being mainly commercial and the upper floors being uh, residential. Can we see the upper floors? No. no. Because? <laughs> because... Uh, no, I didn't have the time to yes, generate uh, more plans with AI. Well, unfortunately, <laughs> we're not currently in the phase. Uh, there's no capability of generate uh, plants uh, as it stands of yet. So you draw the plants by yourself? Yes. As a labor? Yes. Oh. And what... <laughs> <laughs> um, that, that's uh, what I see, because it really uh, contrasts with uh, what we have in the facades and what we uh, can see in the plans. It clearly shows that uh, our possibilities of uh, making decisions and making uh, functional plans um, has to be extended more, even to the general plan. Uh, but probably you can describe something uh, which we don't see in the drawings, uh, but some ideas behind that. Um, regarding what exactly? Uh, the the uh, three houses uh, what are they meant for and how you imagine them? Yes. Um, the, the three current houses were uh, sort of, they followed this, uh, I, the placement followed the sort of the surrounding area and the surrounding uh, Agenskans. So sort of. we cool. have the house um, near the end of the street and have, having this inner courtyard in the middle. Um, these uh, three houses uh, concentrate on having this inner part, which would be more open with cafes and uh, sort of, uh, cafes and sort of these uh, community sort of more based uh, activities. And the surrounding facades are m more regards commercial aspects. Um, the Reseba University is located quite here, so there's a large influx of uh, different uh, students walking and interacting with this space. And currently it's an empty plot and there's just car parks and some students sitting inside their cars to spend time uh, uh, through the lectures. So in a way, this, this would fill uh, this uh, gap, this need of uh, this space, uh, as well as implementing uh, these sort of uh, um, residential as well bu buildings. Uh, as against Count is currently a very popular um, place for people to live, I think there need to be more possibilities for people to have. If I would ask about the uh, regulations in Agens Counts, uh, how could you describe your choice of um, placing those three buildings? <clears throat> well, this is the aspect that I wanted to, uh, that I mentioned before, that the, the AI is uh, a very infant technology, and these aspects are currently not taken in account. So this is the proof of uh, the, the sort of the issues of this AI-based design, that we do need an architect that is making sure that the buildings match the code, match the regulations, as the currently it sort of tries its best to replicate our built environment, but it is not there currently yet. So, yes. So, regarding this, it is not matching any uh, sort of regulations, and it was to see how well would it match, but it, it tried its best, but it did not match any of them. But you did the general plan, you did the planning. Yes. Well, I, I sort of outlined mm -hmm. the rough shape of where it should be. Mm. And the AI sort of mm. uh, filled up this uh, space. So we do know that there are technologies which we can uh, feed up with our building code and uh, generate all the possible plans and etc. 
and uh, <coughs> choose the right functional scheme and uh, everything else, not just the skin, but It was uh, beyond else. the scope of this study. Yeah. So that was your job, labor. In a way, yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you for, for <laughs> interesting, stupid word, actually, for this team, because it's um, today and tomorrow's uh, team. So thank you for the presentation. Very a lot of things to, to think about, about the profession and, and about our future. Um, just one, and it's um, not about this particular presentation, but uh, just your idea, philosophically, philosophically uh, idea, who is the author of this one? For example, of that block. Um. IA or you? I would say both because I may I put together. So Sia. <laughs> yes, in, in a way. <laughs> That's why I very much focused on the word tool as it is something that, that is uh, that the architect is working together with. It's sort of a partner that you can uh, delegate some aspects to it and it will give you some output regarding that. And uh, so, it, so in this regard, it's sort of this combination of both because the AI is sort of in the same way as an architectural intern will give you like 10 different options and you as a main architect which was okay, I want this one and this fits my needs and there's a, this one that wants and then you sort of working together back and forth, you would assemble the uh, project that is like desirable towards the outcome that you intend. But yeah, well, we need to remember that uh, legally we will be responsible, not a. <laughs> Thank you for uh, for this job. It's uh, very uh, very important nowadays. Uh, so far, we understood that we are we are s very soon in very big uh, big uh, contact with these uh, technologies and all these things. I if I if I understood uh, uh, what you said correctly, you said that uh, probably in the future, uh, architects' offices or uh, architects should or need to create their own uh, system, yeah? Uh, loading down uh, this uh, experience, what the, for example, company have, and, uh, and this is a way how to, how to be more individual and how to be more connected uh, with a profession, with, uh, with, a, with a person. Uh, it's an interesting uh, proposal and um, probably this is one way how it uh, can uh, goes, go. Uh, of course, these uh, simple things, which is uh, regulations and, and all these planning uh, schemes, and uh, this is much more easier to load down in, in the computer. This is not a job which needed to do by architects to, to read these regulations. And this for computers is much more easier to do. But how about smell? Can we can we put this new machine uh, on the side before you start to create something uh, to to choose a smell, to choose a wind, cho choose a light, choose a sound of the of the site, and so th these sensual things. Do you remember? Do you do you believe that this is possible to 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 load in in this machine? I, th I think yes. Yeah. Because uh, mm -hmm. one of the main advantages that I um, suggested as why AI is this amount of data that is possible to give it to it. And the way this sort of this neural network works, it is capable of taking this large amount of data and producing these uh, correlations between very distant points and to see how one aspect maybe not immediately apparent to a human, but the AI is capable to see how one aspect affects the other one. So the question is, uh, it's more of a question of computing and uh, how much data are we actually willing to give? Because currently it is a very new and sort of expensive technology. And as I mentioned, uh, maybe it is in the future we'll have the whole city scanned 
and we can just you know have a drone that flies through every building and we have the interior space we have the exterior space and it's maybe something from a dystopian nightmare but let's see where sort of what is the direction of this yeah. and i think uh we as architects uh, or like i would say any profession that is sort of related to ai we need to take an active role and to sort of well, embrace and sort of keep these technologies in check because if we all just roll over and let it take over it might be a very sad reality so therefore we should take an active role in development of these technologies and see how we can integrate them into and how we can take in this uh, how we can do this by learning about them and creating by learning own. yes okay so, so we should not let uh, programmers or like politicians for example to create these tools but we should uh, take an active role in development of this. Do you see the way how to do this? Uh, well, uh, as in like today and now? <laughs> yeah, you, you personally, how you, how you do? <laughs> uh, it's a difficult. It, it, it's a difficult question. It's a difficult subject. The last question from my side. Very, uh, are you satisfied with, uh, with what you did this uh, job here with, uh, with this planning and with this result of, of this architecture? What um, you, th there yeah, are certain Personally, aspects, you, you yeah. have uh, satisfaction? Um, it, it depends on which aspect of the project, uh, I would say. Uh, overall, yes, because there's... Uh, even though I've produced architecture, I would not say that architecture, this specific architecture was the goal of my thesis. Uh, I really wanted to explore the workflows, the creation of our, uh, these algorithms, and to see the potential of it and how it could be applied. And uh, I, I would say that uh, th th this might not be the architecture of the future, but it is something that is like worth, as an experiment, I would say that's a very valuable uh, it was very valuable to see the potential and uh, what can be done and to, for further research or for example, I'm considering my master research to see like where is the limit of this and where it can be pushed forward. Uh, and as well, including all the other aspects that are mentioned is for example, the smell, the, the, the uh, planning type, uh, the, the law aspect in the, uh, yeah. This is like an example of the yes. work. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Eric. It's, it's great to see how you uh, developed this over the semester, because in the beginning of the semester, we weren't really sure how you're going to pull this together and what you're going to actually do. But I, but I think uh, 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 you've uh, delivered your your intent of this thesis has been delivered. And one of my questions was, you know, is, you know, you don't have to answer it now. Are you going to continue with this at, the, at your master's level of thesis? Because I think, I mean, there's a mo there's a really a wonderful opportunity here to investigate this further. And, and one of the things that I wanted to ask you, uh, and obviously I'm not a specialist in this, but I was, you were talking about these wire nets. You know, you had the wire nets that were created for the facades. I, is it possible to make a wire net of the facade then make a wire net of the floors that from, from, a, from a plan that's been sketched and then make a, th a third model that's taking both of those wire nets and producing the 3D of those two other <coughs> wire nets. Have you th um, thought about this? Um, re regarding this sort of co cohesive 3D technology, uh, f uh, as a part of the research, I'm keeping us up with the AI podcasts. And once a month, there is this YouTube channel, D Digital Futures, and it combines sort of very prominent figures in current architecture, including like Patrick Schumacher from Zaka Hadid office, and uh, another, a, a lot of other innovators in this field. And they were talking about this, how to, so, and they were showing like these models, which as well were 3D, and they're like starting to achieve this, this uh, sort of distinction between the floor and the walls and the, sort of the ratio between it. And I would say it's a matter of one or two years maybe, and we'll already be there. But mm. the current technology or the route I decided to choose currently does not take into account this, and it's mm -hmm. not uh, a ready-made treaty mm -hmm. solution. Mm -hmm. And then, and while you were uh, presenting, I just wrote down these contrasting words that are consistent, inconsistent, exciting, scary, amazing, troubling, manageable, out of control, real, fake, uh, edited, random. You know, and it's, and all those are sort of like 
the, it seems like a very overwhelming sort of thing. Yet the the bottom line is I what why I have uh, uh, you could say um, hope is that the edit that the fact that the authorship and ed, and editing that AI is dependent on authorship and editing, and so so in one sense, regardless of how the technology advances. Someone has to be sampling. Someone has to be making those decisions and editing. And so I still see that, in one sense, the role of the architect becomes even more important is to avoid having, you know, the saying, garbage in, garbage out, right? And, 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 and so the architect is the one that's sort of protecting the situation so it's not garbage out, you know? And, and I think that's a, really, that's a really good thing. And then the last thing... I wanted to say it's about the model. I think this is a fantastic uh, conceptual model um, because it, uh, in in one word or in one picture, it actually uh, uh, provokes the question, yeah, of what what is going to be in between these two buildings, and 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 sort of you can go to the you almost like go to the grocery store and take this one off the shelf, right? You know, it's like it's like being in a grocery store and saying. Yet at the same time, it's talking about how do you synthesize all these inputs uh, and manage that uh, to actually come up with the result. So very thought-provoking presentation, and I think that you, you brought it together. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, guess what? We have ran out of students. <laughs> I thought we were going to run out of time, but we ran out of students. So thank you very much. Uh, so I guess we take a, a break, a phone break, 10, 15 minutes, and then we should uh, uh, resume activity in the, in the green room. Yeah. Thank you. I think he did say it. I can't remember. Uh, Here, yeah, we, no, did you spend some time in the U.S.? I can't remember. No, I didn't know. Yeah, okay. Never been there. Yeah, okay, okay. Where about it? But you, you have traveled, though. Uh, yes, quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah.